up everybody, it's Evan here. Very excited for tomorrow. It's gonna to be our debut of the Evan Porter Live broadcast at the Kodiak Clash. We are here in beautiful, sunny Victoria. Can't wait to show off everything that we have to offer. Stay tuned. My name is Kay Miller and I'm the meet director for the Kodiak Clash at K-Fit Conditioning in Victoria. Everyone's getting pretty excited. It's the first time that we've done a WRPF meet in British Columbia. Powerlifting as a sport is really growing in Canada. It's taken off a lot in the last three to four years. From Ontario, Ontario is a very strong showing in powerlifting and now BC is really growing and kind of meeting that Alberta energy. At events like this, it's just it's really cool to see people competing against themselves, but also having that camaraderie to compete against each other. Laura Allen has been an absolute pillar in, in making this come together. Joel from Blacksmith Fitness, the same, the same gravity, the same weight he holds. My name's Laura Allen. I am an international referee with the WRPF. I am also a meet director for uh, the WRPF. I have a meet coming up. Metal Mayhem in June. Uh, we are down at K-Fit Conditioning on Yates Street in Victoria, BC, uh, getting ready for the Kodiak Clash. We're live in Victoria, BC. We came over a couple of days ago. We've been checking out the city. We've been seeing the sights. We've been participating in all the things, eating all the foods. Very excited to be here. We are currently in the K-Fit Conditioning Fitness Gym, which is downtown Victoria. Now, now my good friend Jason Klaus is over here from Victoria Barbell. I believe it's the strongest gym in Victoria. Is that correct, Mr. Jason? Yes, it is. Uh, Jason's a fantastic coach. Uh, I've known Jason for a few years now, he, and I've seen him at multiple different powerlifting federations and meets. Uh, his lifters are fantastic, and I want to give him also a huge shout out because Jason volunteers a significant amount of his time uh, with the Special O's, the Special Olympic lifters. And so I think it's it's good that we give him a huge round of applause here. If you guys are tuning in at home, I want to hear that from you guys th through the keyboard. Let's have a look. I'm going to introduce you to my co-host. His name is Norris, Norris Was Little. How's it going? Uh, he is also one heck of a powerlifter and a strongman. Uh, so recently, Norris has competed in uh, several strongman uh, competitions, and I met him initially through lifting, and I feel like that's kind of the way of this community, isn't it? There's, um, there's a culture to lifting, and I feel like a lot of our friends and our, you know, people that we consider to be family come from the powerlifting world or the gym, eh? For sure. I mean, like, that's where all of uh, all of our community comes from. I think um, I don't want to interrupt your. Uh, I think Ryan's wanting to get started here. He's gonna we are going to introduce our announcer here. His name is Ryan. He is kind of the voice of powerlifting, to be honest with you. Now, go for it, Ryan. Let's oh, let's get ready to rumble. But we're going to start live for real here on this big mic. As soon as those tunes go down, let's give her, boys. Okay, guys, you heard it. So it sounds like our first liftoff is about to take place. And let's get a roaming camera in position in that corner. Welcome it sounds like our first lift is about to take off. We're going to try not to... There's a lot of noise in here, ladies and gents. So Norris and I are going to swing around and have a look here. So here's our first lift, guys. And a master's lifter to boot. She's getting set up here. She comes her first squat. Yeah, nice depth. And that looked good to Beautiful. me. We'll see what Let's the see judges what the say on this first squat attempt. Say. Two out of three. Let's see Bronte is just, she is. Bronte Lose coming up here. Now, Bronte is 17 years old. She's going after a national record right now on her opener, which is fantastic to see. Now, Bronte just got a full scholarship to McKindry University down in the States. She's going to be taking off to go lift full-time down there. She's a full ride as far as I know. She's a fantastic lifter. Wow. Look at that. Here wow. it comes. We're going to so wait for that. Is it a national record? Three white lights, a new national record Wow. Bronte Lose. That was awesome. Bron Bronte is just one of those athletes that's just 
she's so good at such a young age, and there's a reason why she was given a scholarship at such a young age. Yep. Um, yeah, she, she's just such a professional at only 17 years old. Like, on her first attempt there, she just took an, well, the, national the national record. record. Yeah, yeah, unreal. Yeah. I mean, that's really fantastic. I and believe her coach is Jarrell. I think Dorel is her coach. Was her coach Dorel Petties? Dorel Petties is a fantastic coach, fantastic lifter, great guy overall. Okay, here's another master lifter here, 40 to 44. Really cool to see women in their uh, in their 40s here lifting big weight. So Susan, Graham very good, here. very good, Deb, Ooh, very clean. Yeah. That was snappy. Three that white was snappy, lights, guys. So three white lights on that one. Does a successful lift. Good job. So we were talking about this uh, equipment here that's yeah. being used on the squat platform. It's called a monolift. Yeah, so the monolift is uh, a lot different than your typical squat rack. It's got these two arms with the, with the little hooks on them to hold the bar. Much safer as well because then they don't have to walk out the weight like a typical squat rack. You, they, all they have to do is pick the weight up, and then they remove the arms, and they can squat right in place. They don't have to walk it out or anything. That's right. Um, so if you see here, she's just going to lift it up off the arms. Oh, she's going to walk it out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like they are using the arms on this squat. Kayla Nip And is, that looks good. Goes. Very strong. There she goes. Yeah, three, three white lights. lights. Yeah, so I, one of the options I think they give the athletes is they can they can either lift it up off the arms um, or they can, uh, like they can walk it out or they can just lift it up and they can remove the arms. Some people like to walk it out. Um, it's just part of their, uh, their routine, their... Um, their path of just like how to get to that squat. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the other things about the monolift too is it's much easier to um, adjust the height. Because um, if you look closely, they've got two hydraulic jacks on either side, or one hydraulic jack on this one. So it's got a hydraulic jack you can use to jack up the weight, which is really great when you have, you know, 600 pounds loaded on the bar. It's good to have this big hydraulic jack on here. Tamara Nolan's coming up for her first attempt now. We are going to be uh, following up with uh, Tamara Nolan a little bit later today. Yeah, she's another one that's just a really fantastic athlete. Also competes she's in strongman, strong woman. Nice. There she goes. That's a strong Very good first squat. attempt. Good for you, Tamara. So two white lights out of that one. That's a good lift. That was now, a good lift. Interesting I thing about Tamara Nolan is earlier, uh, Tamara Nolan actually won uh, BC's strongest woman th uh, this past year. Now, I've personally shot, for those of you who don't know, I do. F I also do lots of uh, strength sports, a action photography, and stuff like that, so that's how I got into this, but I've shot Tamara Nolan several times, and she has always been one of those athletes who is intimidating because of her ability, yeah. but just such a great um, athlete and a great person, very easy to talk to, yep. always has time to talk to you, and seems to be very involved in mentoring other athletes along their way as well. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the bar is loaded. We've got another Let's squad coming up here. So we're going to check this one out here. Wow, three reds. First attempt. Got so three reds. this is a very he heavy first open. Yeah, this is, uh, I can't see exactly what the weight is, but it look, but it's, this is 400 plus pounds easy. Uh, yeah, three reds and a yellow is what I can see, so. 210 kilos. Wow. This is a massive Let's see it. opener. Yeah, very nice squat. Wow. That looked good to me. Three white lights. She made that look easy. Wow. 210 kilos on her first attempt. She made that look easy. She did make that look easy. Yeah, that was a fantastic lift. Uh, now, it does seem like the crowd is kind of starting to get picked up here. There is a little bit more action going on. It seems like people walking by the street are also looking into the building and seeing what's happening in here. I really personally think this is an exciting time to be participating in the sport of powerlifting with everything going on. And, and to be honest with you guys, and not to pump my own tires, but this show is going to be amazing for the sport. We can't wait to get out there and cover more of you athletes, more of the events, more of what's going on. But really what we want to focus on, too, in this other content creation that we're doing with the show is capturing people's reasons for why they're here, their passions, uh, what makes them lift, and uh, and how they got into that, and their relationships that they've made in the sport. So second attempt starting off here with Joanne McLaughlin. 
And we're back to the top of the flight here as well. So Joanne is a master lifter, over 50 years old, um, in the 67.5 weight class. Yeah, very nice. Here we go. Hard to tell. Yeah, three, three whites. White lights. Very nice. Yeah. That was a good second attempt for, for her, so she's got to be happy about that. Now, for those people who don't really understand what exactly is happening, there are groupings of lifters who come out. They, so right now you're seeing this is a flight. This is a group of people is considered a flight. And then within that flight or group of people, they get three attempts. So their squats, they're going to come out. They get a first attempt. They get a second attempt. They get a third attempt. And then they move on from squats to bench press. So people will elect a strategy for what they choose to be their first and second attempts and that third attempt usually ends up being people sending it. Yeah. So flipping around here so we've got Danielle so coming up for her second attempt here. Now, now Danielle has uh, come back from several injuries. Uh, I spoke to her down in Coquitlam about she had a disc bulge injury, had to get surgery, lots of rehab. Very, st very difficult thing to come back from, but here she is competing. Yeah, very nice. Here she is. Oh, no. Let's oh. go, Danielle. Now we're gonna wow. see what the judges say about that little pause. They made. Yeah, there's three um, reds. So, so um, they didn't give her a lift there. I, her depth looked. Her, her depth looked. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was deep enough. Um, but they definitely called her on that downward motion. So you can't have any downward motion yeah. uh, of the lift. So if you saw there, it was almost like a little pause, but she did yeah. kind of dip and then kind of keep going again. I did notice. Yeah. So they want to make sure there's one fluid motion the entire time. Um, so that's probably why they all gave her reds for that. Um, yeah. It's too bad. It is too bad. And we, we do understand that sometimes, uh, you know, the audience and your fans and your friends and family get really excited about that because... Did they lift the weight? Yes, but uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations just to make sure that everyone is doing everything the same way all the time, and it can be judged fairly. Yeah. So unfortunately, sometimes people won't get a lift that you know that the audience or that uh, someone who doesn't understand the rules thinks that they should get. So we're gonna turn around here. We're gonna take a look at Adley. So Adley's up here next for her uh, second attempt. Yeah, she's a fantastic lifter. Just based on her first attempt. Yeah, look at that depth. Very come good. On, oh, Abby, it's a struggle. On. Get up. Wow. No, I didn't see them. I don't know what they're Three I whites. She got it. I wasn't sure if they were going to call any downward motion, but it didn't look like it was downward. It just came up a little bit lopsided, which is okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there wasn't any downward motion. It looks like it was just definitely quite a bit of a struggle mm -hmm. um, coming up right through that sticking point. It does look like that she was sort of... Uh, she did have kind of bend over quite a bit to finish that squat. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little bit of grindy, a little bit lopsided, but no downward movement. So that was a good yeah. lift. It was definitely nearing the end of her capabilities, yes. though. Yeah. Which does often happen when you are competing at such a high percentage of what you're capable of. Sometimes, you know, things will happen where your hips will shift or something. And if you, the weakest link in the chain will present itself. For sure. When you're getting up to a, you know, over 95% of your one rep max, you're going to start seeing some little deficiencies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is where you can go back into your next training camp and uh, and fix. So Chelsea with a rock. Wow, oh, easy. Second attempt. That was right to the floor. Yeah. So that's uh, she got one red there I'm on one of the side sure reps. Sure, what that side light was for. It looks like um, it looks like one of the referees. Um, called her on having soft knees. Uh, so yes. she didn't fully lock out her knees, um, mm -hmm. which you have to do to, uh, to show that you've completed the lift. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the second time she was called on that. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. It, it's been, and it was on the same side as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the referee does have the best point of view. Everyone can always speculate about whether or not it's the right caller or whether or not. But the referees have the best view in the house. Um, and they get right in there to make sure that they're uh, to make sure that they're seeing everything. Um, so this is, so Marissa. Marissa is coming out here. This is a national record attempt here. 125 so here she goes. kilos. She's backing up. It looks like she got a little hung up there on the monolift arm, but she's okay now. She's looking solid. She, she's breathing in here. She's going to catch yeah. some bracing so and. Yeah, nice. Good dad. That's looking good. 
And those three whites. That's looking good. That was a great, great attempt. Yeah, that was really good. And especially, again, she's not wearing any knee sleeves. She can have that extra support of the knee sleeves, and she's, uh, whether she's choosing not to, I, I don't know. But um, there's very few people that choose not to wear knee sleeves when you can, because they do make a big difference. They help quite a bit. Just a little product placement for all y'all out there. <laughs> rain energy. Now we got the uh, rain energy drink in front of us here. We're gonna switch around here. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, let's turn around here. Here we go. It's another attempt. Now she is a fantastic Eileen lifter. Eileen is up here. This is a Eileen. Uh, Eileen. Just oh wow. Nice. She's That's so solid. upright. Let's yep. see what the judges say. I didn't notice if she was. Wow, a high two whites. Was that a high bar or I a low bar? I, I think that was more of a high bar squad. So she got two out of three. So one ref called her, I think, on depth. Um, because even from this angle, I could see her depth was, like, just, I think, just barely there. So, um, but that was really, that was a really impressive squad, actually, because she was so upright in that squat. Um, you see a lot of people, like that other girl who kind of struggled a little bit, she kind of got bent over by the squat a little bit. Mm -hmm. She stayed right upright, and mm -hmm. I, that is kind of one of the benefits of squatting with the bar higher up on your back. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit easier to, to stay upright like that. I think that can also be indicative of good bracing as well. For Oh, for sure. Now, here's Chantel coming up with So Chantel with 303 pounds on her back. Now, her first attempt looked pretty uh, strenuous. I don't know how it felt for her. Let's see if she can. Oh, oh wow. Oh, it's a grinder. Wow. And I see the, the audience that, like that one. The right? audience love that one. Now, People one thing about strength sports. One thing about strength sports is that uh, people cheer for effort. I've heard it explained uh, recently talking to Joel down at Blacksmith Fitness, and he said it best when he said people cheer for effort. And I don't think it really matters, you know, how strong somebody is to be a crowd favorite. They want to see that you are sending it out there on the platform. For sure. People don't care if you have 100 pounds on your back or, or 800 pounds on your back. People want to see that you're pushing yourself and you're grinding. And that squat by Chantel there showed that she... Because a, a lot of people would panic under that sort of, like, strenuous weight. Um, but we she's totally calm. We got Brontes back here on the platform. <laughs> Now, on Bronte's first attempt, she took a national record. Let's see what happens now. Is she going to take another one? She's going to break her own national her record. Her own national record on her second attempt. I did see her in the back there with uh, Darrell, and it looks like her friend uh, Shane Calhoun. My friend Shane Calhoun's back Let's here. Here it. she comes. Here she comes. This is intense. Wow. Oh, oh no. I wanted to see that. So, I think that, that is the first failed squat of the day. That was a big squat for her. That was. And again, Bronte is 17 year old. Junior. Yeah. Now, uh, just to draw a bit of a distinction between the age groups in the lifters, now you will hear some. We will categorize people. It's not just categorized by weight, but it's also done by age. Can you kind of explain the difference between a junior and a master lifter? For sure. So there's different age gra uh, age groups. Um, the largest age group is obviously the open category, which is anyone who uh, 24 to 35. That's sort because that's sort of the prime prime lifting age. Those are typically the people you see breaking world records and stuff like that. Um, but Bronte is in the she's the 17, 17 to nineteen year old junior range. They break up the junior ranges because there's so much of a difference between those ages. And that is so incredible to see someone at such a young age is so strong. And wow. here Susan came up. That was a fantastic squat. That was 358.2 pounds for you people that use pounds and 162.5 kilograms. Now, you, you may hear us talk in kilograms quite often throughout the powerlifting event because powerlifting is actually the weight attempts are handed in and submitted and measured and recorded in kilograms, not pounds. Um, so that can be a little confusing sometimes. Which for is people. why I have my uh, my kilo to pound conversion car yes. chart in front of me here, just yeah, to make can, sure. It, it can be confusing, especially if you're used to training in pounds, and then all of a sudden you have to submit attempts in kilograms. Yeah. Now here's Kayla back here for another attempt. Wow. She's so intense. She is intense. And so that is intense. Wow. Right there. there she goes. Yeah, the crowd like She's that happy again. With that. That's three white lights. She's Again, the, with that. the crowd likes the effort, right? They could see she was putting in the effort there, and you could see just uh, you could start to see just a little bit of a uh, little bit of form breakdown, a little bit, and, um, and that's just showing that she's just 
Right, she's pushing herself. She's get, starting to get to the end there. Um, like you can see her knees start to cave in a little bit, um, which is just an indicative of that, that she's starting to get heavy. And yeah. her body's, she's having to break down her form a little bit to push out that, that extra bit of effort. That's right. It, yeah. Again, it's it's like we were saying earlier with that. It's the weakest link in the chain yeah. uh, that'll start to break down. Now, here's Tamara back out here again with some real intensity. Tamara's getting ready to send it. Again, Tamara is a strong woman. BC's strongest woman right here. Get sure. ready to squat 413 pounds yeah. and change. That wow. is a savage squat. Yeah. Let's go, Tamara. Oh, yeah. That was a very that good was, squat. That was beautiful. That was awesome. Great squat. And she is looking pretty pleased with that as I see her disappear behind the curtain again. Yeah. Now, you see a lot of activity happening on the platform here right now. There's a lot of people throwing weights around. They're moving the monolift around. And, guys, this, these events, these powerlifting events, don't happen without volunteers. There is a huge community of volunteers participating in the sport of powerlifting that make this possible, that help move the weights. They help, you know, I believe the monolift was... Uh, lent to the event here from uh, Joel down in Blacksmith Fitness in Port Coquitlam. So huge shout out to Joel and the whole Blacksmith team out there. Yeah, the Blacksmith team. That. But yeah, I mean, it's a community of volunteers and those volunteers are often very passionate about the sport as well. Yeah. And these referees that you'll see around here too, they're, they're volunteers as well that give up their time to be here to make this possible. So here we got Tanya. Yeah. Stepping up here for another attempt. This looks like 496 pounds wow. or 225 kg. That is an wow. insane squat. And you know, I saw the effort, but she had that all day long. Yeah, that was a good lift. Three white lights to secure. That was almost, that was four pounds under 500. Mm -hmm. So 500 pounds for a second attempt. Um, and she's uh, in the, uh, at 97.5 Kilo, so you know she hasn't. She's actually got room in her weight class, so she didn't even max out her mm -hmm. her weight class necessarily. That's right. Yeah. So that's another way that the groups are categorized. Uh, lifters are categorized. It's not just by age, but there's weight classes. So this is all to try to make everything fair, so that it doesn't. You know, a lot of people say this, and I say this too, is that powerlifting is an extremely inclusive sport. Anyone can powerlift. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your body weight is where you came from, it doesn't matter what uh, gender you identify as, your culture, any of that stuff. If you can lift, then you can power lift. So you're welcome here. And, and, and so they're divided, though, into ages and weight, cate and weight categories. Yeah, and I mean, a stark example is of, you know, Tamara. She's a very different body type, right, than, uh, than Joanne here, right? Very different height, different build, everything. You know, Joanne is a, a master lifter, and she's out here squatting 225 pounds. Let's see if she gets it here. This is a that's a very disciplined squat that she has. Yep. So, so she got she got called for something on the left hand side side ref. Yeah. So I think it was probably depth that she called her on there. Could be. It looked like the right hip might have been a little bit high. Yeah. So there are three there's three lights up there, guys. We started talking about this earlier, but there's three lights up there. There's three white lights and there's three red lights. So each one of those lights signifies w one of the three judges. So you have a side judge on either side of the platform and your head referee, your head judge, in the front of the platform. So the head referee is looking for certain criteria and they're also relying on the side judges to let them know if they have seen an infraction in the rules. So that's what we're talking about when we say two white lights or three white lights and those referees are looking for mistakes. Yeah, and on squats, you're prim on squats, the side referees are primarily looking for depth. They're also looking for just general infractions as well, but generally speaking, they're looking for depth. That's wow. a good Let's go. So that's a good, good and that's a good lift. She got it. I'm glad she got that. Uh, you know? That was awesome. To come, back from, uh, that one. to come back from a failed attempt there and get it, that's awesome. And she actually went up in weight, I think, there, yeah, actually. That's tough because you have to think, too, like, that's a bit of a psyche that takes a toll on your psyche as a lifter, you know, your confidence because you, you came out, she hit her first opener, everything looked great. Yeah. And then uh, we didn't make that second lift, but she came back from that and got the third. So it's good to see a lifter can go back, collect themselves, reestablish that, uh, that confidence and come back out here and do a good job on that third attempt. For sure. She went up two and a half kilos um, after a failed attempt. And it wasn't just like, a, yeah, so that. 
that was really impressive. Like a lot of the time, coaches and stuff would recommend just retaking the weight, mm -hmm. but she went for it. Here's Adley and again on her three attempt. Oh, oh yeah, they t and they took that. Oh, Adley. Just missed her, missed her third attempt, couldn't finish it. Luckily, we have the spotters there to uh, make sure she, she's safe, she's good. Um, and next up is Chelsea. Chelsea's uh, coming in for a 125 kilo squat. Uh, five, she's going five pounds up from her previous squat. And uh, yeah, I think that'll be. Chelsea's also a fantastic athlete. Like Chelsea has been training with uh, Bronte a little bit, I've noticed, oh, yeah? on the old Instagram there. Norris, if you want to look up uh, Bronte's Instagram or Chelsea Wires Instagram, we'll show that to you in a little bit here. There's Chelsea there. She's coming back out. Here she comes. And like I was saying, Chelsea trains. Uh, she trains out of Penticton, I believe. She trains out of the Gym Eternal in Penticton. And she's getting set up under this bar. She is. She came here to perform. I've been watching all, all her social media and everything. She is excited to be here. She can't wait to be here. That's one of those lifters that just loves to compete in powerlifting. She loves to be here, the atmosphere. And I think she's psyched up here watching, you know, there's a big crowd, everyone's very supportive. Yeah. This is an awesome wow. meet. Here she goes. Very good. Finish it. Let's go. She that got was, it. That was awesome. And she got a three wide. That's a battle. That was a battle. That was awesome. Another really cool thing about that lift, guys, was that was awesome. You can tell, oh, sorry, when she gets to the top of that squat, it's very easy to walk back in and put the weight down because yeah. um, you have they've, they, in, their, in their mind, they've gone through the motions of doing all these things and making sure that they, they didn't start before the referee told them to squat because you can be disqualified. If they start that squat before the ref says squat, you're automatically disqualified. Well, that lift would be disqualified. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that, like that, uh, like that lift would be no good. Um, and same thing when she's on, when she's re-racking it. So the referee is going to tell you when to start mm -hmm. and when to when to when to rack the weight. Right. Um, one trick that I learned actually though is don't even think about re-racking it because the spotters will rack it for you when the referee says rack. So right. you don't even have to think about it if you just let the spotters do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so Eileen Eileen is a fantastic lifter. I've really enjoyed watching her. There she goes. She's got that one. And she got it. So that one judge that that called it that called it red. That's the that's the second time she's been called on that side, and I can see it even from here. The hip. It, the hip is the a hip little is bit high. high. On the, right side. the other side look the, the other side looks good, but but. Um, yeah, no, I can even see from here. Her hip was a little bit high there. It but is a it little still, bit high. It was still a good lift, though. It's two out of three lights. It's a good lift. I'd be happy with it. Yeah, she should be happy with that. Uh, looks like we've got Marissa is Marissa coming in Flynn here again coming for her up final here. attempt. Again, I think she is a uh, yeah. She's a junior, 20 to 23. Yeah, she's a she's a really good lifter. 132.5 kilos. That's 292 pounds. Wow. So a junior just squatting just under 300 pounds. And here very comes the intensity here. Yeah, very calm, collected, good depth. Oh, yeah, she got it. That's a good lift. I noticed that she has a wide foot stance. She's taking a bit of a wide foot stance there. Yeah. That's it, and you know, and that's the kind of, that's the interesting thing about squats is when you when you're doing a squat, like um, your hip joint is a pretty complicated joint. It's simple, but it's kind of complicated because yeah. everybody's body grows differently. Like your length of your femur bones and just the shape of the actual hip joint itself is shaped. So you'll see some lifters have a wider stance or a narrower stance. For sure, because some people's hip joints, um, it, just the way they're shaped makes it very hard for them to hit depth. Um, and so she's got really long legs mm -hmm. um, that that uh, previous lifter there. So she might have to hit, go a slightly wider stance to make sure she can dip below parallel there. If she had a really narrow stance with those long legs, you, if you think about it, her body would have to like fold over basically to uh, to be able to hit depth. And that it's for a lot of people, that's not a very strong position to be in. So if I mean, when you're 20 years old or however old she is and you're squatting 300 pounds almost, I feel like the wide stance is working for you. Another another joint in that uh, movement is the ankle joint. 
Yeah. You have poor ankle mobile can be too. Here's Chantel with their third attempt. I want to wow, see this. Let's Come see. on, Chantel. Wow. That was a grind, yeah. That looked better than yeah. her second attempt. That was beautiful. Three white lights there. Nothing you can you can't say anything bad about that left right there. I'd be happy if I was Chantel. No, that was a really good Chantel is such a pro, man, and after her second attempt, that like that looked better than her second attempt, honestly. I think so too. Um, Chantel's one of those lifters that's really passionate about lifting as well. Very passionate about when she competes in strongman. Very passionate about powerlifting. Yeah. Um, I've seen her train in the gym. I've interviewed her in the gym. I've filmed her doing all kinds of stuff in the gym, and she is very passionate about what she does. Yeah. A lot of these lifters are. And and, and Chantel we've got Bronte Lowe's is up again with a third attempt. Another national record attempt. Yeah. If you guys remember, she got the first one. Her second attempt didn't quite stick so hopefully she can make this third attempt yeah. and beat her own national record again at 17 years old so squatting 336.2 pounds yeah nice Bronte it's not quite there it's almost there it's not quite I think that um, might be a little bit of nerves yeah there might be a little bit of nerves involved in that um, it could just be a lot of adrenaline I think sometimes Lifters can get a little bit too wound up behind before they come out of the platform, and th I think sometimes I can throw you off a little bit. Yeah, and uh, Bronte, you can see the frustration in her face. She's one of those. She wants that. She's lift. one of those athletes that she holds herself to such a high standard mm -hmm. at only 17 years old. She does. She holds herself to such a high standard, but she's got so much room to grow. By the time she's 20, she's going to be a oh, star. Yeah. She's only 17. Absolutely, and and her coach Durrell is. I, I, but I don't know if she's training with Darrell currently. I know that she did for a period of time. And Darrell definitely knows how to make people strong, I will say. So here's Susan back up for her third attempt. She's in the open category, which means that she is in the general, kind of the general well, category she, for she's that. She's an open and master, so she's oh, in I see. both she's categories. She's actually competing with both. Yeah, sorry for that correction. Oh, I see a shift of the hip. Wow. Very shifty in the hips there. You can see the knees wanted to buckle, and then she fought that urge to buckle the knees, and she was able to salvage that squat by the looks of it. It is very difficult to yeah. come back and save a lift once you've lost the movement pattern that you normally train in. Yeah. Again, that just shows like when you start getting near your uh, the edge of your capabilities, you do start to see a little bit of form breakdown. And that's pretty normal, honestly. But it's but it's the ability to like uh, the ability to like keep it all in check, even when your form is breaking down a little bit. Um, to keep that all in check and make sure that you know it doesn't break down enough to injure yourself, you can still complete the lift. And it's very easy to get hurt here if you do lose your position and try to fight through something. That's oh, a grind. Oh, oh, no. she, I thought she might have been able to save that. It looked like she kind of caught herself starting to fail that lift yeah. redoubled her effort to make that lift and then it just wasn't quite enough to get back up with that weight yeah. that's what it looked like to me i also just wanted to shout out bronte here because that lift that she failed with 336 pounds and i found a video on her instagram uh showing her doing 335 so basically the same weight so she has done it before uh it could just be a combination of nerves of uh you know she's more fatigued than she was uh, this was two, three weeks ago. So, right. and that is definitely a thing. Nerves are definitely a thing when you're on the platform, and wow, it's, it's very intense. It's very intense. Tamara is going in, going up to 200 kgs, which is 440 pounds. This is a big jump. It's that's 440.9 pounds. Yeah. This is an incredibly well, heavy oh no, oh, oh no. Almost, you know what? You Not today. You can see right at the bottom there. As soon as she hit that hole, yeah. her upper back rounded out. It was out just too much. Yeah. Yep. And that's the thing when we were talking about movement patterns is when you're tr when you're training. <coughs> yeah, that's okay. I think I think she might have uh, might have even dipped too low there. I don't know if you saw. Yeah. She went right Very into low. the hole and she should have. And then when she got into the hole there. When you squat too low, your back starts to round out a little bit, so she should have stopped a little bit sooner, but could have just been it was too much weight for her. It was a big jump. It was a 12 and a half kilo jump. So a very big jump. All right, this is gonna the biggest squat of this flight so far, 512 pounds. Biggest squat of the Wow. Here's a third attempt for Tanya. 
and you can't see it, but the entire crowd right now is on their feet. The audience is standing right now. The whole room is standing right now. Everyone is standing up in anticipation wow. of this squat. The entire room is sta standing. The room is electric. Oh my God, yeah. Everybody Chinese wants to see is, it. Here she comes. Oh, that's good depth. Oh, that's good depth. Let's see it. Wow. That is a lively crowd right there. I don't know if you can hear that. Wow. I just lifted my microphone up. Tanya, what an incredible lifter. That was awesome. As soon as she hit depth, I was I was wondering if how she was going to look coming up. Because as soon as she hit depth, I was like, oh, she got depth. That's the hard part. That's the hard part, right? Get, yeah. Everybody can get down. It's getting back up. That's hard. Exactly. So she got the depth. So all she had to do was stand up with it. All she had to do was stand up with 512 pounds. That's yeah. way, that's more. All you gotta do is stand up with 500 pounds. That's more. That's way more than I could squat. Yeah. Yeah, that's so incredible. That's that's such that's such a such a good squat, and it looked so good. I I honestly think that looked better than her second. It was very good. Yeah. yeah. You could tell that she was prepared for that lift. She had kind of gone through the motions in her head, prepared herself for that third attempt, knowing it was going to be huge. And um, I think that's the difference too between like really seasoned lifters and newer lifters is they have that experience so they don't the form doesn't break down under pressure they're used to that pressure they're used to being here they're they're familiar with being on the platform they're not cool. getting intimidated by the lights the noises totally they like being here they're ready for it so flight two is getting started here yeah so flight b they jumped right into it no no Good questions lift, asked Aiden Skinner there with a 242 and a half pound wow. squat looked all good to me. So that lifter there, Aiden, who he was so he was a junior between the ages of 14 and 16. So a very young lifter. Is that a sub junior or a junior? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they uh, I don't know if they classify it as sub junior in the WRPF. I think they just classify it by junior uh 14 to 17 or 14 to 16 mm -hmm. they just do it by age there isn't i don't think in the wrpf it's like sub junior or not yeah mm -hmm. there are <laughs> other federations within powerlifting we won't go into those at the moment but there are multiple federations within the same sport they do have subtle differences in their rules yeah uh this one's wrpf so wow okay so fir first wrapped lifter Ooh, of the day there we go that was a very controlled descent <laughs> yeah which is which which you want to rate Pavlo and that was 300 and I missed I missed the attempt weight on that yeah, one. Yeah, so that was a really controlled descent. He was the first lifter we've seen today in wraps and you do want to be more controlled on the descent in wraps. Mm -hmm. uh, typically you'll see sometimes people who wear knee sleeves, they can kind of drop a little bit quicker in the descent. Yep. Knee knee wraps, you really want to be controlled in the descent otherwise you risk losing losing control of mm -hmm. the squat itself. And on the same subject, we were talking about categories and uh, how w uh, lifters are categorized earlier in the day. Um, the equipment that they wear can also categorize them. So there's different there's different categories within powerlifting. Uh, we won't go into great detail about all of them, but there is a big difference between a like a classic raw lifter and an equipped lifter is a very big difference. So for those of you who don't know, a classic raw, the, these like this is a classic raw lifter right here. This lifter is wearing. Average knee, your regular knee sleeves, a belt, and a singlet, um, and they don't have any uh, wraps. There's no yeah. compression so equipment. So he's just, he's raw. Classic raw That's is raw. with That's is raw. with wraps, yeah. So he's a raw lifter here. Let's see, let's, let's see what the judges say. A little bit of a get, delayed response on that one. He, did he get it? Uh, I'm not okay, sure. Okay, we're not sure if he got that one. Or what? It looks like it was a good lift. Yep. So the, I guess the biggest difference then too, like, so some of this equipment, uh, like, like knee wraps, there's also really interesting singlets and, uh, you know, there's, there's things called bench shirts that athletes can wear. It's like a very, very tight compressed shirt. Um, and it helps the pressing motion of the bench, but you can see some lifters will bench press like insane amounts of weight that that no reasonable human being should be able to lift with some of this equipment. And that's, I think, what really adds to the fun of equipped lifting. Yeah. Now here's Zade. Wow. That was a very Zade powerful Amir. squat. 407-pound squat. That was a... 
He got two whites. That was a good oh, lift. So good yeah, he got, got one red. Zade, uh, Zade also trains at a blacksmith fitness in Port Coquitlam. Another blacksmith. Another blacksmith guy. Now, there's a whole tribe of blacksmith athletes here uh, this weekend yeah. that are lifting in the clash. Zade's one of them. I caught up with him earlier. We are going to play some cool videos about Zade a little bit later. We got an athlete spotlight video on him. All right, so now, we, got, we, have a look, we got Troy coming Troy up here. Troy coming out. Another blacksmith lifter. <laughs> Troy is a real. Troy, I. I think Troy competes at every single competition I've ever been to. Yes. He's competing multiple times a year, just always. Like, tons of competitions year-round. And he's got a decade of CrossFit experience and now a power lifter. Wow. Here he goes. Beautiful squat. Good job, Troy. Very good Troy. depth. So Troy is here with his wife. For those of you that don't know, his wife is Danielle Simo, who is lifting in Flight 1, Flight A of today. Um, they have a little bit of a competition going on right now. So there's a few dollars on the line from what I gather. There's a few bucks. There's a friendly wager at home. Somebody's going to win. And they are determining the winner by their dots score. So okay. I know that you're g So what they do when they're trying to measure a person's performance in powerlifting, it's not just the weight. It's also in relation to how heavy you are as a lifter. So you're, if you are in a lower weight category... If you're in an 83 kg lifter category and you're comp and some and you lift the same amount of weight as somebody who's in a 120 kg or open category, then you're going to score higher on the dot scale because you have a lower body mass and you're lifting the same amount of weight. So we're looking at that was a good squat there by Griffin. Wow. Um, we are looking at <laughs> so for the dot score we're going to we're, they're going to be looking at how you know Danielle's overall body weight and Troy's overall body weight and then comparing them and they have an, a math equation that will you know they'll plug in how heavy the lifter is and how much they lifted how many pounds or kilograms they lifted and they do their little math equation they come out with a score now that product of that sum is called the dot score i believe yeah it's the best way to it's one of the ways to determine uh, to compare lifters who are in, who are, you know, men versus women, different weight classes, different age categories, because it, because the calculation sort of evens out the playing field. Um, Here's Robin stepping up here for his first attempt. He's got 479 and a half pounds on the bar. Wow. That is an impressive opener. He is a very good that's squatter. A, a, yeah, very you good. Can, you can tell that's not this guy's first rodeo. Yeah, you can always, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one, Norris. Yeah. <laughs> you can always tell when somebody has experience squatting. It's just one of those movements that just looks, you know, when someone has a good squat, you'll often hear people say, that's a beautiful looking squat or that's a pretty squat, you know, because there's so many things at play. People want to see. How straight is their back? How upright are they? Well, you know, well and squatting is moving around. Are they all over the place, or do they look pretty solid? Well, and squatting in a competition is very different than just someone squatting in the gym, right? Squatting in, in competition, you have to be like very precise with all your movements, and that guy has a great setup. Like you can see it, everything from the way he grips the bar, the way he walks it out, mm -hmm. all the way through his squat. It's very fluid. Um, he picked his first attempt very well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just definitely you can tell that he's competed before. Yes. And this okay. looks like Finley Capstick. Wow, so this guy's a junior. 485-pound opener. Wow. That is a monster opener. Wow, that that's impressive. Like, that looks like a good squat to me. So I believe Two Finley out is out of Alberta. I believe he trains at Alberta somewhere. I could be wrong about that, but I think I've... I recently saw him compete at a provincial meet in Alberta. And I think he trains with Big Cat. I think he might be one of Big Cat. Yep. One, of, Big one of Larry's uh, athletes. Yeah. Yep. So, wow. Let's turn around and take a look at this guy. Jonathan Hansen squatting 485 pounds. John Hansen is coming up here. Wow. So he's in sleeves. Yep. So he's a raw lifter here. Yep. He's got the SBD knee sleeves on here. He's got his belt tightened up. He's ready to go. Now he's got a very wide grip on this squat bar. Yep. Very wide. You will see some lifters do take a very wide grip. Some prefer a narrow grip on the bar. He's all the way out to the collars. Yeah, so almost. that also has to do with uh, shoulder mobility. Some guys, like bigger oh, yes. guys, Good bigger squat. guys like Jonathan's sometimes don't have 
good shoulder mobility. Not to say he has bad yeah. shoulder mobility. I'm not, but some of those bigger guys just don't have the mobility to get their hands in super tight, Absolutely. so they have to go out wide. And then some guys just like squatting out super wide. Yep. Uh, I know people that can go narrower, uh, but they just like the like going out wider. It's it's all preference, right? And that's why it's so it's so interesting with powerlifting because it's all it's the same three movements for everybody, but they all look different depending on who's doing them. And uh, one of the contributing factors to having a wide grip, like you were saying, shoulder mobility, is some of these lifters spend, you know, tens of years, decades, training in the gym. They built up a significant amount of muscle mass, and it's hard for those joints to move when you're when you're that large and exactly. you, your when delts you, are that when big. When you got big delts, big big it's back, hard. big chest, like yeah. yeah. When you're swole, brother. <laughs> so we got Josh. Josh was kind of 501 pound squat opener. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that's a wow. beautiful squat. That's a powerful, powerful squat right that there. That was a great first attempt. 501 pounds is not uh, <laughs> nothing to scoff at for an opener for a squat. No, not at all. But that I, I do know another. He's a pro bodybuilder who takes a really wide grip as well. And I'm trying to remember what his name is, but his nickname is Rhino. I actually. Stan, Stan Everdeen. Stan Efferding. I actually met him in Vancouver once. I forgot about and that. And he gave me a quick little squat tip or whatever in the gym. But yeah, he takes a really wide stance. And you'll see like when Stan Efferding squats, yeah. he gets a, he does a low bar and he really bends over. But he's such a large man and is, is, is just like so much mass up in that upper body. It's hard to like move that. So you will see he takes a really wide a really wide grip on the bar when he yeah. does it. Other people you see a narrow grip because they want those upper back muscles to be tight yeah they want that upper back to be tight so you will see that they will take a narrower grip on that bar to to, to keep their back nice and so here's steve dardango 551 pound opener steve is such a fun lifter he gets so intense yes and you know what he's one of the nicest guys i think i've seen him at about six or eight powerlifting meets he's always around if he's not lifting he's volunteering that's a beautiful wow, squat. Wow, that good was so Steve. good. He has... Uh, he got one red light on the side. Really? Yeah, I, I wonder what that was for because his depth looked fantastic. His depth looked good. Yeah. I'm not too sure what he got called for on that red light. Maybe yeah. we'll hear about that a little bit later. <laughs> Steve trains out of Victoria Barbell as well. Another shout out to the Victoria, Victoria Barbell crew out there. Now, I think there's a small posse of Victoria Barbell lifters in here. Now, another cool thing is you're going to see is this is an awesome community. The powerlifting community is amazing. And you'll see pockets of different groups of lifters that train in different gyms. And so we have a couple of major gyms that are kind of really being represented here, major groups of powerlifters. Blacksmith Fitness is out here crushing it by the looks of things here. They've got a lot of successful attempts. But the Victoria Barbell crew, that, that's another group, really awesome people. Yeah. Very, very cool. I was talking about them earlier. You met Jason at the sponsor. Jason's in the back there. with. He's yeah. got a sponsorship table set up. Let's turn around. We've got another wrapped lifter here. Dalton, Dalton. Gendron. So if you lo have a look at his knees. Oh, wow. That looked heavy. Wow. Wow. So that was another equipped lifter. I don't know if you caught it or not. We've got. But, uh, he had wraps on. Yeah, so we've got some really big squatters coming up here. Dalton was one. Steve was one. This not, next guy, Daniel, o opening with 300 kilos, 660 that's a, pounds. That's a huge lift. 660 pounds, that's a massive lift. Yeah. Like, some people train for a decade and never get there. And this guy's never and, get there. And this guy's coming out doing it as his first as attempt. An yeah, 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 yeah. We'll open up a nice, easy 660 squat. Yeah. Well, just wait. Even the guy after him is going even higher. He, and here he, he is. He's not the end of the flight. Daniel Kerwin. Oh yeah, Daniel's part of the Kodiak crew. So, so another another group of savage lifters. Yep. So as we were talking about the Kodiak barbell crew, now Stu is floating around here somewhere. I saw him yesterday. Yeah. He's one of the coaches. Stu. Stu's out here. So Stu is the guy who's just helping him get set up there. He's his yeah, handler he's today and one of the owners of Kodiak Barbell. And then Dan. That is a wow. Great, oh, That's yeah. a great squat. Nice job. One white light, but two, or uh, two white lights. So that's a good lift. Yeah. So Dan, Dan is uh, a coach for Kodiak Barbell as well. Uh, also a, uh, I believe, 
currently in the military or a military vet. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just he's a fantastic lifter. He's like, I mean, you have to be as a coach, you have to be very, you know, you have to show that you walk the walk, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and Dan is one of those guys, I think. I think uh, some of the things that people look for in a powerlifting coach, for one, is uh, performance. Like, people want to see that you have experience lifting heavyweight, that you know how to get there. So people look for that performance. They also look for competency. Like, can you have you trained lifters successfully in the past? Do you have any education in what you're doing? That sort of a thing. It's not bro science, but there is a little bit of, like, you know, uh, anecdotal information that coaches can bring for sure. But what, what, what are things, some things that you look for in a coach? Uh, well, let's turn around and watch uh, John McDonald here. I want to watch his squat, and then oh, we'll talk yeah. about that. So, John. Guys, I can't believe we almost missed it here, but John McDonald stepping up for his opener. Uh, John McDonald's also a truck. He's training at a blacksmith. John McDonald is coming out of a bombed out session um, of North Americans down in Missouri. And he is coming here to prove to everyone, most importantly to himself, that he can do this. Yeah, wow. Come on, John! Wow. There he goes. He got that. Three white lights. Beautiful squat. Wow. That was a that was a very fast very good. descent. Yes. That was very like that was very very fast. I, I kind of made me nervous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> now I was talking to him down in Coquitlam at Blacksmith, and he like again he was telling me he bombed out of North Americans on squats, and it was his uh, goal was to show up at North Americans and take the all time uh, drug tested world record i believe is what he was after there and so he was a bit disappointed because he had hit that weight in the gym several times before and you know it's like we were talking about before the nerves and being on the platform and especially if you have to travel and people are getting on and off of planes and stuff like that it puts your body through quite a, a lot more stress that you didn't really need to do to it so it's kind of hard on meat day Especially if you're trying to make weight and you have to cut water or something like that, and then showing up and trying to put that same performance on the platform. Yeah. But I'm glad to see him. I'm glad to see that he made that successful attempt. So we got Aiden Skinner here coming up. It's uh, his second attempt on squats. 259 pounds here for him, and he's in the. 14 to 16 age category. He's a junior. Good for him. I love seeing the juniors do well. I think, you know, as we we're talking about culture in the past, powerlifting is one of those sports that, you know, it's so good. People want to see you do well. And as I was saying earlier, the, the crowd applauds his effort, but you definitely, they, they want to see you do well. And the juniors are a group of people that are so fun to watch because it's it's just incredible to see that people that are so young, that have so much strength and power at such a young age, it's quite humbling. If you have been lifting for several years, you know, and you think you're a half decent lifter, you show up to the gym and you know on a training session, and some junior just blows you away. It can be a little bit humbling. I don't know if anyone else has that experience. I know I do. So we got Pavlos up here for his second attempt. And he's looking pretty intense. As he That's a good, oh, that was close on depth. Yeah, he got, I think he got called on depth there. You could kind of see that when he got down close to parallel, he didn't quite sink that squat low enough to make that. So as, uh, as I was able to see earlier, they did get two red lights. The two side judges red lighted him there. So that was based on his depth. He did not squat low enough for a successful attempt on the squat. And that's, again, one of those things that you can get called on. And you really, need, when you're in the gym, you're training, you're trying to make, you're, tra you're training specifically for powerlifting, you have to really focus on getting that depth every time. If, you, if during your training sessions, you're not hitting depth, it's very difficult to hit depth when it's when it's game day and that's really what matters here is can you hit that depth on the day malachi is stepping up here i've seen malachi lift a few times as well he's also a junior 17 and 19 year age category he's going to squat 407.8 pounds that's a huge squat for a junior look at this guy that is intense you know he wanted that you could see he was really pushing didn't quite get there 
but we'll see what he does on his third attempt and hopefully he can pull something out for his third. Again, as we were saying, it's very difficult to come back from a failed second attempt on your, on your confidence to fail a second lift and then come back and hit your third, unless you have that kind of wartime experience, you know what I mean? So it can be a little bit tough. So I would, uh, I, I, I would, I would recommend people retake, uh, retake the, uh, retake the second the, attempt, retake way, right? the, re retake the attempt that they missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not Good. always a good idea to go up and wait on your third attempt if your second didn't go through. No. And you will see sometimes people take way too much weight on their first attempt, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. Now here's Zade again. He came down way oh, too. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, he bailed on that one. It's so it a couple like things there happened. It looks like. It looks to me like he was really psyched up. He came way too low and lost that tension. The came out, tension came out of the bar. You could see the right hand side. Uh, sorry, the, I guess the viewer would be the left hand side. Really dipped down on that side, and then he was really unable to recover from that. And it, he also bailed on the bar, which is a bit of a thing they really don't want you to do that because people can get hurt if you have 500 pounds on your back and you slip out from underneath of that bar. You can land on somebody's foot or their leg. Yeah, really. It can be pretty rough. They're really worried about the, the spotter's safety, making sure that they're safe. Um, but yeah, it, lo it lo looks like it slipped off his back. It did, yeah. Which is why you might see some guys with chalk all over their back just to help that bar stick to their back. But I mean, but... I mean, if you're not, if you don't have the tension and everything, the chalk's not going to hold 500 pounds on your back if you're, right. if you don't have the tension to begin with. So it looks like another flight is getting warmed up in the back there, as we can see them getting ready. Yeah. Some some big lifters back there. Some of the big boys getting ready. I see a few familiar faces in the warm-up area. Yeah, there. there's Sean. Got some, oh, I see I see Sean there. And Dave. Another Victoria Barbell guy. Yeah. Now you will see some other photographers wandering around the event here now. Now, another photographer, we want to give him a cool shout out here. He's actually part of the Kodiak Barbell crew, Dave. Dave's flying around here. I believe his photography handle on Instagram is called Death Vibes. Dave's a fantastic photographer. They make some really cool uh, lifting apparel and gear and stuff too. Yep. So they're Kodiak Barbell, that gym, they do coaching, they do training uh, in person, they do online. Super cool bunch of people. Um, as I said, Dave is a photographer. He's part of Kodiak. His his wife, his partner Kay, yeah. also a fantastic photographer, and happens to be our meet director here today at the Clash. Yeah, and she's running a great meet. This is such a smooth environment. Like the way she's laid it out and everything in the gym here is yeah. really good. The actual uh, event is running very smoothly. Like uh, every everything is on point. Everything is running smoothly, uh, which is really which is really nice to see. Because a lot of the time with meets, you'll run into technical problems here or you'll run into you know um uh you know spotters and loaders having trouble loading the weight but um these, these guys have been doing awesome it's running smoothly um it's uh definitely a crowded room in here it so. is very and you can you can you can literally feel the temperature in the room coming up as more people are coming in and you can see people out on the street even so so can we get a shot of the crowd camera team this crowd is is filling up the entire gym is filling up and people are out piled up on the street outside downtown Victoria the power lifters are taking over the city yeah and I'm all for it yeah you can see the people outside and everything like that here's Troy Benoit with his second squat attempt here 457.4 pounds very, very excited to see Troy lift here. Let's see if Troy can win some money off his wife. You, eh? you can see uh, some little bit, of, a couple oh. of tears coming out of his eye as that pressure wow. is mounting. As a as a lifter takes that weight and they come down with that much weight on their back, that is an an incredible amount of internal pressure that goes on the body. You'll see all kinds of stuff happen, and without getting into too great a detail, all kinds of fluids come out of all kinds of places when people have 500, 600, 700, 800 pounds of weight on their back and they're trying to get back up with that weight. Not uncommon to see bloody noses like mid lift or anything like that. I know I've, I've had it happen to me. Even before I even lift, just I unrack the weight and it starts bleeding just because of the pressure that you start to build up. Um, and you can see he had tears, tears coming out of his, his face. Eyes. Part of that might have been because of the smelling the salts, salts back, back there. But And for those of you who don't know, smelling salts are basically some ammonia salts that lifters will add a little bit of water to those salts 
They shake it up and then they, they will uh, inhale slowly through your nose. And what that does is that really gets your central nervous system fired up to lift. It's and like if you need a slap in the face, then you need to sniff some smelling salts and get after it. Now, there's no uh, like side effects of sniffing smelling salts for those at home. It's not bath salts. We're not a bunch of drug addicts out here. Yeah. Smelling salts are just a, a bit of a stimulant. It's no different than having some caffeine, a, a cup well, of coffee. Well, it's a little bit different than a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. <laughs> I've never cried drinking coffee before. Here's Griffin. Oh, wa oh, wow. That was a great squat. That was so clean. 468 pound squat. That was a great squat. Yeah. That was a really, really clean lift. Like, and that was a, was that, uh, yeah, that was, that was Griffin. Griffin is a junior between 17 and 19. Mm -hmm. wow. Again, I love to see those juniors putting up big numbers. It's wow. so cool to see that. I was talking um, on your break there earlier just about it's so inspiring to see how good the juniors are doing and how strong they are, yeah. but also how humbling it can be when you yourself have been lifting for several years and then a junior smokes you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. you're like, man, I've been lifting for 10 years. I got nothing close to that sort of thing. Yeah. It's really cool to see. And there's a lot of there's a lot of juniors getting back into powerlifting is growing rapidly. The yeah. numbers of membership numbers in powerlifting are on the rise across the board. Everybody is turning to powerlifting. A lot of people are getting involved in strength sports right now. I, I think so. I, th I think it's becoming more and more common mm -hmm. just for health and wellness, not even just for sport. Um, so this is, I really want to see Finley lift here. If this is, uh, I, th I think Finley's the guy I was, or Robin is maybe who I'm thinking about, actually. I'm really excited to see Robin lift again, because mm -hmm. we, we were talking about how he just, like, there's, he looks so professional so there, when he's out there. That was Finley there. That, so those were the ammonia smelling salts we were just talking about. Yeah. Look at this. Finley is also a junior, 20 to 23. Okay, Finley is looking like he's feeling this weight here, yeah. but he's going to try to steady himself, and here he goes. Wow, look at that depth. He's made it down. Oh, he's going to grind that out. one out, guys. He got that. Wow. Good so job. Two, I, two white lights, I, one red light. That must have been depth on the side, Judge. I didn't really see sometimes. And this is also the reason why there's three refs, there's three judges, because you can be looking at one thing, and think that that lift looks entirely fantastic and somebody else sees something completely different that you didn't see. Yeah. And you know, you wouldn't expect that. You know, if you're deep if you're if you're deep enough on one side, if one of your legs and one side of your hips are, is deep enough, yeah. You wouldn't really expect that someone could not get deep enough on the other side, but it's just it's just the way that people move under that amount of pressure and it, can they maintain that that uh, that form during during the during the lift? Yeah. Yeah, again, like there's a reason why there's three referees, right? Because not one person can't see it all. And they also want to make sure they're getting the different angles. So I'm really excited to Here's see Robin. Uh, Robin lift here. Me too. I that was a great, like, look, he had a great Very opener. controlled walkout, big breath. 512 nice. pound squat, no problem. Very nice. So obviously having to, having to put a little bit more effort into that squat than he did on his first attempt, mm -hmm. but still looked very clean. No form breakdowns. Looked very good. The bar um, kept moving, and it didn't slow down. No. It just kept going. So I think we're going to see a little bit more from him. Now, some people's strategies on a second attempt. Now, I think the first attempt really should back up one step. The first attempt is kind of, it should be, an easy opener for lifters, something you've done before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something you've done before in the gym. A weight that you're familiar with, you've lifted before, it's not going to you know throw you off on meet day because... If you can't make that first opener and you fail your next two, you're you're done in the event, you get disqualified. That's what we mean when you say you bombed out yeah. on your squats. Yeah, so we, we don't want to see anybody bombing out yeah. just because they picked a weight that's too heavy on their first attempt, right? And so luckily we're past first attempts. Um, we And I don't think we've seen, uh, well, it looks, yeah, actually, no, I lied. There is, I uh, know nobody missed their first attempt this flight so far. Which is really good to see. Nobody missing their first attempt. Because when people miss their first, that's when they're at risk of bombing out. And they're at risk of uh, potentially you know, missing the rest of them if they, if they can't even hit their first. So uh, we'll turn around and watch Jonathan here. And then, uh, yeah, we'll turn around and watch Jonathan. And we'll see how his lift goes.
Yeah, nice dab coming up quick. Easy. That was very easy. Three white lights. Up next, we got Steve coming up. Steve's gonna be taking 270 kilos. Wow, this is this is a uh, Steve. Steve is increasing his squat by 20 kilos. That's a huge jump. That's a massive jump. He's he went from going from 250 to 270. That's a big jump, guys. That's, so I was at 20 kg is a that's, 45. That's, that's about a 45, 45 pound, pound jump. jump. So by a plate. And when you you know when you're operating at that top like five percent of what you're capable of, a 45 pound jump is pretty high. Like 20 kg is pretty high. You're kind of expecting people to go up, you know, five, ten tops or something. But it is pretty high. But that's a big jump. But to be honest, if he started out really light on his first attempt, it's not not that out of the ordinary. Like to jump up that high if he started super light. Um, oh, here's Joshua. I thought Steve was coming up next. It's another fantastic. His squats looked amazing. I really like. Yeah, he had a really good first squat. Mm -hmm. 545 pounds. Again, he went up. He went up he, 20 kilos as well. That's a big jump. That's a Here big jump, and he's got it though. no problem. He's got it. Let's see what the judges have to say. Three whites. And you know, I think that's you can kind of see it sometimes when lifters are used to spending some time under the bar when it, the weight is really heavy like that. You can kind of see that, that they're comfortable there. Yeah. He looks comfortable under that weight. So he went up 20 kilos. Steve, who's coming up right now, is going up 20 kilos. And this is all because they picked really light first attempts, which is what you want to do. You want to just get on the board and make sure you don't bomb out. And that's a really um, experienced lifter thing to do, in my opinion, is start out super light. They started out with a squat that, and we, we said earlier, their squat looked perfect. And that's because they were doing what's a lighter weight for them, right? right. They weren't getting close to their max yet or anything. Um, so now they're, now they're starting to get into that heavier weight. So... And that's why they're able to do 20 kilo jump. Now, if I don't think we'll see another 20 kilo jump up to their third, um, I think so that was Steve is getting ready here. Steve is up. So there's Darrell Petty's here. He's on the. He's the guy who's shifting the bar right now. He's a. I, I believe he's a record holder of several records. He's a coach here today. There's Steve. He's getting under the bar. Yeah, Darrell. Darrell's a, a deadlift Canadian deadlift record holder. Mm -hmm. Now Steve, such an intense lifter. So control. There we go. Very good. Yeah. We had that all day long. Let's see what the judges say. And three whites. 595.2 pounds. Yeah, That's good. what that was for Steve. That was a great lift for Steve. I hope he watches this afterwards because I'm singing his praises. Yeah. I mean, let like let's take a look. Yeah, you can really tell. There's a lot of intensity there when he takes that bar off. You yeah. can tell. And he's so controlled. Like this is almost. Yeah, just so controlled. It's the same. It's the you know, one fluid motion, the same speed the whole way. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's no problem for Steve. You can see, uh, you know, everyone's faces are turning red. Everything's going red. The amount of pressure that they're undergoing under these big heavy squats is intense. For sure, when you got five, six hundred pounds on your back, it it's a lot. It's, even for these guys, like you know, they might they might be used to it because they do it, but it's still heavy. <laughs> And here's Dalton back out here again for another attempt. And another equipped lifter, you can tell by the reps on his knees. Yeah, so typically I find with people who squat in wraps, you see a really slow descent typically, and then a really quick, uh, really quick up. So really slow and controlled, and then... Yeah. yeah. You kind of see that bounce out of the bottom, man. Eh? Totally. That's so what I those... wraps so really help with that? Those wraps really help with... Uh, getting a little bit of extra bounce out of the bottom there because as you're lowering down it's basically think of it as a spring it's building tension in your, uh, in, your right. in your knee joint there and, and this is known as the stretch reflex as well at the bottom end of that you'll get muscles like Norris was just I'll let you ex finish explaining yeah no it's all good uh, so I mean like your body naturally does that as well the stretch reflex as you're building that tension going down and then when you pop out of the bottom it's that stretch re reflex of your muscles allow you to spring up mm -hmm. what the wraps do and even the knee sleeves is just sort of uh, aid in that it, it just gives you that extra little boost mm -hmm. um, now there's a reason the reason why wraps are in its own separate category 
uh, at Classic Raw is because they do help a lot more than just knee sleeves do. Knee sleeves, knee sleeves don't nearly help as much as wraps will. Wraps will help you lift a lot more weight, and that's why they're in a totally different, uh, different class. Yeah. So here we go. We got Daniel back out here again wow. for another attempt. The first 705 pound squat. This is our first 700 pound squat of the day. Yeah. The fir 320 first kilograms. First 700 pound squat of the day here. This is a big lift. Wow. Here he goes. Oh. You see him shaking wow. his head there that on was the a way good, back up. That was a good fight. He really, you know, Dan was really fighting for that squat, and he kind of got halfway up and real, and he, you know, he did the responsible thing, which is he said like, "I can't yeah. get, I'm done." Like, yeah, you could see that he, he, a bit of a shake of the head. He's come help me, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you don't want to if, if you if you know you're in trouble, don't try to grind it out because that's just going to lead to injury. It's a good way to get hurt. Yeah. So nope. you can see there he. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty good squat attempt, though. You could tell he's he wants that. He, we're gonna see what he comes out with on his third. I think he can do that weight. Like 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 it looked like he could do it. I think he. We got John McDonald coming out here, and uh, I also see his coach Cole over here. Cole is giving him some words of advice. John's looking intense right now. He's got the tunes going. He's definitely not listening to the Dixie Chicks right now. I'll tell you that. He's coming out. Here we go. He's got the ammonium salts. He's coming out. We want to see John crush this squat. The room is getting a wow. little bit lively around here because people know there's a lot of weight on the bar. It's another 705-pound squat. John McDonald out of Blacksmith Fitness in Port Coquitlam, and he is shaking with intensity right now. You can see the intensity. He came here to prove to himself that he can do this. Let's go, John. Oh, you missed that one. That was a rapid, rapid descent. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how quick John descends into his squat. Um, t like I was saying, typically with wraps, you're gonna want to have a lower or a, a slower descent, mm -hmm. especially in wraps, build that tension and then spring out of the bottom. But he's just Snappy. diving in. And it looked to me like when he got down close to the the bottom, the hole, got into the hole of the squat, that some of the tension was gone, perhaps on the way down, or that maybe he was going down a little bit faster than the bar and so when that bar kind of like started to slow down the descent started to slow down it was a bit too much for him to come back up with it i can't really tell well we might follow up with him later and see what he has to say about that squat yeah it, it's it's tough to tell especially sitting from here like yeah it's it's tough to see exactly like we're looking on a kind of a little monitor as well as kind of sitting behind the judges so it's hard to know exactly what what's happening um it could just be a mental thing too honestly like when you've got 700 pounds on your back there's a big mental component to um to being successful in this sport and uh yeah it's it's too bad that john missed that because i know john can do it i think he, i think i've seen him do 700 he's pounds it. he's so. done it in the gym before and that's kind of the thing that we've been talking about you know all day is there's a gym pr and then there's powerlifting is a big difference right especially like you got to understand too in the powerlifting when by the time somebody gets to deadlifts they've already gone full send on the squats they've already gone full send on their bench press and then you're coming to the deadlift where they have to pull you know five six seven eight hundred pounds off the floor yeah. and you're fatigued yeah. by the time you get there but when you're training in the gym some people don't so you, know, you don't you don't get that intensity sometimes in that training or different muscle groups well, and it's also or different squatting in front of a room of 100 people here, yeah. right? Um, so Aiden Skinner is... The lights are on, the cameras are on, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of action in here. Yeah, so this is a really small jump. He only went up two and a half kilos mm -hmm. to 120 kilos for his last attempt. Yeah. I, wow. think, I think that's a smart choice for him. Yeah. That, was a, that was a good squat for him. He, you could well, tell he had, there was weight on the bar for him, but I think he's, he's, trying, to, he's trying to take this... In a mature way, by the sounds, by the looks of it, his attempts and well, the way he's squatting there. He's a, he's only in the age gap of 14 to uh, 16, so he's probably got a parent, good, good a coaching. coach, somebody in his corner helping him along. And when you're, you know, is, I don't know if this is his first meet or if he's competed before, mm -hmm. um, but he look like he looks like he's competed before. He looks very uh, confident in what right. he's doing up there. Um, 
but you want to make sure that, especially in your first competition or when you're young, that you just go nine for nine. Get all your lifts on the board. Don't try anything dumb and like start trying to go for new big PRs or anything. Like go nine for nine, build your confidence, and then when you get a little bit older, a little bit more experience, and you actually start going for big records and stuff like that, you've got a really good foundation. And so Aiden's Aiden looks like he's a gonna be a really good lifter one day when he's older. Oh, there's a grind from Pablo. Nice grind. Good job on that lift. You could tell he was feeling the weight on that one, but he had it covered. Yeah, that was that was uh, he had a wide stance too, hey. That was a very wide stance, and yeah. also another equipped lifter, as you noticed by the wraps on his knees. I don't know if you guys quite caught that. Now I don't know if you can kind of see behind me, but we have a couple of uh, our our head refs here at the moment. The two ladies that are in front of the platform, we have Kay in the white shirt. Kay is the meet director. She's also part of Kodiak Barbell, and then Laura is also a meet director. And Laura has an event coming up in the very near future as well in uh, collaboration with Blacksmith Fitness. They're gonna be putting on a pretty awesome, uh, it's called the Metal Mayhem and that's coming up this summer. That's gonna be a double platform event. So there's gonna be two of these platforms going at the same time. Now here's some intensity here. Malachi's coming out. He's getting a few slaps on the back. I think his dad is back there. I think his, I believe Malachi's father oh, is his coach. Yes. And, and you know what? That is a, that's a strong family because his daughter I've seen lift too and she is a fantastic yeah. lifter Yeah, and well. his dad, I used to, uh, he used to be my rugby coach when I was in high school. Well, that's cool. Yeah, and so he, Malachi, if you remember, didn't make his second attempt and we want to see what's going on on this third. Oh. He's going up. Oh, he's fighting for that. Yeah. It's not there today, guys. It's that was very close. It's just not there. But... The will for it to be there is there. That's yeah. a lot of intensity. He's having a good time. These guys have a great time. That family, I always know, is very supportive. They love being here. It's kind of like a family activity for them. And that's another thing about the lifting community, guys, is it's, it is extremely family friendly. Yeah. And we're gonna play you guys a couple of videos from some of our lifters later, some interviews that we've done with them, but they'll they'll tell you. They'll tell you that uh, you know some of these lifters are extremely um, intimidating at first. You get these big, strong people that are very intense on the platform, they can be a little intimidating, but yep. generally speaking, they're the nicest people in the gym. Yeah. And, and they wanna see you do well because yeah. you know they've been where you are at some point. So it is a very welcoming community. You know, a great uh, where new new pe newcomers are not only you know it's okay for them to be there. They, pe people love to see new powerlifters. Yeah, and I think and I and I think uh, you know they're, they're, we're coming we're com we're coming away from the uh, old style of powerlifting from like the 90s and 80s where it was all these giant butch dudes with giant handlebar mustaches, you know. And now you have now you have you know here's Zade. Oh wow. 435 pound squat coming oh. to blacksmith fit. He wanted that. No, it's uh. no. So uh, I don't know if you guys caught that, but one of the spotters on the left-hand side of the platform did I, grab the weight think. Um, before the ref said to take it, but um, I don't know if we should really criticize him because it did look, from where I was sitting, it looked like the bar started to come down. And I think out of a desire to save the lifter from an injury, he grabbed that weight. So yeah. we're gonna wait for a second to see what the referees say about that attempt, whether or not they're gonna accept that. I, I don't, they're not gonna accept the attempt. They're not gonna accept, no. okay, so. Be, we'll, because, because the. Uh, it was clearly coming down. Well, here's the thing. I think what they can do is, if the referees determine that, um, if, if the referee determines that uh, it, that the spotter shouldn't have grabbed it mm -hmm. and that the, that the spotter was in the wrong, mm -hmm. they might give him another attempt. Right. Um, but they might just say, like, even though we didn't say grab it, the, li the lifter was, in, or the spotter was in the right to grab it if, if it, because it, it did start to, it was starting to look a little unsafe. Oh, yeah, that looks, yeah, yeah. But you, he did, the thing about it is the lifter doesn't want to, they did not want to abandon that squat. No. Zade was not leaving that squat bar. It no. was going to be, as my good friend Ryan says, a PR or ER situation. <laughs> now, here's Troy back up here again. I think he hit the smelling cells. You can see the tears of joy coming out of his eye. He can't wait to be here. 474-pound squat. He got the depth. No. Oh, it wasn't quite there. You so. saw the hips started to rise, and the shoulders didn't. You kind of knew there was. Yeah. he might not make it up. It is a bit hard. When you lose, when you get out of your form and you lose that... that um, that movement pattern on a squat or something like that is hard to get back into a proper movement pattern. And if you if your hips start to rise too fast too soon, yeah. and the rest of you is not rising, it's kind of a recipe to get stapled, as yeah. they call it. 
Well, and hey, here's Dave taking some cool pictures behind us from Death Vibes. I don't know if we want to get a shot of Dave over here with the camera. <laughs> wow. Look at. So Griffin's coming up here next, 496 pound squad. Another look at the junior. Look at the intensity there. This is an insane lift for juniors. You got to understand, this is a junior lifter who's under the age of 19 who's going to squat 500 pounds nearly. There's a lot of crazy good junior lifters today. I'm genuinely really impressed with the junior lifters today. Mm -hmm. now, I do see the platform chief at the moment seems to be Shane Calhoun. He's the guy that's right in front of the banner there. Shane Calhoun is also, also a junior lifter, and that guy's going after world records. And I think this year we're gonna see records fall. Shane Calhoun is coming after the all-time junior squat world record. Yeah. I believe is 777 pounds. And he's after that record, he wants it. But here's Griffin wow. with a 496 pound squat. Here he goes. Wow. That looked deep enough so to good. me. I think he got that. We got three thumbs up yeah. from the ref, so it looks like it that's looks good. Like, now, like sometimes a little bit of technical difficulties happen. There's a lot of lights and cables and things plugged in, so yeah, it does look like the lights are out at the moment. There's, so a, lot of, there's a lot of cords and power going on. And a lot of coordination happens yeah. at these events, yeah. but you will see sometimes when that does happen, technical difficulties, the refs will give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as to whether or not the lift was good or not. Yeah, Griffin, that was a great squat. Like, was good. that was a third attempt, but it looked like it could have been a first attempt. Yeah. It looked really it, yeah, good. Yeah, he came right back up with that. It was beautiful. Yeah, it looked very comfortable. So um, we've got Robin coming out again now. He's a, we've been, we're enjoying watching Robin squats yeah, here. He I'm, is a very I'm, strong squat. I'm really liking watching uh, Robin squat here. He's... Uh, yeah, Ro Robin's so good. He just took a big whiff of uh, smelling salts. Oh, he's bringing some intensity oh, yeah, this time. He's ready. This is so. This is third attempt material right here. This is he 200. came here to lift this weight. Yeah, this is this is the weight he wants because he's been so relaxed and this entire time, and now he's showing some good intensity. Let's go, Robin. Yeah. Depth Very good. There. Yeah, he's it looks good. Let's go. Finish it. You got it. Electric. It looks like it might be good. Wow. I can see his coach Sue loving this performance. He's very happy with himself right now. Wow. Celebrations on the platform all around. That's a that's wow. a happy lifter right there. And you gotta be you gotta be happy when you know it could be even that maybe he hasn't hit that lift before, and was saving it for meet day. You know, because sometimes you don't know what you're capable of. Tell us about what happens. The Norris has done several preps for powerlifting event. I myself am going to be on the platform next week in Kelowna, but tell us about how do lifters get pre uh, prepared and tapered to get on the platform? How does that? Because you're people. What people don't understand is that you don't go to the gym and then just add two pounds to your lift every time you go there. There's a there's a rhyme and a reason, and there's a total science to a person's prep yeah, before you, they get onto the platform. You do it in a really big cycle. Um, you do it in like little four to six week cycles, and you do that continuously for. You know, preferably you, you go all year and you do kind of an off season and then you uh, and then you peak for competition in about anywhere from six to ten weeks. Mm -hmm. Here's Jonathan here, 540 pounds. And he looks wow. confident in that. That's determination right there. You can see, you can you can always tell when a lifter is looking up through the eyebrows at you. They are in the zone. That was a that was a slow but steady squat. It was good. Yeah, he yeah. knew he was in it. That was a third attempt. He knew it was a third attempt, and yeah. he treated that like a third attempt. Yeah, it looked yeah. like a third attempt. So, it, you know good on him, he picked good numbers. Yeah, no, no, he picked really good numbers. Like that was a really good one because anything heavier than that would have been um, starting to get on the edge of sketchy. Because he, like, that was you could tell that was kind of that was right at his max there where he was comfortable. Because right. so, sometimes people can start going where they're, you know, it's still it's starting to get, it's still you know maybe within their reach, but it's looking more like 50-50. Yeah. Yeah, because they're, get, they're getting out of their comfort zone, but he's, it looks like he stayed. It was a good lift for Jonathan. Stayed within a little bit of his comfort uh, and it made a really good attempt. Here's Joshua attempt. back again. 556 pound squad. The third attempt is really where we're starting to see more of the intensity start to come out of some of these guys. A lot of intensity. Joshua, is here. he came here to lift. And he's taking a short step back here. He's gonna stabilize himself. 
and you will notice he's going to straighten his legs before the refs say to squat. Now, here he comes. It, that looked very wow. high to me on one side. I think it he's going to get called I'd for depth. Yeah. yeah. So he got called for depth on the one side, it does he, look like. He, his hip looked very lopsided, which is yes. very bizarre because on that one side in the front looked really good, but on our side, you could tell his hip was uh, was high. But mm -hmm. um, The left-hand side, you could see the hip was a lot higher. Yeah. Now, I, what's the official rule for how deep does a squat have to be? Uh, so your your hip joint your hip joint has to uh, go below the top of your knee, basically. If you draw if you squat down and you draw a line from the top of your knee uh, parallel um, horizontally from the top of your knee, um, your your hip joint needs to dip just below there. Um, doesn't matter if you're you know half an inch above the line or whatever. It's uh, yeah, you got to make sure you dip below it. And what's really hard on squats is people's body is people's bodies are different, their mechanics are different, people's hip joints and stuff like that sometimes sit in different places. And so, you, really, on people's first attempts, you have to figure out where that is as a referee. You have to figure out where that uh, where that point is and and keep an eye on that throughout their next attempts. We got some minor adjustment happening on the mono leg. It does look like the the the. Uh, the arms were supposed to be a little bit wider. He wanted to put his hands there, so that's why we got that. Uh, Steve's, an, Steve's an intense lifter. I, he, yeah. he loves to get psyched up. This is a third attempt. I bet you we're going to see a grind here. Yeah, this is 282.5 kilos, 663 pounds. 623 pounds. Wow, very smooth. I think he's a little high on that left side again. No, oh, ref so oh, he good. got it. Three white lights, so that was nice. a successful squat. He's going to definitely be happy with that squat. That's an impressive squat for yeah. sure. Well, and Steve was so smooth on that lift. Like, Yeah, he's a fantastic lifter to watch. And like you saw there, he's it's, it's very intense. Yeah. But, um, yeah. The room is getting more and more packed all along, and there are still lifters getting ready in the warm-up area there, but this room is electric right now. There's a lot of people in here at the moment. And yeah. it's kind of standing room only at the back. Yeah, this is only flight B. We still have flight C after this. A whole, a whole other group flight. to go through their squats. So, That's right. And they're probably going to be um, some big squats some in this next group. Squats. It's going to be the big boys in this next group. Now, we've got a very intense lift. There's got a little bit of yelling going on back here. Dalton Gendron's coming up here. 661.4 pound squat wow. attempt. Third attempt. A quip lifter. You can tell by the wraps on his knees there yeah. again. I'm not quite equipped, just classic raw. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Okay, we... Wow. That, uh, that, look, that looks scary down at the bottom there. You will see, sometimes on those third attempts, it's a person's excuse to full send, you know? Yeah. Like, well, that first attempt is really supposed to be something you've done before, you know how to do it, you kind of have a good grip, you've, you're comfortable with that way. Second attempts are like okay now we're gonna we're gonna push a bit we're gonna see what we can do yeah. and that third attempt is like sometimes it's a hail mary for people and they want to see if they can they break a record you know if they're looking for a PR they want to do something that they've never done before it all it all depends on what your goals are going into that competition some people's goals they're going into it with like I want to hit this on squats. I want to hit this on deadlift. Some people are going for it. I just want a, a certain total. I want a total at the end That's of it. That's right, yes. And so however they have to do that is what they'll do. Here's another huge attempt. Now Dan's going to come back to the same weight that he tried on that second attempt there. Yeah, if 705 you pounds. 705. He, didn't, he, he had an unsu unsuccessful second attempt here, but it looks like he's ready for this third one. We're looking for redemption here, so Dan. He's looking to land this. Yeah, very, very oh, nice. If he keeps going, he may get it. That's a great Wow. Right yes. Great wow. Wow. Wow, that was good. And that's a good lift. That's a great lift. Wow. The crowd loves that lift. That was a fantastic that lift. That was, that was one of the craziest grinds I've ever yeah. seen on squat. Yeah. That was, like, the... At the, any moment, he could have dropped it, you know, like, wow. I, I didn't know. Like, the ability to grind through that, like... It's, like, very, very impressive. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, like was, we, so, that was been, so cool. We've been talking about confidence all day here, and uh, it takes a lot of confidence to, to feel your entire body shuddering 
at that much weight and the strain that you're putting on your body and to fight through that all the way and then stick that squat good for him i'm glad dan got that one here's john he's getting ready to come back out again john Yo, mcdonald evan he's looking pretty intense come take a look at this i want to count down how long he was grinding for here so what the uh, what you guys can't see right now is that uh, norris is watching a basic an instant replay of daniel's squat attempt and we're watching how long he spent struggling to get that bar wow. back up there that, that was about six seconds he well, spent long time. in the center of that squat and we're back to john mcdonald here under the bar and he is shaking with intensity again because he got that first squat the second one he missed it and he's he didn't come here to go home without full send here. He came here to leave it all on the platform, and that's what he's going to do right now. Here he comes. There it is. He's got it too. That's oh, not there. It's not there, guys. Wow, that was much. Yeah. That was a much better attempt. That was a very a lot better attempt. Yeah. yeah, a lot more controlled on the descent on that third one. But it looked like he was happy to be there, and you know he's he signed up for this. You yeah. know, like. John is a no-nonsense lifter in his approach to training, and his entire team's approach to training is very not no-nonsense. Yeah. Sure, we all have bad days, but when it's time to get the work done, it's time to get the work done. Well, John said something really interesting in that video that you made of him. He said, you know, this is an individual sport. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't have teammates to lean on and stuff like that, right? Like on a you know on a on a basketball team, you've got a team of 20 guys or whatever, right? This is like powerlifting is kind of a you know, it's, it's all on you to do it, right? There, there's, you can't lean on your team to, to, to help you uh, lift more, right? That's right. Like, in a, you know, in a basketball team, in a basketball game, if you're having a, you know, a shit game, you got other teammates to help to pick up the slack for you, right? That's but right. But powerlifting, if, if, if you're not on point and you're uh, maybe not performing the way you want to, um, you can't lean on anybody else. It's all on you. And That's John, right. and John, you know, he said he kind of liked that. He liked that he thrived on that. Right. It's all on him. It creates a lot of responsibility for him to be able to, you know, really own, own his his uh, sport his sport. Right. Uh, Here's Zade. Now, Zade is going to want to make this third squat. Zade was uh, getting into natural bodybuilding for a little while there. Had a good time, did that for a couple of years. So they're, so they're giving Zade another attempt here. Oh, this is his. There it is. I hope he gets this, guys. I really hope he does. And uh, unfortunately, no he didn't. I think that was a depth thing on yeah, one side for sure. When when you see the two side judges both give it reds. You know it's depth. Typically, it's depth, yeah. Um, so that was good that they gave him a, another attempt. It's too bad that he missed it. But I don't think that the, I don't think that the spotter was in the wrong to, to take that weight. Even though they did kind of jump the gun and they should have waited for the ref, you know, they didn't do it out of malice or anything, right? It's yeah. sort of, you want to see the lifter be safe and I think that's what he was just trying to do. And a good powerlifting federation and a good judge will will err on the side of the lifter quite frequently because they want to give, It's not. this is not a sport where they want to see you fail. Like everybody here wants to see you do well. The referees want to see you do well, the officials, the coaches, Everybody in this room wants to see you succeed. So if you know if it's if it's a judgment call, they want to give you the benefit of the doubt. They're going to give you that opportunity to come back and redeem yourself yeah. if something has happened. So I'm glad that they gave him another attempt. Um, it's too bad that he didn't get it though. So we've got so, Tim Doyle so up here. Is, this looks like this looks like flight number or flight C. So we're jumping right into the third flight, uh, and this is a big flight here. There's a lot of athletes on here. A lot of athletes on this flight. This is a big flight. We have a lot of a lot of large lifters here. So, it's okay, here he comes. That's a fast oh, descent. Wow. There. there he goes. That was that was the first. That was here. the first attempt if I've ever seen that one. That was a very easy first attempt. Yeah. I think we'll see a little heavier from Tim on the next one. Yeah. As he may decide to put a little bit more weight on the bar. Yeah, because he's a big boy. Like he's yes, a, he's a big lifter. He's a 140 kilo lifter. Um, so and it's hard for people to see how tall some of these individuals are and these lifters are on the platform as well. But that Tim, he looks like he's seven feet tall. He's got to be six foot five. If yeah, there's anything. He, he's a big tall dude, that's yeah. for sure. And there, and this this room continues to fill up. Against my, you know, I didn't think the room could fit any more people in here. We are packed at the moment. Yeah, this crowd is is banging. So we've got. 
Mike McLaughlin coming up here, 396 pound opener. I believe, I believe I, yes, I've seen Mike lift at a couple of different events. He's a very intense lifter as well, but he's measured. He's a mature lifter. He's been doing this for a little while and yeah, well, he's a pretty temp tempered lifter here. He's a master lifter, 50 mm -hmm. to 54. Uh, weighing in at 125 kilos or 120.6 kilos. That is a deep squat for nice. him. You know, when you're that tall, it's hard to get down that far. Good for him. That's three white lights on that squat. Yeah, tall guy. Tall guys really uh, can sometimes struggle with squat <laughs> and making sure they. And, and and you know, body mechanics are de as we've kind of talked about. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, hip joints and how people take a, a narrower or wider stance during a squat. And, you know, everyone's bodies grow differently. You, the lengths of your bones are different, the structure, the way that you're built, and your genetics really play a lot into um, how you're going to perform some of these lifts because they're, call, they're called compound movements. It's more than one joint that's moving at a time. So, if, for instance, at a squat, you've got the hip joint, you've got the knees are going. Now, here's Antonio. I've seen t Antonio is a pretty savage lifter oh, wow. as well here. He just got 402 pound squat. I think that looks good to me. Three white lights. I believe nice. he is still, is he a junior? No, he's open now. I've been watching Antonio since he was a junior yeah. and he was impressive then and he's impressive now. Yeah. So it's good to see this progression. As I said earlier, with the, all these juniors coming in, it's really cool to see them when they leave their juniordom and they go into the open category. It's cool to see, you know, how they stack up against some of the, the open lifters that have been doing it. And yeah, because they might be like a top dog in the junior category, yeah. and then they go into open. That's and, right. And they're back at, like, uh, much, they're, you know, they're not top dog anymore mm -hmm. a lot of the time. I mean, there's going to be some exceptions, like, like Shane Calhoun is going to dominate in the open division because yeah. he's a freak in the junior yeah. division. Some of these juniors, uh, like you said about Shane, like, Shane can outlift a lot of open lifters that I've seen, you know, with 20 years experience lifting, like, and he'll smoke them. It's pretty wild. So it's cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, Shane, Shane and you kind of see Shane up at the platform a little bit today, uh, being a, a loader and a spotter today. So um, he was supposed to compete this weekend, um, but unfortunately he had to pull out, I think, due to an injury or something like mm -hmm. that. Now here's Troy on the platform. Troy is also Another. a blacksmith fitness lifter. Yeah. Wow, nice squat. Oh, yeah, he's got that all day long. Oh, two oh, reds. he did get called on something. Did he start prematurely? Uh, I believe, yes, it does sound like he jumped to command. I thought that's what that was. Yeah. So the squat, again, for you guys listening at home or wherever you are, um, you cannot start the lift until the referees are ready for you and they give you that start command. Now, on a squat, you'll hear them yell squat, and it's very loud so that there can be no mistake as to what was said. Yeah. And there's often a lot of hand movement squat. You cannot start the squat until you get that s the start command for that squat. So it does sound like, unfortunately, he jumped that start command and he got red lighted for it. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because it was a beautiful squat. It was it a just, good squat. Um, yeah, you got to listen to the judge's commands because, again, everybody has to be held to the same standard. It's the same standard. This sport is about being fair to everyone now. Here's Bort here, 451.9 pounds. Wow, he is a 100% raw easy. lifter. He is barely hanging onto that bar. I know. I think that's a shoulder mobility, perhaps, that you can't get in underneath of that. Yeah, that's really be. interesting. He was barely, he was just holding on with he his fingers just, there. You could just see his upper fingers there. We're just kind of gently hanging onto the bar. Yeah. He was just holding on with his fingers there. There's, and also, I don't know if you noticed. There's Stu in the back there giving a little bit of coaching to another one of his lifters there. You saw Stuart there a minute ago, also from Kodiak Barbell, yeah. one of their main, I think, believe he's the, the head coach. I think Stu's the head coach. Stu is the head coach, head coach and, and, and co-owner of Kodiak Barbell. That's right. And then, so he's also handling um, Kyle. Uh, Kyle McKee that's coming up here. So Kyle, I followed Kyle on Instagram for a while. He's also a coach for Kodiak Barbell. I see. He's, he's one of the newest coaches for Kodiak. Mm -hmm. Um, but he is a very precise lifter. Like he's very, he's one of those. He holds himself to a very high standard. Um, and you'll watch here. He's very particular, very clean lifter. Also a fantastic mustache, and that makes all the difference on I those mean, lifts. The mustache adds ten plus uh, plus ten power. Four hundred four four hundred seventy four pound squat, very and that nice. looks very easy for him. Yeah, and I don't know if you noticed, but. Kyle is very, very tall. 
extremely tall. <laughs> yeah, Another guy looks like he's 6'5 or 6'7. Yeah, so Kyle's very tall there, uh, and he's got very long legs. So hitting squat depth for him is uh, you know, a challenge. It, it's a challenge. He has to travel. Like, the actual distance he has to travel to get down is quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, quite a far distance. So for him to be able to hit a squat like that very cleanly is, is uh, impressive. But he's a very, very clean uh, lifter, just very precise, and um, I really like his approach to training. I'm excited to see him. Uh, I'm excited to see him bench because his bench has uh, really progressed in the time that I followed him on Instagram. Yep. His bench has gotten really good, so I'm excited to see him bench. And these meets are cool because you know it, uh, powerlifting is a very tight knit community. It's very niched. And I think there's a perception that it's a small community. I don't think it's a small community. I think it's a large community, but it's spread out. Totally. So it's kind of cool you come to these events. That's a beautiful squat there. 518 pounds from Kyle Gordon. That yeah. came straight up. That was so easy. Like that's, that. that's an opener right there. That's what an opener is kind of supposed to look like. It's yeah. supposed to look kind of easy. Yeah, you really want your, you want your opener to look like a warm-up weight, basically. Mm -hmm. you know, if, you're, if you're struggling with an opener, it's too heavy. You know, you want you want your opener to just be like a, a really easy weight. You don't have to think about it. You just it's a day it's a lift that you can go out to the gym and and hit it one in one, one in the morning on no sleep and you mm -hmm. could you could do it like it might not mm -hmm. be the nicest lift but right. you could do it. So it's just you want it to be something that you could hit any given day basically and that's what that looked like. That looked super easy. Okay, so we if you notice his back is chalked right up here. He's got his lots of chalk on the back and again guys. That's just to keep that bar from shifting when it's there. You do not want the weight to shift no. once you're ready for that squat. This is Jeff Harwell with 523.6 pounds. That's 237.5 kilograms. Now, I'm, I'm telling the weights to you guys in pounds because it's a little bit more relatable if you're unfamiliar with kilograms, as contrary to the powerlifting culture as that might be. Wow. Here's Jeff. Oh, there was, oh, I don't oh, think he's going to make this because there was some up and down on the bar. Yeah. It does look like he got called for that. And as the announcer was saying, it does it does look like he's more than strong enough to do that lift. It was a matter of, as Norris illustrated earlier, if this is the bar on a squat and he comes down into the hole of that squat, they, they, they can't come up and then back down and then back up again. It has to smoothly come up into a final position. If there's any downward motion in that bar, it's disqualified. Yeah, and that's with any of the lifts too. It's not just on squats with bench press, deadlifts. If there's any downward, downward motion, motion, it's a, it's going to be a no lift, even if you successfully complete it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were talking about there's such a difference between competition lifts and gym lifts, because in the gym that would count. And here's Andrew Chichka. Now you're, we're going to play a video from Andrew here and not too long as well, but 567.7 pound squat. Andrew Chichka trains out of Blacksmith Fitness in Port Coquitlam, another one of the savages from those guys. He is an awesome person. Wow. He's one of those crowd favorites because he has such a genuine, friendly demeanor. Yeah. And he and he really just loves to be part of this lifting community. Yeah. Um, I spoke with him again down in the, in the gym there in Port Coquitlam awesome guy and he's also very excited to see what's happening in the sport with the juniors and how all that's going but i love to see people like andrew because he's this big strong dude and it's so cool to see how much of a kind of a mentor he is to other people in the gym and yeah. how much of a friend he is to everyone else in the gym he's one of those crowd favorites as i said whenever he hits the platform everyone's really happy to see him up there totally. he's just one of those big friendly faces that everyone loves to see yeah now, Luca, Luca is a fantastic... Dungeon Luca. Strong. Yeah, His Instagram is Dungeon Strong. Look this guy up. This guy is a savage lifter. Yeah, he's a great lifter. I mean, like... The most I'm, gorgeous man alive, too. I Look mean, at that haircut. I mean, the Mohawk mullet, that's an absolute game changer. Yeah. And I, I think it adds 20 pounds. I think it adds 20 pounds to a squat, yeah. What I like about him the most is that he had a mustache and then he just, just decided to connect the rest of it around his chin and that's okay. I won't hold that against him. Yeah. Now Luca's one of those guys very methodical as well and his footwear is very interesting. He's almost wow. wearing toe shoes here. There you go. That's so a beautiful good. squad. Now, like I said, Luca's a power. Yeah. He's a power lifter. 
through and through. Yeah. I've seen him training. On, I've been watching him on social media for a long time. That yeah. guy, he loves to train, man. That's totally. his life. And I mean, like, I saw him. I saw him backstage there, uh, getting started. And the legs on that man. Yeah, tree he, trunks. Oh my God, man, he's got tree, some trunks tree trunks for legs. Wow. Yeah, he's a great lifter, and very personable too. Yeah, I haven't like actually I said, met him personally, but I've seen him at a lot of other meets uh, where I was refing or competing myself, and he's yeah, he's such a composed lifter. Yes. He yeah, he's very so composed. composed. Lifter. He's you know he's not a big uh, you know, he's not yelling and shouting and get you know he you can see he's intense, but it's like a silent intensity. Um, yeah. So we we Let's got see, Robin Graham Robin. coming up here, six hundred point seven pound opener. This is an opener. And it's only going to get heavier. Wow. Here he comes. Very nice. Oh, yeah. That's the easiest 600 pound opener I've ever seen. Wow. Okay, so two white lights. That's a good lift. It was good. Yeah. So, do you see there? So, a lot of, a lot of lifters are walking out the weight, but he wanted the racks taken up, and it looks like uh, the spotters and loaders. We're a little bit slow to get to the the rack it there. Could be, a, could be a miscommunication yeah. between his team as well. Yeah, so here we sure. can see Joel is starting to get ready to come out here. This is Joel. He is the uh, the owner and the head coach at Blacksmith Fitness down in Port Guillem with his team Cam on his left hand side there, and you see Cole on the right hand side. The three main coaches there from Blacksmith, absolute beauties. A lot of experience between the three of them, between a lot of strength sports, a lot of powerlifting, and a lot of bodybuilding as well. Yeah, Joel. Here comes Joel, and Joel means business. This is his monolift, wow. and I think this squat is his as well. So 628.3 pounds squat, 285 kilograms. Look at all those reds. A lot of red plates on this bar, and I would be surprised if he does not make the squat because Joel is extremely experienced. That yeah, depth is good. Wow. You got it? That looks beautiful to me. Three yeah, white I mean, lights, that's how it's done right there. Yeah, I mean, didn't look, that didn't look like an easy first attempt, I'm not gonna lie. No, there's, well, it was 628 pounds, it's 628 pounds. No, I, 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 yeah. no, I know. But yeah, no, it, 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 like it, you know, it's tough to tell, because I will see how his next attempts look, because sometimes lifters, their lifts look super smooth, no matter what the weight is. Wait, even if they fail, like, even if a weight is like 100%, it looks smooth. Some guys are a little bit, they, their lifts are a little bit more, um, you know, they're a little bit more grindy. That's like, right. I know I'm one of those guys. I'm grindy. Yeah. I usually feel like I'm dying. David, Who's David Osborne? Osborne. I love that name. 661.4 pounds or 300 kilograms. That's a heavy, heavy opener. Yeah, so now we're getting into the uh, 100. So some of the big boys here, the last three lifters here, are all opening at over 300 ki kilos here. That's a deep squat. That looks good. That's it. That I'd be very yeah, nice. Three white very lines. smooth. I would have been surprised if he got any reds on that. Okay, so now we're going up to a uh, that that was 300 kilos. We're going up to 345 kilos for our next lifter. That's Joseph. a heavy, heavy lift. Yeah. Well, 345 kilos, 760. That's very, very, so that's getting up there. So we're starting to get close to some of the records that may be established. I don't know about the open class, but I know at least the juniors at this particular weight, we're just about at the world record level. This is not a junior lifter, so it's not a world record attempt. But um, just to show the differences between the two different classes, there's some Steve Dardango out there hanging out with the fam. As you see behind me here, this is Kay, the meet director there. So Joe Favia is coming up here next. Joe Favia is also a coach. He's a fantastic lifter. I've seen him at many different powerlifting events over the past few years. And Joe is really one of those gentle giants as well. And he's one of those guys that could be intimidating because he's a big, strong looking dude. Very intimidating, but very soft spoken, really easy to talk to, to Joe. Great guy to be around, and his partner is, I've never in my life seen him at a powerlifting event without his partner there. She is behind him all the time. They are always together at these events. Yeah, he's such a powerhouse, Joe. He is a powerhouse, and he's in wraps today. His knees are wrapped. Fantastic bearding as well. Love the beard. 
But also, one thing, just we're talking about equipment, he's also wearing elbow sleeves right now. Mm -hmm. So elbow sleeves you're not allowed to wear on bench press, but you can wear them for squats and for uh, deadlifts. Wow. That's a, that's a, great, that's a squat. great squat. Now, remember we said earlier that Stan Everding had a wide uh, handle on his bar. So did Joe. Joe gets over the bar quite a bit. As you notice, Joe was hunched over quite a bit on that squat. But it's just the way that his body moves, and that's the way he squats heavy weight, and th that's what works best for him. Yeah. Joe also, for a, big, for a really big guy, mm -hmm. he also has a really narrow squat stance. He does. I noticed he that. He also has a really bizarre stance for deadlifts we'll see we'll see later he has a really interesting deadlift stance that's sort of like a mixture of uh how do you know his knees are shot out a bit right is that yeah his, knee, his knees his are, feet are like quite close yeah. together and his knees are uh flexed outwards yeah but it could just be because that's the way his hip joint works best again we were talking about they're all they're all the same three movements but they're so different depending on the person and there's a lot of weight on the bar. And just a reminder, someone has to put this weight on the bar. So there's a lot of spotters and loaders around the platform volunteering their time to load this bar up so that yeah, people can come out here and send it. So they've got some intensity here. Brian Gifford's coming out. 777.1 pounds squat, 352.5 kilograms for an opener. His first attempt, 777. He looks ready. He's wearing a, a, an SBD lever belt, which is probably one of the nicer belts to be using. That's a good deep squat. Oh, yeah. That nice. was a good one. That was beautiful. Very good squat. That was a beautiful squat. 777 seven, seven is no joke for an opener. No, that was no joke. And he's one of those guys that he's a big dude, but he still sinks that squat. Sometimes yeah. you see big dudes like that. Um, have trouble getting deep into the hole just because their calves are big, their, yeah. you know, their belly's bigger, yeah. their, their legs so are much bigger. Mass. There's so much mass, it's harder to get into the hole. But he just sunk right into yeah. the hole there. Really good hip mobility. Yeah, yeah, often see lifters with a lot of mass like that will take a wider foot stance to make more room for their body to take up that space when they squat down yes. into that hole. Exactly. Uh, but he doesn't take a, it wasn't a really wide squat. I think he just has good mobility. It's probably the way that he learned how to squat, and he probably stayed with that squat stance, and that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. So we got Cam. It looks like a couple of the, uh, the, the boys in the back there. Oh, back to us. The blacksmith guys are floating around here. We got some more athletes. We got Zara Naibo there. Yeah. So we're going back to the top Another of the, coach. going back to the top of the flight here. Top of the flight. Antonio's back there, getting ready to come out. Yeah. So we got and Tim here they come. Here. Here's Tim. And it looks like Zara Naibo is handling Tim Doyle. Who has got to be six foot something here? Hey, he's a tall guy. The burgundy I, knee sleeves and also an SBD lever belt. And there it is. Yeah, that's a wow. fast descent. He just flies it. So that that's what you call a stretch reflex right there. When they come down to the bottom of the hole really fast, and you see them come down and they bounce, they bounce out of that hole. That's that's a good that's a good uh, stretch reflex there where they they it's a it's a so your muscles, when they get stretched like that, they they will start to contract back. Yeah, I, I believe that's kind of some kind of biological, mechanical thing that happens in your body. Yeah, it's science people look it up. Yeah, I, I think this might be um, Tim's first uh, competition. I don't know, like I just get a feeling that this might be his first one because his attempt seems so light. Yeah, um, that I feel like he's just he's going nine for nine. You know what I mean? And that's like, a good way to be. Get that good, experience. Exactly. That's the best way to start your comp your first ever competition. There's Jarrell Petty's feeding him some some salts. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Mike McLaughlin's coming back out here again. Very tall man. Long legs as well. He's got a long way to go to break parallel and have a successful squat. Because again, as we mentioned, his hips have to pass the knee basically on the way down. They have to pass parallel. They've got to come to at least and then go past the same height here. And he came down a little lopsided, it looked like. But he got that. So he did get red lighted by the side ref on the right hand side. Yeah. So that was a that was a good squat though. I mean he got that one. Two whites so he's got to be happy with that one. I believe that was his 
second attempt. So we'll see what yeah. he brings on his third attempt. That well. was very clean, yeah. So here's Antonio again. Antonio's been lifting uh, on the platform. I've seen him on the platform for the last few years anyway. Two or three at least. It looks like some uh, confusion about his next attempt here. So his rack heights. This is a, technically it's called a rack height. And that just means how, how tall is the bar going to be sitting for this particular lifter. So as we mentioned, everyone's body is different. So the height of his rack needs to be unique to him. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You got he, a wide that's stance. That's a wide stance. And he just sits right, right into down the into hole. it. That is right a up. very powerful squad right there. Look at that. He's got the, he's got the chucks on. Yep. The so, old ratty converse. Yeah, so that, I don't, that's you classic probably didn't, Yeah, you probably didn't. Yeah, the, I don't think the audience could see his footwear, but footwear is very important on the platform, extremely important, because you have to understand on two out of three of your lifts are, are lower body movements. It's a, it's a deadlift and it's a squat. And so your feet are how you're connected to the floor. You have to have stable platform. If you're not stable when you're trying to do these lifts, there's no way you're going to be able to produce power. You have to be in a stable position to produce power on the platform. And so footwear is important because you'll notice the bottoms of a lot of these shoes are very flat and that's to increase the amount of surface area between the foot and the floor so there's less chance for a foot to wobble which is why i'm surprised that sometimes people wear the converse because i don't know if you can see because he had such a wide stance his feet are pushing out against the shoe and it and it doesn't look like he's uh it doesn't look like <laughs> gotta get that product placement <laughs> um his, his feet are pushing out against his shoes and it doesn't look like he's like very firm on the ground right mm -hmm. so it surprises me sometimes when people wear like really loose converse and stuff like that here's troy back out here again 490 pound squat 222.5 kg i can tell by his teary eyes he must have just hit some salts uh, yeah i didn't know if he was going to make that it looked like he might make a good attempt at it but he tried, man. It just it wasn't quite there on that one. Yeah, it's too bad. That was a it was a good attempt. We're gonna see what he brings on his third, and see how that goes. Again, the room is pretty electric right now. There's a yeah. lot of people very intently focused on what's happening on the platform, of all different ages. Looks like we got a lot of family, uh, family and friends are here, and everyone's come out to support the people that they know in this in this sport. You know, it's yeah. great. And I'd be really curious to know how many people just walked in here off the street. Yeah, I bet we you are, a lot. We are downtown Victoria, so people are just walking by outside. There's lots of windows for people to look in. So yep. I wouldn't be surprised if there's people in here that are just, like, wandering in from the street being like, what the hell is going on in here? And again, we're at K-Fit Conditioning, downtown Victoria. Fantastic facility. Fort Mitchell, 496-pound squat. Wow. With the, the feather the feather fingers on top of the bar there. And he got that one. So we got two whites. He got that one. I'm not too sure what he got called for, the red one. Yeah. He, he got called by the head judge, called him on something there in the front. But he, he still got that lift. There's two successful, uh, two white lights on that one. So that was, that was a good lift for him. Yeah. I was kind of surprised that the head ref uh, gave him a red on that. I'm not 100% sure why. I wonder if he maybe skipped a command and the other yeah. two didn't notice. I'm not sure. They saw something we didn't. Also, referees do occasionally hit the wrong button and then retract that red light. So that does happen. That's true. So let's say we got Kyle. Kyle, yeah. Let's Kyle see. McKee is coming back so up here. So this is a 496-pound uh, squat, 225 kilos. 496 pounds with a fantastic mustache. Yeah. Got the bacon and barbell singlet there, inzer sleeves. So watch how far he has to travel here. Like his it's a legs, long way down. His legs are so long. And a long way back up. And it looks Let's like that's three, three whites. whites. Yeah. Beautiful squat on him. And you can see the audience approving of that squat. Yeah. He's such People a. People understand 496 pounds is a lot of weight. Yeah, that, that's uh, yeah. 500 pounds is a fair amount of weight on your back. Some really interesting. Uh, interesting lifters the cool thing about powerlifting too is there's people from all different walks of life that get into this sport from yeah. all walks of life they're all kinds of different you know and some of them come out of sports and they come into this sport yeah. as a you know something else that they can get into they like that challenge but there's a lot of interesting people here and you meet people 
they could be doctors, nurses, they could be mechanics, they could, you know, it's people for any jobs and any walk of life, like I said, any all these different walks of life, all coming together yeah. to lift. And it seems like, you know, the platform and the bar is really the great equalizer. It doesn't matter who you, who you are, where you came from, like, we're all equal here on the yeah. platform. Kyle Gordon out here. 551 pound squat, second attempt. And he's getting settled here. He's in wraps as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's got it. He feels the weight, but he's got that. He's a really good, uh, he's a really good squatter. That you can see squat. he pops right out of the hole and then just grinds a little bit and mm -hmm. yeah. He actually, hit, the way he squats actually kind of reminds me of my squat a little bit, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah. Maybe a little bit heavier? Maybe a little yeah. bit heavier, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not squatting 550 anytime yeah. soon. You can always tell when someone has experience on the platform because they take their time. Um, For sure, and that's what I was talking about Kyle, right? Like, I'm just looking at a replay of Kyle's uh, squat. Just so controlled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a shout out to ourselves at the moment, guys. But if you want to follow us, it's uh, you go on to Instagram and look up Evan Porter Media. That's me. And uh, Norris out here at Norris underscore WT. WL. As Thanks well as Jeff, the president of the film factory here. Look up the film factory. They're based out of Kelowna. It's a fantastic film studio. There's a lot of space in there. Amazing creative space. And here's Jeff Harwell with a 550 pound second attempt squat. And he's coming back up. And that looks good to me. That's three white lights. That's a successful squat. That was a good squat, so we're glad to see that he got that second one. I don't believe he made that first attempt. I think it was because he jumped the gun on one of the commands on that yeah. first attempt. Yeah. So, yeah, give us a follow, guys. Give us a follow, Evan Porter Media. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. Mine is and actually at NorrisWL, not WT. But. And I'm going to keep everyone up to date on other events that we're doing live and other powerlifting meets that we're going to be going to. I have some pretty awesome ones that are coming up. I'm not going to let them slip just yet, but there's some big stuff coming. That's, yeah, that's much better. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm very excited to be co like having Norris as my co-host. He's a good friend of mine, but we're going to get back into that in a minute because Andrew Chichka yeah, is on, on you can deck. You can talk about our friendship after this lift. Yes. Yeah, there <laughs> 589 pounds squad from Andrew Chichka. So I really want to see Andrew get this. Favorite. Come on. He's got it. He's got it. Nice. He knows he got it. That was good. good. I was job, uh, Andrew. When people when people miss their first attempt like Andrew, it, kind of, it always kind of worries me a little bit that you know if they if they can't hit that one lift then they're they're out of the competition. So right. I was really happy to see him do that, and it did look a lot better than his first attempt. Again, very tall. The guy's like 20 feet tall. Yeah, he's a he's a tall guy for sure. Very tall. So it's a long way to go down. It's a long way to come back up. When we do go to the break, guys, we're gonna be. We're going to be running into the back to interview a couple of people. So when squats are done, I really want to follow up with Bronte Lose. We saw her lift in the first flight, the 17-year-old junior who was squatting over 300 pounds. The one with the full scholarship down in McKindry University down there. She's on a powerlifting team now for McKindry University. you got to think that's very exciting for a 17 years old to get full ride scholarship to go down there and join a powerlifting. I mean... It's unfortunate that in Canada we don't have scholarships and programs like that. I do think that the sport is growing, and things like this are going to help us grow this sport. But I would love to see a little bit more investment from universities, and especially our government, into programs that promote sports like this that are so inclusive and so positive, especially for young people to be getting into at a young age. Yeah, I think... I think this is a much better sport to, for young people to be getting involved in than, you know, say a sports team like, uh, like, uh, like a basketball team or whatever. Like in school, they should be teaching people how to squat, bench, and deadlift in high school and stuff. I think so too. <laughs> Here's Luka Durkovic. Wow. Six thirty-nine. So easy. Down and up, all day long. Those tree trunk legs helped him get there. Yeah, those helped three whites there. all day. Yeah, that Just was a easy. reminder, if you guys are feeling a little bit drowsy out there, grab yourself a rain energy drink <laughs> and turbocharge the rest of your day. This is keeping us going here because it's been a long weekend getting all this set up. 
It, it's been a uh, yeah. I mean, for you guys, I just rolled up, basically. A lot of excitement going around in the room here. The cool thing about powerlifting meets also are that everybody wants to see how everyone else is doing. So what you can't see at the moment is that everyone in the in the warm-up area is now watching the platform. You know, everyone from flight A and flight B, everyone's kind of paying attention to what's happening. And people are still coming in from off the street. Now, Robin Graham's coming back up for his second attempt, which looks like 644.8 pounds. That is a big, heavy squat. That's intense right there. He's ready. There's the brace down into the hole. That right, oh that uh, that side looked a little high. Yeah, so the side judge did call him on. I'm gonna assume it was depth on the side there, but he got that. It was two white lights, so that was a good lift for him. It's that just was, one side was a little bit high. I think he got called. He's on that. such a quick squatter. Do you see how fast he came out of that? Very hole? fast. Yeah, that was fast. So there's Joel and Cole. Their names rhyme, but that's where it ends, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'm really interested to see Joel's second attempt here because, like I said, his first attempt looked heavy, but maybe that's just how he squats. I don't know. And again, big big shout out to Joel and the, the whole blacksmith team for coming down here, helping people get set up, donating the monolift and other equipment for them to be down here. There's Danielle Simo, another blacksmith. There she goes. Let's hear it, Danielle. Tell him. Yeah, Joel, so here Joel comes Joel. Is just, He's getting under the bar. Joel is such a big supporter of the powerlifting community. Huge supporter. He's an absolute sportsman of this of this uh, this event. Here he comes down in the hole, and that's a grind. It's not quite there. Uh, he just I really wanted to see him make that, but I am also glad he got that first squat attempt. Yeah. Because we know he's safe. Yeah. So he's not. Uh, yeah, he's not being he's safe today. But. But you know what? I think that that was his second. So he's got. He still has another attempt, and we're going to see what he does on that third attempt. Yeah, like. He'll, he's gonna retake that that attempt. Like he's yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll he will probably hit that same weight twice. That was a grind. So. Yeah. And to be fair, his second that was a big jump. His first attempt was 285 kgs. That was a that was 300. So that was a 15 15 kilo jump, which is you know 30, 31 pounds or something like that. So um, it was a pretty it's a pretty big jump in my opinion. David Osborne coming out here, 705.4 pounds squad for his second attempt, 320 kilograms. He's getting ready to get in under this bar. He's getting a good grip, nice wide grip again. So we'll watch, we're gonna watch how he, how wide his foot stance is here in a second. Man, he's so calm and collected. He's one of those guys with just like that silent intensity. And it's he like we said earlier, patience and getting yourself set up for that lift. Yeah. And we're seeing that definitely from David Osborne. Here's the brace. Just. That's depth. Wow. He's got it. And there it is, and the crowd loves that one. They love that one. Wow. Everyone loves a good lift like that, and David, David's happy with that. He's celebrating on there. You can see him very excited about that attempt for him, his second attempt. That's a good one. Yeah, he should be really happy with that squat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. There's a, few, uh, there's a few people here today that are huge supporters of this sport, and they really help make these events possible. There's a lot of people in here that make this, these events possible because of the amount of time that they volunteer and equipment. And okay, we're just doing a little quick mic check there, but we're back. <laughs> Okay, so check, 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 check. So the bar is loaded here. Joe Favia is going to come back out here in a minute. Joe Favia is coming out here in a second. He's got uh, 804.7 pounds on the bar. And his partner, again, is right beside him. So he's getting wrapped up here. He's getting his wrist wraps on. Joe is, Joe is first one today going over 800 pounds. 
an 805-pound right. squad, that's nothing to, uh, nothing to bat an eye out. Here he goes. He's quite hunched over on this squad. That it? See his? Yeah, I know, no, we're gonna take that. Too bad. So unfortunately, that uh, second attempt for Joe didn't quite get there. Um, one thing I was curious about, it looked like he was quite hunched over, which I know that you get called on sometimes if you're not standing fully upright. But yeah. uh, ultimately, that call is up to the reps, and they know best. Yeah, it's interesting just like how much, how hunched over he is when he starts. Um, I, that's actually, norm normally you want to show that you're fully locked out and everything and stand sort of more erect, but... He's pretty, uh, he's pretty like hunched over, which again, the, all of his lifts are kind of unique looking. Like his stance on squat, his stance on deadlift. Um, so, and he's you know, a big dude. He's, a big, he's just dude. a big dude. Works works like I said, when, you, when you've got that much mass to you, yeah, um, the different joints in your body will accommodate that in the way that they they can. Yeah. Brian Gifford's coming out here in a second for an 810.2 pound squat. It sounds like the it sounds wow. like the, the crowd is getting ready for this. 810 pounds. So, Kodiak barbell coach uh, Stuart Locks in the back there, getting his lifter ready. Looks like he's handling Brian. Brian's coming out. And he's getting ready for that nice wide stance again. The crowd is going nuts for this one. I love that the. I love that the other lifters in back are telling everybody to cheer. That's great. This is a big lift. Wow. Wow. Oh, he's happy about that one. Three white lights on that one. He's very happy about that lift. Wow. And the that was so easy. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was you see the announcer going wild behind us. Now, Ryan, Ryan LaFortune is our announcer here at the event. Ryan LaFortune is a longtime lifter. Uh, he's competed in multiple different federations. He's kind of the voice of powerlifting right now. Can we get a shot of Ryan, the announcer here? So Ryan, Ryan's a pretty experienced powerlifter as well. He's competed in different federations, different weight classes. Uh, he's gone all the way to national level. I believe he almost went to Worlds, if not went to I, Worlds. I think he did go to way. Worlds, yeah. So he's a, he's a very seasoned lifter as well. He's a great personality. And he, this guy adds so much character and fun to the events. He's so fun to be around. So Ryan adds a lot of flavor and character to these events. He's got a lot of great one-liners that crack everybody up, including myself. And I got to be honest, I'm guilty of stealing a few of those one-liners and using them. You'll probably hear a few today. I might have to slip him a 20 so I can keep saying it. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't trademarked a bunch of those, his sayings. I'm surprised some of his sayings aren't copyrighted yet, but here's Tim Doyle here, 352.7 pounds on the bar. All right, we are on to third attempts here. Third attempts. Wow. So that is such a fast squat. <laughs> I'm surprised by it every time. It's very surprising how fast that squat is. He just drops. Every single one of those could have been a first attempt. It could have been. But uh, again, I think you called it. It's probably one of his earlier meets, if not his first. And he's probably trying to just be successful, get his nine for nine, come and have a great time and all that, and, and go home. Which is what you should be doing when you're a new when you're a new uh, new competitor. Yeah, you should just be going out, have fun, go nine for nine, get all nine of your lifts for the day, um, and build build the experience and everything, and build your confidence. That's right. There's nothing worse than going to a competition and missing you know half your lifts uh, especially in the beginning because it's not gonna you're not gonna want to keep going back uh, and competing if you aren't doing well right that's right you want to set yourself up for success and that comes from making sure your attempts are good um, and you can do that way successfully now here's so Antonio again he's got a wide stance and here comes this wide deep squat down into the hole way past parallel and that's, that was a grinder. He looks like he's happy with that one. 
He's happy with that lift. So this bar, you can see, as they were zoomed in there a second ago, starts to accumulate chalk on it. Now, if you look at the bar, you will see that there's a, it's very rough where the hands go, and sometimes that will collect chalk on there. So that, that will get brushed off with a steel, a steel wire brush later. That is a beautiful bar, by the way. It's I was looking nice. at it yesterday. That's a Cerberus squat bar. Yes. So the squat bar is a little bit heavier than your standard uh, barbell. It's 55 pounds instead of 45 pounds, mm -hmm. and it's much thicker. Um, and so it's basically meant to load really heavy weight. Really it's, heavy it's weight. Super thick, mm -hmm. super, um, you'll find stiff. that. Uh, super stiff. Stiff, thank you. Um, other There's bars. There's less whip to the bar. Yeah, so other bars, like the deadlift bar, is going to have some more flex in it. That one's very stiff. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's very grippy. With a squat, you don't want the bar to whip because if the bar whips it, it kind of changes the load that's being put on you, especially yeah. on the way down. If you get a bar that's very whippy, it, it makes the squat harder to come out of the hole. If, if you can imagine the bar flexing in a bit of an arc on the way down, on your way back up, that weight that's on the end of the bar is still trying to come down. And when the, the lifter is pushing up, it causes a bit of bar whip. You don't want that. It makes, yeah. uh, it makes it harder. Again, a beautiful barbell by one of the sponsors, Cerberus. Yeah, that's right. One of our sponsors, Cerberus. Troy Coleman. 490.5 pounds, 222.5 kilograms squat. And he got deep on that one. It, yeah, he, oh, nope, no. they had to take that one on him. It, it's almost there. It was close, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it looks like he's got it, but it just, mm -hmm. there's, that, some, there's something at the bottom there where he's maybe losing losing tension, he's misgrooving, um, he's dropping too deep into the hole, but I, I feel like he could do that, like that's, that's just the way he squats, you know? Yeah. And an interesting thing to talk about, too, is that you'll notice that some lifters get stuck at a certain point in that lift, like for squats. You, and we call it, for bench press particularly, you're definitely going to see it. It's called a sticking point. And so, like, during your training, like, especially for squats, part of their training is they're not going to just be coming straight down and then back up right away. You will see people train with these things called pause squats where they come down into the hole and then everything stops moving and you hold that bar stationary at the bottom, you know, for a few seconds sometimes before you come back up. And you can train your body to get stronger at that particular point in your lift. So you'll get stronger at that bottom end of your lift if you do those pause squats, they help you get back up. Here's Bort, 512 pounds, and he's got it. He's, he's got it. It came up a little bit lopsided, but I did not see any downward he, motion. No. Oh, he got called. I'm not too sure. It might have been depth. I didn't quite see his hips because I was focused on where his hands were. I know I can't take my... It, it I, honestly looks like it's going to roll forward. I, yeah, I can't take my eyes off uh, of how narrowly he's holding that bar with just like his three fingers. I, feel, I, I, it, I wonder why he doesn't um, go wider. Because it looks like he's... like Typically when people are holding on to it with their fingers, it's because they don't have the shoulder mobility to get their whole hand on it. Right. So I'm surprised he doesn't just go out wider. Um, but again, whatever works for you, I guess, at the end of the day. It can be quite challenging when you're spending so much time, you know, training for strength and all that stuff to be, to work on your flexibility and your mobility is pretty tough. Yeah. It's kind of secondary for a lot of people. Okay. So Kyle McKee, 512.5 pounds. And his fantastic mustache. Very good. Oh, finish oh, it. that's a grind. That's a grind. Good job, Kyle. And he got it. That's he a good lift. It. I think he might have got called for depth on one side, but the, the other two refs left, liked it, and so did we. So I'm glad to see he got that. That was his third attempt. That was a great third attempt for him. That was a perfect third attempt. Perfect like, third I, attempt. I don't think he could have done any any more on that with, with, while hitting depth. I think that was like, I think if he loaded any more weight on there, I don't know if he would have been able to hit yep. depth and back. Not sure if he would have come out of the grind, you know? Yeah, yep. I think that was a perfect third attempt. And again, you don't, depending on people's goals, right, you don't always necessarily want to go 100% on squats. Sometimes people will, like, hold back a little bit on squats if they really want to perform well in deadlifts or vice versa, right? So Kyle Gordon coming out, 578.7 pounds, 262.5 kilograms. Let's see him go to work here. He's very methodically getting himself set up under that bar. And he's building a lot of tension. So his upper body right now is tight. He's breathing in. He's he's going to maintain that stiffness, that tightness down into the bottom of that squat. And there it is. And straight back up. 
There he goes. Yeah. Now, it's okay. You, you can definitely see sometimes you'll see a bit of shaking. When the lifters are coming up, that shaking, and that you know that they're on full send mode when those muscles are almost fighting them on the way back up. But he got it. That wasn't really a problem for him. So I'm glad to see he got that squat. It's, it's okay. A little bit of shaking is fine. But again, you can't see the bar come down. As long as the bar doesn't drop, you're good. So yeah. the carry on. The shaking is totally fine. I mean, like, again, that reminded me a lot of my squats as well because that's when I'm really maxing out, I get that crazy shake too. That's right. Um, and uh, it's nice that he's, it's good that he's able to kind of grind through that. And um, I think that was a really good third attempt for him as well. Can we get a shot of Jeff is coming out with some really big intensity here. Here we go. There's a big, big squad here. Jeff Hartwell. Wow. So much hit. intensity with Jeff. So here comes Jeff. Just keep one guy on the trail. 584.2 pound squat here, third attempt. Jeff Harwell. The depth looks, looks good. good. Looks That's good. That's a grinder. He got awesome. it. He's very happy about that. Three white lights. Very happy about that. That's a good one. That's a really good lift. We're gonna capture one of these photographers here in a minute. We're gonna give him a bit of a shout out because he is a fantastic athlete. He's also ex-Canadian military, if not still enlisted. Uh, but on that note, we wanna give another big shout out to Wounded Warriors because again, the WRPF is, is donating the proceeds from this event to the Wounded Warriors Foundation. Um, and those guys give all kinds of support to veterans and current, you know, veterans and you know, current enlisted uh, members of the military and you know fire uh, fire service the you know emergency first responders right so we want to support them because those people are supporting us so here's andrew chichka again with a 600 pound squat he's loaded up he's ready to go nice squat that, that was a really good squat three white lights and he's good that was awesome Especially coming off of a failed first attempt, to be able to come back and hit two successful attempts after that, um, yeah, that's really good. I think there's, a, I think we're halfway through the flight here, so we've still got, we've still got about six or seven lifters in this flight here. We're gonna give you guys a shout out to uh, to Dave here from Kodiak Barbell. His photography brand is Death Vibes. Dave is a fantastic lifter. He's a strongman athlete. He is a lifter with Kodiak Barbell. He's a member of the team, co-founder of Kodiak Barbell. He's a fantastic artist. And you can see him coordinating with his other photographer buddy here. Those guys are awesome. So they're here capturing some sick photography for all the lifters. And as a lifter, it's great to have those photos as a memento of their event. Here's Joel going for his third attempt, and I want to see him get it. Let's go, Joel. Get up there, Joel. He's fighting that so hard. Wow! Yeah, wow! Good for you, Joel. Wow! Yeah, and the crowd likes that one. They're very excited about that. Wow. That was an awesome third attempt from Joel. That was awesome. I can't believe you got that. That was a great lift. I'm really glad he got it because, again, as we said, it's hard, you know, to get that third attempt sometimes when you when you don't get that second attempt. So I was really glad to see that he got that. Yeah, that was awesome. Like. Uh, and that was a that was a battle. Like you uh, could see the effort on his face. You know, muscles are shaking, the body's fighting you, the central nervous system taxed to the absolute limit of what it's yeah. capable of doing. Wow, yeah, that, I'm glad he got that because um, it's it's tough to come back from uh, from a Very failed tough. attempt. Robin Graham up here for his third attempt, 672 pounds. So here we go, the monolift is opened up. He's getting ready to go. Let's let's see this. Depth does not look good on one side to me. No, no, it, no we didn't it. get it quite there. No. It looks the hips were shifted. It looked to me where I'm where I'm sitting here, it looked like the hips were shifted a bit 
off kilter, so I think that may have been a contributing factor in that spot. Uh, yeah, his upper back started to round out a little bit, which this kind of folds you over a little bit, and that was tough because I feel like, you know, that was really close. I feel like that was like, you know, Jerry, it was, was it was close. close. I think sometimes when somebody rushes the squat a little bit too, that can happen. I don't know really what. I guess we'll have to. Only he knows. There's oh. Luka Dirkovic. Putting his nose right in the Luke, smelling salt. Luca loves the smelling salt. He's in there. He loves the smelling so salt. So Luca's getting ready to come out here. He's getting it. He's intense. He's getting ready to go. He's I, probably listening to Celine Dion. My heart will go on right now. No, no way. I bet you. I want to know what he's listening to. I want to know what you a know, guy like that gets fired up to. That's the thing. Sometimes, it, you know, you never know what someone's listening to. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to wear the hearing, uh, the earbuds or whatever on the platform. It's very strict about what you can and can't do on the platform. That's okay. There's lots of good music in here playing. You want to hear the audience screaming you at definitely you, too. Want to you don't that. want to be listening to your music. And here he is. He's wrapped. His knees are wrapped, and he's wearing these really interesting footwear. Yeah, they kind of look like deadlift slippers, but you can see they have little toe divots. Toes, right? yeah. yeah. All right, let's he's see. He's got 688.9 pounds on this bar, 312 kilograms. And that's intensity as he comes down into the hole. Oh, I'm wow. not sure about depth on that one, but we're going to see. We'll see what the judges say. He got he's it. good. Three white lights. And he is excited about that, that one. That's awesome. That's a great third attempt for Luca. Yeah, he's got to be awesome. happy with that third attempt. We're coming to the end of our flights. Now, just a heads up for, for everybody. We will be running out there and grabbing Bronte for an interview when these squats are done. We're going to catch up with Bronte and see how she's feeling about this event. And you know, she did, she got the national record on her first attempt. So I'm very curious to see how she feels about that and what uh, what her friends feel. And there's uh, Josh there, one of our spotters and loaders. Mm -hmm. I actually went to uh, Josh, I used to play uh, rugby with him back in the day. Oh yeah. When I, yeah, when I was a teenager, we were on a couple of rugby teams together, so. There's Dave again. Nice. And Joe Favia is getting some chalk on his hands. He's getting ready to come back out. I mean, one Stuart Locke behind him from Kodiak getting ready with Brian to come out as well. Just so many fantastic beards out here today. There's Holy a lot smoke. of fantastic beards. More importantly, there's fantastic mustaches around. There's really only a couple people that can pull that off. I'm yeah, I mean, Kyle's mustache takes the cake. It's so good. Joe Favia with 804.7 pounds on the bar. And he's getting ready to come out. He's got a lever belt. I don't think it's SB. It looks like an Inzer or something. It's a, okay, yeah. I, I want to see how Joe does here because he is coming off a failed attempt. So I yes. really, I really want to see him get this because he, he jumped up. He went from 345 to 365 kgs. So this again, is a 20 kilo jump from his first attempt. And again, Joe is one. So he's quite folded over. I'm surprised. Come on, Joe. Here he goes. And there's the power right there. Wow. He fought through that one. And let's see what they call on his knees. He got three white lines. He got that one. He got wow. that one. That he, was a great That was a great fight. And you know, that, that was difficult. That was really tough, especially coming at his second attempt like that, like you said, that he didn't make. Oh, he, yeah, Joe looked like he was maybe in a little bit of pain after that. Yeah, and I have, it, it, unfortunately, it does happen. Now, it is a bit of a min misconception, in my opinion, when you tell, you know, if you, Norris, you could probably attest to this as well. When you explain to j people that don't really know anything about powerlifting, about what you do, they immediately worry that you're going to get injured. When you start talking about deadlifts, people just think that you're pulling with your back. But it's interesting. Your, your deadlift power is coming from your hamstrings predominantly. That's kind of where the, the general, the primary motivator, hamstrings, glute muscles. It's a hip hinge motion. Your back is definitely playing into it when you do, do the deadlift. But it's a lower body exercise. If you do it correctly, you follow your training properly, um, and, and you keep that proper positioning, and you're, you're not overloading your bar, you will avoid injury. Wow, the crowd just went kind of wild here. So there's a lot of energy here. The crowd is getting amped up. I hear the blacksmith crew is yelling out there. Everyone's yelling out here. Brian Gifford stepping up to the bar. 826 pounds. Wow. This is going to be an epic squad for Brian Gifford here. And I know that his coach, Stuart Locke, is going to be pumped if he if he hits this one. Yeah, this has got to be up there with the records. Somewhere close. And here he goes. He's got depth. Wow. And he's got it. He knows he's got it. But he wants to see those lights. And there it is. All day long, he had that one. Very happy about that wow. one. Wow. 
Brian Gifford with an amazing third attempt on squat. Yeah, he should be very happy about that squat. Two more lifters left on third attempts. Now, for those of you watching at home, there may be a fourth attempt in this flight. I don't know. Um, sometimes people are given a fourth attempt option if they have successfully hit the third attempt, um, and it's a record attempt. They will let you hit it a fourth time. But uh, I believe that's the only situation unless there's been some kind of incident with a person's second or third attempt. Uh, at the moment, Norris is looking up some of the WRPF records. Um, he's gonna punch that in just to see how close are we to these actual records. Again, on the topic of records, you do have provincial records, there are national records, and there are international records. So you got world records. So you can set the record in your province for a particular squat bench or deadlift. Then you can set the record uh, at the national level and beat everybody in the country, or you can go world record, and obviously that's pretty pretty obvious here. Now we have some of the next couple of lifters coming up here. So that's gonna be that's gonna be our bench presses, which get started afterwards. It looks like we're taking a little bit of a break here. What we're gonna do next, Jeff, is we're gonna. We're gonna play a couple of interesting videos for you guys while we grab an athlete to do an interview. And my name is Bronte Lose. I'm 17 years old and I've been lifting for a year and a half. I was dealing with an eating disorder. My older brother was super into lifting. He was like, hey, like come to the gym with us. I kind of fell in love with it. It was just a world I knew nothing about, but I, I fell in love with being in a place that was so inclusive. I knew it was where I belonged. But when you go to a meet and you see both men and women there competing, breaking records it's it's very empowering yesterday I signed my official offer with McKendree University in Illinois the relationships I've made through powerlifting are some of the best relationships I have in my life people that understand me and that understand like the commitment that it takes my coach Darrell he has completely changed my life. The opportunities I've been given, such as my scholarship in the States, going to world, none of that would have happened without him. Being able to meet strong, powerful, independent women, proud of their bodies, proud of their big legs, proud of their big arms, and it's been so empowering. And so, uh, Rante just nailed this record. She told you about how stoked she was about that. But um, what are you looking forward to heading down to the States to start working at, you know, going to school down there and join that powerlifting team? I'm honestly looking forward to just being in a whole different ball game. You know, like, although today was the second heaviest sub junior squat, there's so much more down there. Like, I'm ready to be the small fish in a big pond, so. This is super fun. Everyone's been so nice today. Such a great environment, such great people. Everyone's getting along. It's really cool to chat with everybody. And I, I who's coaching you now? Are you still being coached by Darrell? Because I did give him a big shout out earlier and talked about Darrell's an amazing coach. And I know that you found him inspirational, but, Tell us about that. So right now, I'm still being coached by Kendra University. It helps me every so often, but until WRPF Nationals, I've chosen myself to compete with Durrell. Lots of their athletes do start getting coached by the school right away. Just because of the relationship Durrell and I have and his coaching, the coaching staff decided that Durrell was perfectly suitable and I could continue with him as long as I wanted. That's amazing. I'm not gonna take any more of your time because I know you gotta get ready for bench press next. So I hope that you crush that. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to us, and, and we'll see you on the platform. I'm standing here with Coach Darrell Pettis, who we've given several shout-outs earlier. He's been volunteering around here, doing some spotting and loading. But we really wanted to talk to Darrell about his relationship with Bronte. And she sings your praises, and she attributes a lot of her success to your coaching. And uh, what, what, what do you think about that? So honestly, I just kind of, it's more of a testament to who Bronte is. Uh, very generous. I tell her she gives me too much credit. She's the one doing the work. I'm just the one trying to help her like get to her end goal. She's one of the hardest workers I have. She's very dedicated. If some lifters, if things don't go right, it's, oh, let's scrap everything with Bronte. It's more like, what did I need to change on this day? She takes accountability and you see it, it pays off. She's constantly improving, and she's, despite her being a sub junior, she's extremely mature. She's got a huge ride to go down to McKendry, yeah. right? She, I know it's 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 uh, because she just has loved working with you so much. It's kind of gutting her a bit to go down there and and kind of say goodbye a bit because she's going to have coaches yeah. down there. Um, what do you think is going to happen for her future? Where do you think she's headed? Honestly, her potential is. 
I can't even tell where she's going to end up. But judging by where I've had her from the last year and knowing how hard she works, I wouldn't be surprised if you see her one day at like a top USAPL or IPF stage because that's how hard she works. Like I'm, I've loved coaching her, but at the same time, I it's gonna hurt um, losing her because she is like phenomenal athlete and just like a really good kid. But everyone down at Kip McKendry is getting a great athlete, and I know. She, Whatever she wants to put her mind to, she's going to do it down there. Where would someone go if they're interested in reaching out to you to inquire about coaching? How would they do that? So you can reach me either on either my Instagram pages, whether it's my team page, GSCYYC, or my direct page, at dpetties, D-P-E-T-T-I-E-S. And just I'm pretty um, active on there, so I'll always reply to any messages. And one more question for you, if I could, but it's an easy one for you. Now, on the topic of relationships, what's your perception about uh, the community as a whole, the strength community and powerlifting specifically? What's it like for people that maybe show up and they're kind of newer? Do they make new friends? Like, what, What's it like for people that are coming into the strength community? Is it a w welcoming one? I think there's definitely some misconceptions. I think because of the nature of it, people think it's really aggressive and not welcoming, but that's not the case at all. Like, regardless where you go, you're going to meet new people. You're all doing the same thing as you see here. It doesn't really matter how strong you are. People are welcoming and cheering. We don't care what weight you do. We just want to see you do it. And we're all working towards being our best selves. It's not so much, some people see it as like competition, but at the same time, you're beating your own like previous records. So it's very welcoming, like back Back home, all my friends, for the most part, are competitive strongmen or powerlifters. And the fact that you don't have to even be in the same discipline to appreciate and help each other work is, like, really nice. And it's a, it's something that I love because growing up playing sports, I went through a period I was looking for that again, and I found it with powerlifting. That's awesome. I really appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. I know it's a bit awkward with the camera in your face like this. Okay, I'm Joel McCain, and this is Blacksmith Fitness, and I've been coaching for about 15 years. Quite a diverse clientele from powerlifters all the way down to uh, very specific injuries. A big part of Blacksmith is just that everybody helps everybody. Anybody who walks in here, whether they're the strongest person in the gym or they're on their first day and they've never touched a weight, that they feel comfortable, supported, and that they're welcomed by everybody who lifts here. Well, everybody's got a little bit of a different story, right? Everybody's trying to beat themselves. Whether they end up beating other people or breaking records, that kind of stuff, I think it's all about whether they beat themselves and make that next step in their own progress. Anything they do above and beyond, of course, that's bonus, it's cool, but it's definitely about that next mark in their own personal journey. You know, I was in the music industry and, and like uh, a lot of the bad side. I'd been an athlete my whole life, and then all of a sudden I was like smoking, doing drugs and stuff like this, and I was like, this isn't me. And one day, I went and bought a teeth whitening kit and a Bowflex. I'm like, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna cha change the way I'm living. That's actually how it started. We started building up equipment in my parents' basement. Found out that there's a sport where you could just be strong. You didn't have to, you know, walk around in a in a thong and get a tan. You could just be strong, and the objectivity of it was just so cool. I only have one goal, and that's 2,000. So everything else is just kind of fun along the way. Gotcha. Everybody here is going through challenges and the, just the togetherness of that. Going through the highs and lows together, you really get to know somebody at their best and at their worst and really develop strong relationships because of those you know, uh, highs and lows. I certainly value everybody in here and, and what they're going through and uh, success they've achieved and also their influence on me and my own lifting. The first heroes I had would have been kind of the lead FTS and the West Side guys. Those are guys who were really pushing the sport at the time. Realistically, after that, um, I think one of the biggest lessons I learned from those guys is just not to have heroes I truly want to go to that next level uh, you can't be sitting in admiration thinking you'll never get there uh, if someone who was first getting into powerlifting and they actually found it intimidating I would just encourage them to just make that that first step maybe even message their favorite lifter talk to somebody in the local powerlifting community because I think you'd be surprised people cheer for effort no matter what level you're at so like Go in, sign up for your first meet. Uh, you're going to come away with some new friends and a totally fresh perspective on the community as a whole. The weight, that's a weight I've done a bunch of times in training. I just uh, needed to find the balance across my feet. Uh, I still didn't, hence the grind and uh, the forward back motion, but uh, at least I got it. No, I'm pumped, man. I'm really excited. How are you feeling about bench going into bench next? 
great, ready to go. I mean, I'm going to try to put up the highest weight I've ever done and uh, just take it one lift at a time, see how she goes. I love it. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, Joel. Uh, so I'm Cole. Uh, we're at Blacksmith Fitness. Uh, I've been working here since 2018. Um, and I started lifting back in university when I started in 2010. I originally started it as a strength and conditioning intern at my university sometime in like 2012. Being able to pass on the, what I've learned from my own journey to someone else and see them overcome some of the same things and sometimes a little bit different that I've you know already gone through I think you know is incredibly rewarding seeing people just accomplish something that they didn't think they could do I mean, like with powerlifting in general um, you get a kind of a mixed bag of different people from different walks of life everyone that is you know in this gym in our powerlifting community and other you know powerlifting communities too they, they just they find a sense of belonging everyone's got a different story everyone is here for the same sort of objective right it's to get stronger and everything's equal all the plates are the same all the weights are the same in the spirit of competition the guy who lifts the most weight comes up on top it doesn't matter where you came from um, i've met you know a ton of really really good coaches that have kind of inspired me and pushed me to be better and to continue my personal education it's also you know some of my best friends are uh, friends that i've met through the gym even clients right i like to uh, see myself as their friend too. I find a lot of inspiration through my own personal clients. Every time I walk through that door, it doesn't matter how bad my day was before, I I'm always greeted with someone that is, you know, smiling and, you know, welcoming and they don't care what happened before I walked in that door. They just want to see, you know, me do better here, right? And, and vice versa. At the Kodiak Clash coming up in the end of April here, I have Troy, who it's his second powerlifting competition. I have Zaid and Ryan, who it's their first competition coming up, so I'm very excited for them. Watch them on Evan Porter Media's live stream. Cole now from Blacksmith Fitness, and as I mentioned earlier, Cole's got a few of his his athletes are in this event. We saw Troy, we saw Danielle. What's your perspective as a coach? How are your people doing? Oh, they're doing as well as they can, right? Everyone is putting 100% effort in, which is all that I can ask for as a coach. Um, so far, so good. I mean, we had one little bobble on squat for Zay, the one little, couple little bobbles on squat for Troy, but I mean, hey, we're here, we're competing, yeah. on the bench. Uh, if you're talking to Zay right now, what would you say to him? More or less, just keep things the same. Don't, don't make really any major adjustments, but you just gotta, get a little bit more calmer right more calmer going into the squat because obviously first meet nerves got the better of him but now that he's kind of gotten over that and had a couple errors you know technical errors too right not just on his part too because they had an early take but really he just has to keep doing the same thing hoping for Zade in particular I hope that he just gets a PR I'm hoping that Troy also gets a PR he had a rough bench last meet uh, for Joel I want him to eventually bench 200 kilos so that one of our other lifters that uh, used to train at our gym has to shave his beard <laughs> That's a great wager. Thanks so much for yeah, taking some you. time to have a chat with us again there, Cole, and we'll see you around. All right, thanks, Evan. Back to you again there, Jeff. Hey, guys, it's Evan here again. I'm with Ryan LaFortune. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Ryan's kind of the voice of powerlifting. How's the energy in here? How are people doing? The energy in here is fantastic. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with the first WRPF meet uh, in Victoria. The, the crowd's good. The lifts are big. We're seeing some big lifts in all the divisions. And it's been a fantastic turnout. Everyone is high energy today, which is what you want in this sport. What are some common areas that people um, will run into trouble on bench press? Okay, on bench, it's a lot to do with the commands. It's listening to the referee. It's very loud in here, and you can't see the referee. They're behind your head. So when they say start, when they say rack, when they say press, it's going to be hard for the lifters for those three different commands. Another thing they're looking for is pressed into the chest. You have to immediately go up when they say press. Some guys like myself got called on this a lot. You heave it, and that's a no-go. And then sometimes clipping the rack. Generally on bench, though, it's going to be strength or just not listening to the referees, and whether it's the lifter's fault or not. But the onus is on the athlete, no matter how loud it is in here. You're here to put on a show, so you want the crowd loud. you got to pay attention. What's your perspective on juniors in general in powerlifting? Like, it seems like they're getting in stronger and stronger all the time. Um, what do you think about younger people getting into strength sports? Is it safe, and should they be doing it? I think it's 100% safe for young people to get in. You gotta train safe, you gotta train smart, but that goes for anybody of any age. What's happening is a real renaissance in the sport. So what used to happen with powerlifting was old football players and all people from different sports, wrestlers, would fall into the sport because they washed out of their other sport after college. What's happening now and why these juniors are so good 
is that at 15 years old, with guys like Larry Wheels, Big Ray, all of those guys, they wake up in ten, at 15 years old and go, I want to be a power lifter. I want to be world's strongest man like Thor. So they're training for this sport at a much younger age versus when I came up, you know, I used to play football and stuff. It was just a, I wasn't good at one sport, so hey, I was good in the gym. And we went into powerlifting. But these guys are starting from beginning day one, building a powerlifting and strongman resume. It's going to be crazy. All the records will fall as these juniors come up. It seems like uh, Kay and Laura are kind of some of the main figures that are really helping the event go on. I know that you have worked closely with Laura in several different powerlifting events in the past. Can you tell us a little bit about Laura and maybe what she's all about, where she comes from, and uh, what she's doing now in powerlifting? All right. Well, Laura's been around the sport a long time. She was one of the top female lifters a few years ago back in the day. She was uh, with other federations as well, throwing meets. The owner of Van Isle Strength in Cowichan Valley, one of the only pure strongman powerlifting gyms. She's been around the sport a long time, and it's good to have her. I believe uh, she comes from a military background into this sport and into this event, which is also quite popular, as does Dave uh, and Kay as well. So, yeah, like she's been around the sport, top lifter, now an organizer. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for taking some time to talk to me right now, and we'll catch up with you a little bit later. And back to you, Jeff. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm just over here with one of our sponsors for the event. Uh, we're having a look at some of the True North sportswear equipment here. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of apparel have you brought today? Yeah, so we've got a little bit of everything, guys. Um, we kind of catered a little bit to our powerlifting crowd. Uh, as you can see, I am skinny for a power lifter. I'm more of a bodybuilder. So we cater a little bit to everybody, which is awesome. Um, some of our super popular things with the big guys are like our oversized tees. A lot of our really heavyweight guys love these guys. You know, you're doing a heavy leg day. The last thing you want to think about is a tank top. So, so those are really popular. Probably my second best seller right now, a whole bunch of different colors, is the crunch short with a compression short in the, in the middle, which is really cool. So I've got these in like a burgundy, a blue, and a black, all with a super nice compression short in the middle, and they don't pinch or grab on you when you're squatting, which is nice for all the events that these guys are doing today. And then probably just my colors are the best thing for women right now. Lots of colors for spring and summer coming up. Um, we're doing really well with the crop tops and probably the scrunch bums are my next favorite. Let me show you those. Uh, and I, I understand you, you guys cater to uh, power lifters, bodybuilders. Is there any other sports that uh, True North is really focused on? Honestly, we're just a, a full fitness brand for whatever you like. I know a lot of people love the stuff for yoga and, and any other stuff as well. Um, we're just a well-rounded sports athletic apparel company. So really, whatever you need, we'll, we'll have something to fit you for sure. Thank you so much for taking a hot minute to talk to us, and we're looking forward to see you guys at more. We're back to you there, Jeff. On the spot, we just walked up and threw the camera on, so we're sorry about that. But uh, what's going on? What services are you offering? So we offer body or bodybuilding, um, meal prep for like bodybuilders and athletes, normal people as well. Uh, lifestyle is totally fine, but every meal that we make is customizable. So today we just brought some meals just to offer so that people can kind of get an idea of what we do. Um, and then, yeah, this is this is what we do on a weekly basis, yeah. Where can people go if they want to purchase your products? So you can go to my Instagram, prep to go and then um, you can also message us at 250-208-5359. Looks like we've got some tasty stuff here. What are we looking at here? Is this, this is lean beef, rice, and broth. Where's mine? That's my question. It can be yours. Yeah, it um, can be yours. So we do lean beef, rice, and broccoli. It's just 150 grams of meat, 120 grams of rice, and one cup of vegetable per meal. That's our baseline standard, and then we can go up from there. And I only charge you based on what you eat, nothing extra. Um, so if your meals are really big, whether you're off-season or in prep or doing something like this, we can kind of cater to that. So yeah. That's awesome. And I see you got the macros right on the front. Absolutely. Protein, fats, and carbs. I know that one, <laughs> especially the carbs. Thanks so much for chatting Thank with you us. So much. Yeah. Cheers. Back to you there, Jeff. My name is John McDonald. We're at Blacksmith Fitness in Port Coquitlam, and I've been lifting for just over 10 years. I am getting ready for the Kodiak Clash uh, that's coming up on April 29th in Victoria. This will be probably my seventh or eighth powerlifting meet, and so looking forward to just doing some rebuilding. Had a challenge in Missouri 
at North Americans last November. And so just working to rebuild some confidence, improve my technical proficiency. I competed in the USPA uh, in November and did North Americans there and I bombed out on squats. Uh, and it was, the whole prep was around taking the all time drug tested world record in squats. Uh, something I had done in the gym twice. It did not go as planned for a variety of, of, of different reasons. Um, but it was a great experience and it made me better. And so this meet is just working on those technical uh, errors, uh, some of the mental mistakes, and just really building out, uh, myself to become a complete lifter. I think one of the things that has blessed me with powerlifting is that there's so many correlations between the things that you take out of the sport and the, th the way that you can transport it into other areas of your life. Things like determination and discipline. And so when you have a weakness, uh, in a certain area of your life, you're able to take the strengths and your wins from this other area and kind of patchwork it in. What I have learned is that you have to take responsibility. Um, this is an individual sport, and as much as I'd love to lay blame at other people's feet, uh, it's 100% my fault. The success is down the wins. I grew up playing hockey, and you're allowed to fight uh, in hockey if you're playing at the junior level. Uh, you know, I had some anger problems uh, that were manifesting in rec league hockey. And I drove past the gym and just kind of, it was almost like it was highlighted to me. And I walked in and I never stopped going. Got into powerlifting through Mark Bell, watching Chris Duffin and Ed Cohn and some of the, the greats. I've always looked up to Eric Lillibridge. I've always wanted to look like Eric Lillibridge. I wanted to be as strong as him. I would say for me, it's really blossomed since I started coming to Blacksmith. This is very much an iron sharpens iron culture. And I've been very blessed to meet guys like Cole, uh, Joel, who owns the gym, who's my coach, uh, and Cam Bennett as well who just challenge me. You need to have those relationships where you can be called out. And there's no shortage of being called out here. If you're having a bad day, there's no excuses. It's just, you can do it. Watch Evan Porter Media's live stream. Uh, my name is Danielle Simo. Um, I currently lived out of Blacksmith Fitness out in Port Coquitlam. I've been powerlifting since the beginning of 2020. So for me, my fitness journey has not been very long. I did not grow up playing a lot of sport. It wasn't until my mid-20s where I found roller derby. The teams that I really enjoyed, they did a lot of cross training. And after a few years, I recognized like, hey, for being a smaller athlete, I can lift some weight compared to some other girls, kind of what led me down to the strength sport community. I've met incredible people throughout the entire Lower Mainland. It's for how large of a community it is, it's also very close knit. My husband, him and I are competing together at the Kodiak Clash. So the two of us have always been very competitive and so for us we're doing it by dots and there is a lot of pride on the line. Uh, my goal is to have some platform PRs. I'm coming off of a micro disectomy in the June of 2022 and so for me it's just been about continuing to rebuild. Powerlifting for me is incredibly electric. You just feel that like electricity go across your skin. Everyone roots for each other which is really exciting. You might just have your own lift and someone turns around and watches the per person behind them. And being someone who is of a smaller stature, I never feel like I am less than because I might not have the most highest deadlift, let's say, because I am a smaller athlete. Blacksmith fitness culture is really, really unique. There's people from all different walks of life that come in through here, but when everybody is here, everyone's here to live. It's a very welcoming community. It is sometimes some tough love type of community. Sometimes it's about being able to let go of whatever else happened in your day, what's going on in your week, in your life, and while there is support for that, we're also here to, to get the work done. In September of 2021, I ended up getting an MRI had quite a severe disc herniation um, in my L5-S1. Mine was over a centimeter, so the severity was quite vast. Um, I was stuck at home for a solid three months where I was crying in the car to any appointments I could make, and that was all I could do. I wanted to continue to pursue this. This was part of my rehab, and so it's been a big deal for me to have this. I still was able to do this with this injury and to continue forward, and now I'm actually closing in on PR numbers. Sometimes with injuries, it's really hard to not get wrapped up in, well, I could try this, and if that doesn't work, I could try this, I could try this, I could try that. My coach who knows my body, he's gonna be in charge of my rehab, and it was probably one of the best decisions I made. But here we go, our first bench press is coming up right away. Right. So we're gonna see the big difference between squat and bench press here. So it looks like we've got Joanne up first again. So Joanne's here getting under the bar. Here's Joanne's press. All right. Wow. That press looks pretty good. 110 I think pounds. That's going to be three white lights for Joanne. 
Yeah, that was a. Looks like the lights might be out again, but things are going pretty good there. She's got. Yes, the lights are out. Yeah, it looks like uh, Eric Brust is our head referee at the moment. He says it's good. So the interesting thing about bench press is uh, there's different federations and you know there's there's different rules as well for what needs to happen on a bench press. Now I know uh, some of the other federations came up with some pretty controversial rules about the bench press because you are going to see there's going to be really pronounced arches on the bench. You will see some people, and you'll know what I mean when you do see them get onto the bench. You see the a huge arch in the back. And what that does is it does lower the range of motion from the bar to the chest that needs to, to happen before that bar can be pressed and determined to be a successful lift. But some of the federations noticed that those arches were so intense, the, the range of motion had come down to almost nothing. So then they came out with a rule saying that the, sho the that your elbow had to come down to at least the, s the same uh, depth as your shoulder or break the shoulder? Was it? I think it's parallel with the shoulder. I think yeah, it's kind of like a squat where your your elbow joint has to go parallel to uh, or below parallel to your shoulder joint, which I mean, kind of. It's tough. Kind of tough. I mean, here's the thing: is like you might see some big arches, and people might say, "Oh, that's cheating" or whatever, or you know, it doesn't count because it's such a big arch or it's a really short range of motion, but. At, as long as they're sticking to the rules of their feet being on the floor, their butts on the bench, their shoulders are on the bench. Um, I don't know if in the WRPF your head has to be on the bench press. So there's some federations that you have to have it on, some you can have it off. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, well, well I'm, excited to, I'm excited to see some bench pressers here. Um, so Danielle Simo is back out. Another blacksmith fitness lifter. Man, that's a great view of the bench press, so that, like where we've got the camera set up. So Danielle got a handoff from her coach Cole, and it le nice. that looked that like was, a good, that was a good bench. three white lights on that one. That's good. I'm glad. So for, for those of you who don't know what a handoff is, basically when you're bench pressing, you want to get your back and your shoulder blades and all that stuff very flat on the bench because you need that stable position. Um, so what ends up happening sometimes people like to get a lift off which is just getting a little bit of help pulling the bar off the rack and giving it to the athlete and I believe that one of the benefits of getting a handoff is that you don't lose your stable position on the bench when you're unracking what do you think about that Norris yeah I mean like it's 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 that you don't you once you're set into your position having that handoff just makes it so you don't have to get out of that position at all um, but also it's just uh, you don't have to use energy you know, a lot of these guys, a lot of people will set up a little bit lower on the bench press, and so they have to reach up behind them to unrack it. So it just prevents you from having to use that effort to unrack it, right? Um, yeah, it's kind of handy to have somebody just pass it off to you. Some people don't like it. Like, I like I don't really like having handoffs uh, most of the time. Normally, I would just, like, unrack it myself. It's just a preference. There's Adley with a good bench press there, 132.2 pounds. Nice, that was a good bench. That was a good lift from Adley. Here comes Chelsea. Chelsea Loire is coming out. She's a great bench presser too. She's yeah. Got, Chelsea is one of those great um, all-around lifters. She's a great all-around athlete and very intense, as you've seen on her squats. So we want to see if that intensity gets carried through into her bench press, and hopefully he stays out of trouble there. But she's been she's been having a great meet so far. Yeah. I was talking to uh, Bronte because I know her and Bronte train together quite often. So there they go. And I believe that could be Darrell with Chelsea. That is Darrell with Chelsea there. So here she comes. We hear some support from the crowd is coming out here. We, she's a crowd favorite. 143.3 pounds on, this, uh, on the bar here for her first attempt bench press.
Here comes that bar, touches the chest, got the press command, looking good, and racked it. Good job. Three white lights on that one, nothing wrong with that bench press. That was a good bench press from Chelsea. And uh, hopefully she can keep carrying on with those bench presses like that, because they're all looking pretty good. Just gonna yeah, adjust our product placement here all for Rain <laughs> Energy Drinks. All of Chelsea's lift, lifts have looked really good. I mean, her bench press is no, uh, is no exception. It's it's um, it was super clean, super fluid motion. Great and bench. It's, what I, what I like is so far all the lifters so far they're all looking like first attempts. Mm -hmm. No one nobody's overdoing it on their first attempt or anything like that. Um, but again, we're only you know, we're not even halfway through the flight yet. So mm -hmm. fingers crossed we don't see anybody fail their first attempt. It's always just a, a shitty feeling when they uh, when that happens. So. Right. It looks like Marissa Flynn's back out here, 154.3 pound bench press. Yeah, Marissa's the really strong junior. She is a very strong junior. Wow, that was fast. That was a fast first attempt. That yeah, was looked, very that looked, fast. That looked like an empty bar. She's a great, great bench presser. That's a good one. I think. Um, Bench press is definitely one of those uh, movements where you'll notice a person's sticking point, especially on bench, and they can train to kind of remove those sticking points by pausing, de you know, pause deadlifts. What are some things that you've done in the past to get over a sticking point, Norris, on bench press? Pause bench is really big. Um, I mean, pause bench, pa pause anything on any of the lists. Pause squats, pause bench, uh, pause deadlifts, um, and just pause where you have that sticking point. So whether you know, for bench press, you might pause it right on your chest, or you might press it up an inch and pause it an inch off your chest. Um, any of that stuff is really good for your bench press because it helps you um, learn how to. You know, you're not you're not having to use momentum. You're having to create strength in a weak position. So let's take Here's Eileen. 165.3 pounds. That's a that's wow. a big bench. I don't wow. see. That's so awesome. she's bench pressing well over her body weight. Yeah, which she's is pretty impressive. She's the uh, she's the light er, she's the second lightest lifter on the flight. Now here's Bronte Lose. She's getting ready in there. Shane grabbing her uh, headphones there. He's gonna listen to Celine Dion now, and her coach Darrell Petty's behind her. So here she comes. And she's feeling good about bench press. I asked her, you know, as you saw earlier, she's feeling pretty good about the bench. Yeah, she's so focused. So there's that arch we're talking about. Now that's a big, she has a big arch, but all day long, wow. all day long. That was a, that's a great bench. I'm yeah. so happy to see Bronte doing so well like that. It's great when, you know, when you see good people doing well, I love to see that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love to see, I love to see you're doing like There's Chantel. Now Chantel oh, yeah. is sponsored by True North Sportswear. Again, training out of uh, Kelowna. She's, a, she's local to Kelowna, BC, as am I. And behind her, we see Tamara Nolan getting look, ready as well. Look, look how calm she is, Chantel. She's, she's calm, she's calm. But I, th I think the storm is within here. She's a, so Chantel's a fantastic bench. Her favorite lift is benching. So we're gonna see how this goes. She's got the wrist wraps are going on. So she's the, so here's the thing about wrist wraps. You throw those suckers on there. It helps your wrist from folding over when they're like we're extremely loaded like that. Yeah. But they're not allowed to keep their thumb through the thumb loop. So you will see lifters install wrist wraps and then immediately remove their thumbs from the wrist wraps. And there she is. She's getting her shoulder blades set on the bench, so she's ready to press from a stable position. Yeah, she's got no handoff. She doesn't need it. This is going to be an easy wow. opener for her because she's very strong at bench. Very nice. Very strong. Wow, 193 That's 100 pounds. That's 193 pounds, basically. So I know a lot of guys that can't bench that in the gym, so I love to see it. Chantel is one of those savage bench pressers. Love to see it. Great for the sport. It looks like Chantel didn't get that lift. Did, okay. Looks Maybe like Chantel didn't get it. She could I wonder have if jumped to command or something. She, she must have jumped to command. Yeah, that's too bad. 
So Kayla is getting ready to come out here. You see the lifters are putting chalk on their hands. They have chalk on their back. The chalk on their hands is so that they don't slip. Like, the bar does have great knurling, uh, but it's also always advantageous to have chalk on your hands so the bar doesn't slip while it's in your, in your hands. The last thing you want to do is have something slip. That's a great press. Good for her. Yeah, that was solid. That was a powerful press. That was solid. I mean, yeah, she, she looks so good. She knows what she's doing. And what's, uh, just uh, for people watching at home, what's the difference now in, in that particular barbell, Norris? What are some characteristics that make a good barbell for bench press? Good barbell for bench press? I mean, really, a stand, you really just want a standard barbell more than anything. You really just, yeah, like, with squats and with deadlifts, they have a deadlift bar and a squat bar. But with bench press, you really just want a, a standard barbell. Um, prefer you, you want a stiff barbell, preferably, because you, yeah. you don't want one that's super whippy or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I preferably like a like a barbell that's very very has lots of really sharp knurling, so lots of grip on it. That's just a personal preference. What do you think of the width of her grip on this barbell? She this does looks have, like a wide grip to me. She she does have a slightly wide grip, but it's nothing crazy. That's a fantastic wow. bench press. So 206 pounds on the bar for Tamara Nolan. She, a she very successful bench press. She is a pretty um, she is a pretty tall uh, tall individual. So um, you know it's not surprising that she has a wide bench. Or she has probably pretty long arms, long legs. So. Having a, when you have really long arms, it doesn't hurt to kind of go a little bit wider, just shorten up the range of motion. Because yeah. if you have a really narrow grip and long arms, you're traveling a really big distance. That's right. Yeah, so. And I, I believe a narrower grip involves more of the triceps, does it not? Uh, yeah, it would involve more of the triceps. Again, some people prefer that. Um, like even myself, I like having a bit of a narrower, uh, narrower grip on bench press. I just find it to be more comfortable. I, I feel stronger in that position. I feel weaker when I go wider. Um, but, it, it, you know, it's kind of like everything. It's Everything's a little bit more individual. Depends what feels good for you. So uh, if, she, if she feels strong with a wider grip, then that's the way she should go. Right. Yeah. So coming up next, we have Susan Graham. And she's coming out. 237 pounds on the bar for Susan Graham. That is a heavy bench press, 237 pounds. And she's a, now got the star command. Nice and, oh yeah, tons of power there. That is a strong bench press. Yeah, that was no problem for her. That was all white lights all day. That was. Yeah, that was so no I'm, problem. I'm really curious to see what she throws up on her second and third attempt because I think that's what this is going to be one of those lifters that makes a big jump. Yeah, that was. Uh, Just based on how, how easy that looked for her. Yeah, that was only 107.5 uh, kilos. So, I mean, I mean, still 237 pounds for a so, first attempt. That's really good. It's pretty big. But it flew, so that's why I'm curious to see what the second and third are going to be. Yeah, because it looked pretty easy. I imagine she'll take at least a 10 kilo jump. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I lied. She went up uh, seven and a half kilos. So this next next woman, Tanea is out. Tanea is bench pressing 292 pounds. Wow. This is a huge bench opener. An almost 300 pound bench presser on her first attempt. I mean, she's coming off of a, I think it was a world record squat, so she is a force to be reckoned with. Oh, this is going to be flying. Wow. Oh, that flew. I mean, she must be feeling good. Got to be. I think you got to put some weight on the bar there, Tanea. Let's go. Yeah, Jesus, that was an empty bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious to see what she'll go up to next. Like, I mean, that was 290 pounds, 292 pounds. You know, I imagine she'll be going... We're definitely going 300 plus for sure. Yeah, she'll definitely be hitting three plates, I think, 315. So Joanne's getting chalked up here. Joanne McLaughlin's getting chalked up. And her partner's giving her a little bit of the smelling salts there. She's getting ready to come out to the platform. So she is looking intense here. 
You see those wrist wraps going on? Looks like she's got the SBD singlet. She got the SBD T-shirt. And she is patiently waiting for them to say platform ready. They are not allowed to enter the platform until the head referee has told them the platform is ready. So Joanne is now on the bench. And she is looking for her hand placement right now. Hand placement, like we said earlier, the where you grip the bar is pretty important. So she's getting a pretty standard grip on that bar. And her feet are going flat on the floor. She got the star command. She's pressing, but she's got that all day. That yeah. was good. That was a little bit more struggle than her first attempt, but still totally, uh, totally easy. Mm -hmm. That flew. Yep. I didn't see like a massive amount of struggle on that one, so that was good. And it's so cool seeing somebody, you know, in their 50s bench pressing, you know, 130 pounds there. Right. So cool. It's very impressive. Again, sometimes only hope that I'm in as good of a shape as some of these people are into their, you know, 50s and 60s and even 70s. You know, and that's another cool thing about powerlifting, like we were talking about earlier. You can't age out. You never age out of powerlifting. No. You decide when you're done powerlifting. You, you no can, one else does. You could lift till you're 100 years old mm -hmm. if you wanted to. And here's the blacksmith crew getting ready to come out here. Danielle Sima with her coach, Cole. And we got Joel in behind her. So the blacksmith team is here representing. And I believe Danielle is going to make an attempt to pass her husband Troy in this friendly competition they have going on. So she's getting position now. Danielle's going to take a handoff from her coach Cole. So he's going to help her unrack that bar, get into position, and he's going to fly out of the way as fast as he can before she starts that lift. So here comes down, presses the chest. We've got a little bit of leg drive in that one, I could tell. And there we go, three white lights, good for her. So that's interesting because, you know, we talked about how two out of three of the powerlifting movements are lower body focused. And a lot of people think that all of the power for your bench press comes from your chest, but that's not actually true. Like a, you can get a lot of force generated through your lower body and le what's called leg drive. So, you know, tell us about how that mechanic works. Yeah, I mean, like, some people like to have their feet kind of flat on the ground. Some people have their, their heels up. But the purpose of it is to kind of drive, drive into the ground and generate some force through your legs into your hips and kind of push back. And it, it uh, maybe not the best person to explain the biomechanics of it, but um, gen driving with your legs when used properly will help you uh, generate more force uh, off, your, off your chest. Adley got that one, it looked like. Yep, good job for Adley there. That was a good lift from Adley. So I, I want to see what some of these people are going to put on the third attempts because I know there's some there's some crazy lifters here today and some big weights going up. Yeah. So I'm, I want to see what that's going to culminate yeah. in, especially like later. And it's like I said, people applaud that effort. You don't necessarily have to be the strongest person. So it's not like, you know, you have to be the strongest person in the meet to to be a crowd favorite. And some of these people have so much passion. Like, look at, you can see, like, Chelsea and her coach Jarrell there have such a great relationship. They're both, they're in their element. You know, they love being there. You can tell Chelsea just loves being here. She's so passionate. And this is an opportunity for a lot of people to connect with other people of similar interests. And so it's, it's, it's pretty cool because it, once you get into this community, it feels like all your friends are in that community. And these are definitely prime examples. They're just fantastic members of the community. They really are. Yeah, I mean, there are people here from all over Canada that are here not even competing. They're just here to, uh, you know, they're here to handle people. They're here to help out. Andrew Morkin's out from Alberta. Yep. He's not handling. He's not competing. He's just here to help out. Um, and, I mean, that, that just really goes to show just how awesome the community is. So here's Chelsea. She's getting a handoff as well. So they're going to help her get that barbell into position. She is making sure that her shoulder blades are nice and flat, pressed into that bench before she lowers that bar. So she's good and solid. Here it comes down nice and That's a smooth low. Oh, it wasn't there. Oh. I didn't see that coming. No, that looked It looked good. like it was going up. The bar was fair, pretty smoothly coming back up. Yeah. I, um, um, so I was surprised to see that bar stop and come down like that, but I think that's just the way it goes sometimes when you hit, you hit a 
a, a moment in your strength curve where it's just not quite there. Yeah, that was really surprising because, I mean, like, descent looked good, off the chest looked good, and then it just, like, halfway up, it just kind of stopped. Like, there yeah. wasn't any slowing down. It just kind of stopped. A so. sticking point, right? Yeah. But, I, I, yeah. And, I, they, and I know they say that uh, depending on where the sticking point is for a bench press, it can be uh, it'll, it can indicate your level. So I know like early bench, or sort of more beginner and more um, amateur lifters, the sticking point will be kind of closer to the chest within the first inch, inch and a half or so. As you become more advanced, the sticking point moves further and further away from the chest. You still need more advanced lifters. So Marissa just flew that 165 up. Got three white lights on that. So good for her. That's a I mean, that's a great second attempt for her. That just flew, flew. That was uh, that was easy work. Here's Bronte getting ready again. Yeah. And that's Shane Calhoun in the middle there. Shane Calhoun's also a junior lifter. He's, uh, he's originally from Kamloops, lived in Penticton for quite some time, trained out of the Gym Eternal, and has recently moved back to Kamloops. And uh, he has aspirations of going as far as he can with this sport. So does Bronte, clearly, as you've heard about her uh, sponsorship opportunities and moving down to McKindry down there. I mean, Shane, Shane Calhoun, even though he's a junior, is one of the best lifters, like one of the best power lifters in Canada right now. Agreed. And such a beauty of a person, yeah. such a great guy to talk to, and it's always just so positive. All right, let's so see. She Bron got her hand out from Shane there. Beautiful. Great press from Bronte. You saw that right side come up a little bit faster than the left, but uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Still looked good. It, it was good. So yeah. very happy about that that second press for Bronte. I want to see what she puts in. See what she puts in for a third attempt. I'm curious to see what Bronte submits. So another thing about this uh, powerlifting sport is that when you finish a lift, you have to submit what your next attempt is. So you will see some people, and I believe some federations have a time limit. Sometimes you'll, you'll complete the lift. You have one minute to submit your next attempt before you time out. And then basically they will give you the same weight plus 2.5 kilograms on top of what that bar is. I'm not too sure what WRPF does with that, but. Uh, most most powerlifting federations give you a minute to submit your next attempt. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Eileen. Eileen. Here's Eileen coming out. 187.4 pounds, a successful press, three white lights. So far, Flight A is doing a very good job on these bench presses. Yeah, that was easy work. Um, so far, yes, I mean, so far we're about, Halfway through bench presses, we've only seen two failed attempts so far. Mm -hmm. um, Chantel's coming up, and Chantel's gone up five kilos, even though she did not get a successful lift on her first attempt. She did complete the bench, but uh, she was given uh, reds due to, I think, a missed call, a missed, uh, uh, missed call by the ref. Yeah, that's right. Now, I think uh, part of that is her confidence in her bench press. Yeah. Like she knows that she can do this. Yeah. And so I think when she, when that other one did fail, um, she knows it was a technical thing. It's not because the strength isn't there. So she was comfortable adding that extra five kg on there. And hold Almost it, Chantel. There. Hold I it. Nailed it. Nice. That looks good. That looks like it's going to be a three white light lift. So that's great. And that I mean, like normally, normally the recommendation is even if you completed the the lift. But still didn't get uh, didn't get the lift. It's still not a bad idea to retake it. Uh, but Chantel's obviously, like you said, she's a veteran. She is like she's a veteran lifter, um, and uh, she's really confident. So she was able to go up five kilos, still get it. And I'm I'm curious to see what, what she'll go up to next. That was 192.5, so just over 200 pounds. So there's Kayla up here on the bar. We, uh, we, are, we are working very hard to give you guys the best possible camera angles, but there is a ton of people around the platform, so we're trying to navigate that with our, our big camera systems here. That press looks great to me. Three white lights and a big celebration on the bench. Very happy about that one. Yeah, she should be happy about that. That was a great press, yeah. yeah. Didn't look like it really slowed down anywhere. She looked like she had full control of that bar the whole time, so that's yeah. the main thing. So now we're getting into, uh, wow, yeah, Tamara, 
I believe Tamara Nolan's up next, and she Tam is. Tamara must be going for some sort of. She must be going for some sort of record because she's going for 101 kilos, and you can only you can only go up. Normally, you have to go up by 2.5 kilos, um, but she's going up by one kilo, um, so she must be going for some sort of record. That's the only time typically you can go up by one kilo. Mm -hmm. Is this a record? This is a national record. It's a national record. That's right, Norris. Confirmed. This is a national record attempt from Tamara Nolan. Now, I've seen Tamara crush records. BC's strongest woman here right now. Oh. I don't she think she's going to get that one. Yeah, she skipped the command. That's too bad. So Tamara was going for a national record, but she did not. Even though she completed the bench and it looked easy, she skipped the head judge's command, so she did not get the lift. So I imagine she'll retake it to secure the, the record. It is kind of one of those heartbreak things to have happen, but it's like... And this is the difficulty too. Tamara is a fantastic athlete. She cross competes in uh, in strongman, strong women competitions. So you know, there's different rules, and and so it, sometimes you know, it, especially in the strongman, strong women shows, it's very dynamic. You have people moving around. It's very like maximum effort all the time. You're running. It's very fast paced too, because you're often timed on certain things. So I think it can sometimes be different for a strongman or strong woman athlete to you know, leave that environment and then come into powerlifting where everything is so um, predicated on a referee's call, yeah. where you have to wait for that. So she probably got a little bit carried away in that, and that's the only thing that went wrong there. Susan Graham's here. Oh, it's beautiful. Susan Graham's a strong bench presser, I gotta say. Yeah, yeah if you look, uh, Susan there, she's the second strongest bench presser but she's one of the lighter people on the on the roster. Like, yeah, 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 that's a cool thing too. So that ties it back into that what we were talking about earlier with the dot scoring. She'll have a good, she'll have a great dot score because her body weight's so low and the strength is just so high. So really impressive to see that. Love yeah. to see it. And yeah, you were talking about Tamara, you know, going from strongman to uh, powerlifting. I remember I was refereeing during her first powerlifting competition and uh, she kept breaking records and so you have to check their equipment yes and, sh and I remember she was like why are you checking my equipment and I, I just I just know she's coming from a strongman perspective where like that's not even a thing in strongman no. so but powerlifting is much more strict around the rules and all that so and here's Taneo with a 308.6 pound bench press 308 pounds Wow. wow. Wow, that was so smooth. So I think. So that was uh, three white lights. So her first attempt was 132.5 kg. She jumped up. She jumped up 7.5 kgs on her second attempt. Do you think we'll see another 7.5 kg jump for Tanea? I think so. That was you dead know? easy. It looked pretty easy. Uh, yeah. It looked like 7. a good. Five, you're right. Yeah, so we yeah. did. She, so we can see on our projector she went up by about 7.5 kilogram for her third attempt. So she submitted that attempt now. Um, so we're going to see that. So that's another wow. somewhere between 15 and 17 or 18 pounds. Yeah, so, her third, so her third attempt will be 325 pounds. So, yeah, she's going to be a 325 pound bench press. That is very impressive. Wow. And we're back with Joanne McLaughlin at the top of the flight for the right, third attempt here. bench press. Joanne. Joanne only went up, she went up two and a half kilos, making sure she secures the bag. Oh no. Not quite. A little bit too heavy for her. And unfortunately, Joanne didn't get that one, but she did get her first two attempts so she's got to be happy with that and you know what if you have three attempts and you're gonna lose one of them I'd rather it be the third than the first or second yeah you don't want it, to it, it's a it's a shitty feeling losing your first or second attempt so if you're gonna yeah you're right if you're gonna lose a lose an attempt or not get the lift you know might as well have it be your third so you can kind of you know mm -hmm. know that you're putting in max effort on your third and if you don't get it you know you're putting in max effort Okay, so we got 
some more third attempts. Looks like Danielle Simo is coming up next. She's going to be our third attempt here. So again, we want to see what she is going to come up with here. She looks, she's pretty intense, you know. She, she's one of those lifters that gets into the zone. Yeah. And Danielle is interesting. If you look at her three bench press attempts, she went 60, 65, 6.5. Like, not very big, like very, very small jumps on, on bench press, but. I think uh, she knows where her limit is and she's trying to like push that a little bit and see if she's got those gains. She competes a couple times a year for sure. That's a good fight right there. We'll just see if anything went wrong on the side judges. No, it didn't, so she's got that one. That was a- uh, Happy that was, about that. That was beautiful. She has a really wide bench. So she's got Adley is coming up with the same weight as well. So Adley's gonna be pressing the same weight. And then behind Adley, we're gonna have Chelsea Loires coming back on here again. Yeah. So the platform is ready for Adley. We're going to see what she's got for a third attempt on her bench press. Let's have a look at Adley there. Adley's getting a handoff here. 149 pounds for a junior. Uh, oh, Adley's open. Never mind. That was a good lift for Adley. Chelsea Wire is coming up next. When uh, this next lift finishes, can we get a shot at the head? Of the the that was a great, a great big setup. Right in the front of the platform, the front judge with the, uh, the kind of gray flag. After this lift. Uh, in the front. Okay, no problem. Here comes Chelsea War. Touching the chest, pressing. Wow. That was a good one. Let's see. She got it. That was and the crowd's happy with that. She's very happy with that third attempt on that bench press. That was a beautiful bench. You can see uh, she was fighting that one, but I didn't see any downward motion. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. So yeah, and that she was her. That and she had uh, she had missed that on her second attempt, so she came back and completed it on her third. Mm -hmm. Just another shout out, guys. Remember that the proceeds from this event are going to the Wounded Warriors Foundation. So. If you're watching this live, go check out the Kodiak Barbell Instagram page. There will be a link and some information on where to go to donate to the Wounded Warriors Foundation. But that's a great cause to get out there and support the people that are out there taking care of us all, keeping us all safe and taking care of us when you know things don't go so well. So here we go, it's another third attempt, Marissa Flynn. That is good right there. That looks like a good one to me. Three white lights, she got that lift, good for her. That was an easy lift for Marissa. All right, Bronte coming in with 85 kgs on the bar. Looking at 187.4 pounds. We got Bronte coming up next here. Bronte's getting ready. So those are her wrist wraps going on now. So she's getting her wrist wraps on here. Again, that's to kind of keep her hands safe so her wrists don't kind of buckle. Because it's an extreme amount of weight that she's, she's trying to press here. And she's got the tunes going. Always wondering what people are listening to. There's the smelling salts, Darrell Petty's, Shane Calhoun grabbing the headphones there. Celine Dion's coming off. And she's getting ready to hop back on there now. So you may notice that the thumbs are out of the thumb loops on the wrist wraps as per regulation there. She's got a massive arch. So she's gonna sit down that bar, and there it comes. Wow. That looked good to me, as long as her butt didn't come off the bench. She got it, three white lights. Very happy, Bronte Lose. And her entire team's gotta be happy with that. Jarrell did awesome job coaching her, and she knows it. <laughs> and there's Stuart Locke. Stuart Locke of Kodiak Barbell, a head coach of uh, Kodiak Barbell, he's getting ready. So Eileen's coming out here. She's getting ready, Stuart's gonna give her some words of encouragement. 
little bit of smelling salts action mm. here. Looks like that's that from looks War like Ward. That's oh. right. So oh. our good buddy Patrick out there who owns Ward Smelling Salts. Big shout out to them. Ward Smelling Salts. And here's Stuart. He's got the Misfit Apparel shorts on. Kodiak Barbell camo hat. And he's going to give a nice little handoff for Eileen. And there yeah. that is. Now he's out of the way. Eileen's going to let that bar come down. And there it is. Coming down. That looks Google. like a bit of a That's bit of a misgrooved bench, but she made it. She got it. She got it. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was a misgroove. I think it was just what a little I look, shaky. Could be just from where I'm sitting here. Yeah. Got to see some more rain energy out in the. There's Chantel. She's back again, all smiles, because she knows she's got this bench press under wraps, quite literally. And there they go. See, they use the <laughs> thumb loops to keep those things on. Again, Chantel is sponsored by True North Sportswear. Now, uh, I'm really excited to see True North get more involved with the sport of powerlifting as the uh, the owner, Colby, is very excited to participate more in powerlifting here because it's a great community. I think he's seen how much positive energy is coming from this sport and he wants to be a part of it. So I hope we all welcome True North Sportswear to the, to the platform. Here we go. She's going to get the lap bar lowered, touching the chest. It's going. It's going. Oh, I, I think the side I ref th I think she got might it. call that. Yeah, oh. they did. A little bit of downward motion, but it wasn't the ref that I thought was going to call it. See, the from where I was sitting, it looked like the right-hand side of the bar dipped a tiny bit. Dipped a, t a tiny little bit. Ah, it's too bad. another one. Oh, the platform's ready again. So we're getting a handoff here. Three white lights for Kayla Nip. And that was 97.5 kg successful bench press. Tamara Nolan's coming back out again. I think, is she trying the same weight? No. She went up. She went up seven she kilos. She went up. So Tamara Nolan would have got the record. I believe that was the record. The national record, I believe. Yeah. Would have gotten it. Didn't get it on a technicality. She's coming back out to get it again. But this time she raised the weight up even more. She went up seven kilos. So, and so Tamara is... So Tamara is taking a bit of a risk here. Um, she could have, she, she didn't go for the same weight of, of 101. She's trying to get 108 now. Yeah, Tamara is going to have a crazy bench press here. That's going to be wild. Here wow. comes that press has come down. Oh, I, I, I guess we're going to see what happens. It looked like there was and a pause whites. on that. But she got that, so Tamara Nolan is now a record holder again. So I love to see that because, again, it was a case where, you know, the second attempt didn't kind of go exactly how she wanted but came back and crushed it on the third and not only did well on that third attempt but added weight to it. Yeah, ins instead of trying to, instead of, like, trying to secure the, the 101 national record, it went up so easy. She's like, even though I didn't get it, yeah. I'm going to go up and up it. You know what I mean? And that's so. great. We do apologize for slightly missing that one, that one of the camera's uh, battery went dead on us. But we got that one booting back up, so. That's okay, here comes uh, Susan is getting back under the bar. And here she comes. Susan Graham. And that came down smooth. That looks like it's, oh yeah. Great press. That was a great press from Susan. Yeah, she's so impressive, that bench press. I'm impressed with that press. Yeah. That's such a good bench press. And she had a good squat, too. Yeah. But you got, you, we're actually looking at ourselves on this massive 85-inch television right now, and I got to say, you're a good-looking guy, Norris. So. All right. Tamea is next. So this is the last bench press of... Flight A. This is 
a world record right now, guys. A world record about to be set by Tanea Tatur. Tanea's coming out. This is a world record attempt. Man, the, cr the crowd is getting wild. And man. you saw it here on the Evan Porter Live broadcast brought to you by the Film Factory. Follow us on Instagram at Evan Porter Media. World record attempt, a world record attempt. This is 325 pounds, it's looking good. It's good! A new world record, a new world wow. record. Wow. That was amazing. So lift. impressive. You know, that's that really awesome. one of the treats, man, is like you get to see these incredible records get set by people. Yeah. And I mean, she's two for two on world records. Uh, she set a world record on squats, world record on bench now. I mean, she's off to a really, really good day. And we want to see what happens on deadlifts with Tanea as well. But I had such a privilege and a treat for us to get to capture that yeah. um, on this stream. So, yeah. And she's. She's such a good lifter too. Like all of her lifts are just so clean and so good. And that's yeah. right. And you know what? I feel very privileged to be here, to be covering this event for you, and to be your host on this event. Just a little bit of a backstory about me. Like I got into lifting it was several years ago, but I got into lifting uh, for mental health reasons, and uh, really fell into like natural bodybuilding and started doing men's physique competitions, but. Um, it's actually my friend Norris that got me into powerlifting. He invited me out to some of the meets and I was doing photography and stuff, got sucked into that community. And it's really hard not to get sucked into the strength sports community because it's so welcoming and it's so positive to be a part of. And like I said, people cheer effort. And with strength sports, it's one of those things, unlike the, uh, the, more, like, um, the more aesthetic sports, uh, physique sports, strength sports is focused on fact and objectivity, there's no real matter of opinion that's involved. It's, did you lift the weight, yes or no? I don't mean to interrupt you, but Bronte's going for a fourth attempt. Fourth attempt for Bronte. So that means it's a record. So this is the under 19 bench press record for Bronte. Bronte has been crushing it here today. Very excited about her performance. She got a beautiful handoff from Shane Calhoun. And here comes that press. It's looking good. Wow. And she got it. Bronte should be happy about that. So a big hug. Big hug from Bronte. Wow, big hug. Jenny hugs. McMasters gave her a big hug when she came off. There. That's awesome. Now, guys, you haven't seen Jenny McMasters yet. We're going to point her out. We're going to highlight her. But Jenny McMasters is this wonderful meat director. She's been heavily involved with the strength sports community, heavily involved with powerlifting. Uh, lots of friends in the, in, the in the strongman community as well. Always out here, always volunteering, and always helping these events happen. And it's really the people that are like Jenny that make this sport possible. So if you're not following Jenny, I believe her Instagram handle is WRPF, uh, WRPF Prairies. So have a look for her on Instagram if you can. Uh, I'll give you a couple more Instagram handles to follow if you guys are watching along on the Instagram here, or sorry, on the, on the broadcast. If you Can you find the WRPF handles, I believe? Um, so there's gonna be WRPF Canada. That'll be like the parent federation for WRPF here in Canada. There's WRPF uh, British Columbia. That is, uh, that's Kay, Kay Miller, who's our meet director today. That's her Instagram handle, give her a follow. Remember to give Kodiak Barbell a follow on Instagram there as well. Awesome people, really cool apparel, awesome coaches. It's just a great little community within our strength sports world. A couple more people to follow. Get on there, follow True, True North Strength Sports. Get out there, follow Cerberus. Follow the prep to go people. All these guys. Rain Energy, give them a follow too, thanks. Sounds right, like the bar so is getting loaded here for Aiden Skitter. So we're tar starting at the top of flight B here now with Aiden. And Aiden has 143 pounds loaded on the bar here. And this is that really young guy here. He's, uh, he's a youth, uh, youth lifter between 14 and 16 years old. Love to see these juniors out here. So Jenny, who I was talking about, Jenny's now on the right-hand side of the platform comes Aiden, touching the chest, got the press command and the rack. It looks like he did a great Easy. job on that bench press. Good for you, Aiden. 
three white lights on that bench press. That was easy, easy work for him. Jeff, would I be able to get a shot at the referee on the right hand side of the platform? The one that there with the glasses? So we're going to give you guys a little bit of a highlight. I mentioned earlier that, uh, that Jenny McMasters is on the right hand side of the platform. And she's a long time power lifter. Just a fantastic overall yeah. official, too. Very fair to the lifters. And usually, you know, I've had so many conversations with Jenny about what we can do for lifters, and it's it's always her number one priority to give everything that she can to the lifters that come to these events. That is what she's out here fighting to try to get whatever she can for these lifters yeah. to make this a better experience for them, and that's her number one priority. Well, she's so invested in the lifters too. Like you can see, she was emotional there. That was she was wiping her eyes from when Bronte hit that world record yep. there. She is very passionate about the sport. And she loves to see people succeed not just herself but other people succeed so big shout out to jenny and you know like i said it can't happen without them so we got malachi allen coming out here we saw malachi absolutely send it on his squats i think his his father is coaching or handling him behind the curtain here we we can't quite see them yet and malachi's dad jason He's, so there is a time limit when they call the platform is ready. You have one minute to get to the platform. So you have to be ready when your name is called to get out there. If you do run out of time, you will get disqualified for that lift. So you don't want to miss your time. He's got about 15 seconds left. and He really needs to get out here quickly if he wants to hit yeah, he's only his got second bench attempt. He's got about nine seconds left here. Yeah, and so it's looking like he may not make it. That's too bad. Unfortunately, he didn't get the lift on that because he timed out. So Zaid is going to be up to up to bar uh, up to the bar next. Called out to the platform. Zaid is getting his wrist wraps on here right now, and he's wearing some very colorful A7 apparel here. He's got the A7 singlet. Got Griffin behind him with the A7. Zaid's got the the cornrows going on. got the ends or wrist wraps there's the smelling salts coming in he's getting ready to hit this lift he's gonna take this he's gonna take this lift very seriously he wants to, he wants to do well here so he's got his back chalked up there that's to prevent him from sliding there's a lot of tension your body's under a lot of tension when you're on this on this bench here so you don't want to be sliding around on the bench because that will really throw off your whole press so he's ready, he does start command, touch the chest, and there's the press. Followed all the commands, three white lights, good job, Zaid. His coach, Cole, has got to be happy with that one. So this looks like Griffin is coming out here next, and Shane Calhoun beside him, and Bronte Lose behind him. The crowd is eating this up. This is a pretty fun event. It tends, it tends to clear out a little bit after squats finish before bench press starts because people kind of scatter and go in little breaks. Yeah. Uh, but they've, they've all, everyone's piled back in. This room is packed again. Yeah, I, it bench press is, what is typically when people go out, and especially the athletes, because it's, they typically go to refuel a little bit and go take a break. And Bench press can be a little bit, uh, you know, it's not nearly as exciting as... It, uh, I think it's because it can't see. I think that's part of it yeah. as well. Like, bench press, it is tough to see. Like, even our camera guys who are right in there, they're having a tough time uh, kind of getting a good angle sometimes because there's so many people in there. Um, there's so many referees, there's spotters, loaders. The, the actual rack gets in the way as well. So, um, yeah. So here comes Pablo. He's, he's got pa platforms ready for Pablo. He's getting onto this bench here. He's going to get himself set up. So that's that's what he's doing right now. He's wedging his shoulders into the, into the, that bench right now so that he's good and stable before this bar comes down. You do not want your body moving around, flopping around on that bench. You have to be stable to produce power, like we mentioned before. He's happy with that lift. He got it. He did get one red light on the left-hand side of the platform. Um, it could be, it could have been that he raised his foot on that side, 
uh, or they may have seen his butt lift up. You, your bum can't leave the bench. You, your butt has to firmly be on that bench. And that could have been what it is. The, the side referee may have seen him come up off the bench a little bit. Yeah, as that a, could be the reason. As a that. side referee, you're, there's so many things you have to look at uh, on bench press. You're looking to make sure that people's feet don't move. Um, their feet don't come off the ground. Your, their butt doesn't come off. Um, making sure that they actually uh, touch their chest and they pause it to their chest. They're listening to commands. Uh, there, there's just so many things that you're looking for. But primarily, side referees are making sure that butt is staying on the ground because that's typically the number one thing to happen to people on bench presses. Their butt will come off the bench, which is a no lift. Here's Robin with a pretty solid 270 wow. bench that looked really good. Beautiful. Three white, lights. Three white lights. 270 pounds on the bar. And who we got next? We have Troy Benoit coming up next. Now, Cole mentioned earlier that he wanted to see Troy do well in his benching here because his last meet he did have a little, a couple of uh, issues with his bench. So we're going to see how Troy does. And hopefully he does fantastic here. He's getting himself set up. He's getting himself wedged in underneath of that bar. And his coach Cole from Blacksmith Fitness giving him a lift off there. Here he comes. And it looks like he got that. Followed his commands, three white lights, beauty. Jeff, is there any chance we can get a shot of uh, the head referee right here? So right there on the right-hand side of the bench here is returning to her chair is CJ with the WRPF logo on the back of her shirt. That's CJ, she is one of the WRPF presidents. In the front with the black t-shirt, to your left. That's the the weights. We're trying to get you an angle, but there's a lot of people that are loading weights. Okay, here's Jonathan out. Jonathan Hansen's coming out here. This is a temp, 275 and a half pounds bench press. And he's getting a lift off from Stuart Locke, strength and conditioning coach at Kodiak Barbell. And that is a smooth press. Smooth press. I'm anticipating three white lights on that one. So that was a great press. Really impressive to see it. really heavy bench presses. It's it's yeah. a difficult move. Some people, it seems like they naturally do really well at bench press, and a lot of people struggle with bench press, and I was one of those people. And I want to do a big shout out right now because I'm live, because I'm actually competing next weekend in a different powerlifting meet. And I personally struggled with bench press for years, and my current coach has done wonders to help me out. Kevin Lutz is his name, Kevin Lutz. You can follow him on Instagram, Coach Kevin Lutz. Awesome guy, extremely, extremely uh, competent coach. So Steve Dardengo is under the bar. And he's getting a handoff from Sean. Oh, beautiful, Ben, that was, that was easy. Very nice. Easy work for Steve. I mean, opening with a 300-pound bench press is... And Steve and Sean, awesome. those guys both trained together out of Vic, uh, Vic, uh, Vic Barbell, Victoria Barbell. Yeah, Victoria Barbell is uh, technically in, in, I think you would technically call it, say it's in Victoria, but it's uh, out in a kind of Colwood area. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and they have a lot of great equipment in there. A they, great culture. They got every everything you get, everything you need in there to be strong. I, I believe they are, uh, they call themselves the strongest gym on the island. And you know they they they're probably not wrong. So here's Josh. Josh was coming out with 314 at point one pound bench press for his opener.
And that is a very slow controlled yeah. wow. descent. That press was like. Do you see how fast that moved? I think, I think he could have am wrapped that about ten times. Yeah, that's crazy. So slow and controlled on the descent, very and then controlled. just pops it up like it's nothing. That looked like a, that looked like there was 135 on the bar. It was very easy looking. The the stability of the shoulder joints really important with this bench pressing too. If your shoulders are pretty unstable or they're not working properly, there's a lot that's going on in the bench press. It's a very dynamic movement. Even though it kind of looks like people are just laying down flat, they're almost never flat on the bench. There is usually an arch to the back. You know, there's a lot of technique that goes into bench press and a lot of practice. People spend a long time bench press. Now, John McDonald's up here. He's a very impressive bench presser. Yeah. And you know what? If you look at his, he's a, he's a 10 kilograms lighter than everybody else that's around him, and he's almost in the top for his bench pressing. He's extremely powerful bench press. That was an easy bench. 320 pounds for John McDonald made that look like, you know. Which is just what you want. I mean, like, this is, uh, you know, we're still on first attempts here, so that's what you want your first attempt to look like. It was like. awesome. Love to see John under that bar. He's a great bench presser. He loves the bench. It's definitely his strength. And we love to see it. Yeah. If your first attempt is flying like that, that's a good thing. You want it just to fly like that. You want to get on the board. You know, your first attempt isn't isn't going to go towards your score. Uh, you know, your heavier lifts afterwards are going to what's going to contribute to your score. So look at that mustache. Here's Dalton. Look at the great mustache. Fantastic mustache. I think he'll get this just based on his mustache. Dalton Gendron, 325.1 pounds on the bar, 147.5 kg. He's getting a lift off. And here we go. Nice controlled descent. Beautiful. Easy press for him. Beautiful. He made light work of that one. Dalton Gendron, guys. Right now, Finley is coming up next. He's the second no way. heaviest bench press as uh, for the for the openers, yeah, and he's a wild. junior. That's very impressive. Finley is a junior lifter. Yeah. And he is the he has the second highest opener for bench press, and you can see him collecting himself mentally and getting ready for this lift. He's feeling intense right now. He's ready for this. And here he comes. He's gotten called to the bench. Awesome. Hit the salt and he's ready to go. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good job, everybody. Here's Finley. He's ready. And here we go. He's going to get... There's the start command. And he's wow. destroyed that bench. Nice, three whites. So it does look like in WRPF the head is allowed to come off the bench. Yeah, looks like you, yeah, you can lift your head off the bench. There's some federations that you're not allowed to lift your head off the bench. And Very sticky. Yeah. But it looks like WRPF, you can do that no problem. Now, uh, just a little bit more information about our co-host Norris as a referee. And uh, in a couple of different federations, he's looking at getting certified in another one right now with the WRPF. Yeah. And so he's trying to kind of stay up to date on who's doing what and loves to be part of this community. And so a huge shout out to Norris for being here today as well. And for you guys at home, give him a follow there on his Instagram, Norris underscore WL. Let's go. Couple more shout outs for you as well. Remember, Wounded Warriors, all the proceeds from today's event are going to the Wounded Warriors Foundation. Get on the Google, search it up. I know you know how to do it. Open another tab, don't close this one, whatever you do. Go find those guys and make a make a charitable wow. donation. Look at Dan That's a great press from Daniel wow. Kerwin. Did you see that 407 that was, pounds? That was so easy. Now that's a bench press. Throw um, some weight on the bar, would you? Wow. Making it look easy. 180. Wow. Looks like we're back to the oh, top the of this 407 flight. pound bench press for an opener. That was an opener at 407. Wow. I believe that's Aiden coming up next at the top of the next flight. Yeah, so we're back He's to the getting top ready. now for seconds. That's right. So yeah, again, just remember Wounded Warriors is out there trying to take care of the people that take care of us. So make sure that you guys make an effort. Please get out there, donate. 
five bucks. Please do it. And, you know, just help the people that are helping us, your, your firefighters, your police uh, forces, armed forces, all these people, they go through a lot to make sure that we're okay, and we need to go through whatever we can to make sure they're okay. Stuart Locke coming up here to have a look at things. Aiden's coming out to the bench. Fantastic junior lifter. Aiden Skinner. 159.8 pounds on the bar for Aiden Skinner. And that bar is unracked. Looks like his buddy's helping him out here. He gets the press command. Nice, smooth. Followed all the commands. Three white lights. Good for you, Aiden. Aiden's doing a great job here for being a junior lifter. Doing a great job. A couple another shout outs, guys. Remember our uh, meat sponsors, a couple of them out here. Cerberus Strength is out here with a really awesome table. True North Sportswear is out there rocking it. Prep to go. Resolute Strengthwear. I'm just reading some more off the banner here. Remember guys, K-Fit Conditioning opened the doors for us to be here downtown Victoria. Amazing facility they have here. They clean, they, I think they renoed the place when they took over, I believe they purchased the gym. Came in and cleaned it right out. And I know that everybody that Ka Kaylin has on staff at K-Fit is extremely educated. Everybody knows what they're doing. They're very competent trainers and coaches, kinesiologists, chiropractors, etc. So if you're in the Victoria area and you're looking for a good coach or if you're dealing with anything that you need a, a good kinesiologist or a physio or Cairo, or re make sure you reach out to K-Fit Conditioning. You can find them on Instagram as well. Just get on the Instagram, search K-Fit Conditioning. Here's Zaid getting the wrist wraps on. He's got, he's got royal purple all over the place today. It looks like, it looks like Malachi might miss his second attempt as well which is not good. So he, he did struggle with a couple of those squats. He may have pulled something. Yeah. Um, especially on that squat, if you pull like something in the groin and then trying to get onto the bench, like a, and your hip flexor is quite stretched in that position, he yeah. may have tweaked something there and may be taking care of himself. Well. So we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, it's too bad. Um, yeah, because if he doesn't, if he doesn't put something up for his third attempt, he's uh, disqualified. Which is too bad. Yeah, hopefully Malachi does come back. I really hope that he does. Um, it is unfortunate if somebody does bomb out, yeah, as we said, because they missed ho all hopefully three. Hopefully he shows up for his third, and um, and is at least able to put up his first, you know, what he chose for his first attempt. You know what I mean? That's so. right. And some athletes do decide to sit out a couple of lifts and then come back and you know just um, sail one by the goalpost nice and light that they know that they can do so that they can stay in the event and now I believe as well if you let's say that someone hits a uh, record on their squat but then they bomb out on the bench press they lose the record am I am I correct no that's so, exactly right so sometimes if somebody breaks uh, you know, let's say somebody breaks a record on squat but then, you know, they're not able to uh, participate in deadlifts after because they injured themselves. They'll, you know, you'll probably see them just deadlift like 165, super easy, easy weight. To avoid losing that record. Exactly. Yeah. So they have to put something, they have to put something up for all three of the lifts for, you know, their record to count. Oh, Zaid is pushing hard on this one. Nice. I didn't see any downward motion, but it looks like one of the refs might have. But he did get two out of three, so he's got that one. So good for you, Zaid. I'm really happy you got that bench press. I bet you Cole's, I bet you everybody at Blacksmith is happy to see him hit that lift. And they're all watching back there, so that's great. So here's, here's Griffin Semple. And he's going to come out here and do 248, 248 pounds on the bar for him, 112.5 kilograms. Yeah, I really like Griffin as a lifter. He's, uh, like, he's so... For a young guy, like he's you know under 19, he's 19 or a younger here. Um, you like him because he's ginger. I mean, maybe that could, that could definitely be it. Uh, but he's just so composed, and for a for like a, a young kid like him, he's uh, yeah, he's just so composed, so professional about it. Um, he looks like he's been doing it a long time. I don't yep. know if he has. And here's Shane Calhoun giving him a lift off. We've talked about Shane several times throughout this event as being one of the guys to watch here in Canada. Nice bench. Great press, Griffin. Nice work. Nice work. He's and happy three with that. Lights. Three white lights. Nothing to complain about there. Awesome. 
is Pavlo getting ready here? He's chalking up. And this is kind of a moment where people are collecting themselves mentally to come out onto the platform. You can see Pablo is collecting himself mentally. He seems ready. Cole is chilling beside him. Cole with Blacksmith Fitness. And he's getting ready to get his name called. He's getting ready to fly out there. And he has 264 and a half pounds on the bar. Platform's ready, so here he comes. goes he's getting set up we got two refs at front now <laughs> Pablo's about to, you got the start command and it's gonna be a fight it's gonna be a battle wow. and there it wow. is I did not see any downward motion wow. is it good is it good it looks like there's some Oh, that's good. good, it's good. He's got two for three. That's awesome. Two white lights out of three is not wow. bad. I'll take it any time, any, any was, day of the week. Man, it's hard sometimes to grind out a bench press like that, and he, I can't believe he grinded it out like that. That's awesome. Here's Troy Benoit. Troy Benoit's getting ready here. Troy's looking pretty intense here. So Troy's getting set up here under the bar. Again, Blacksmith is all over the place today. Cole's gonna give him a nice handoff, just give him a couple of cues here to remember. So here we go, the handoff. And the start command any second now. Here's the start command. It bounced a little bit when it hit the chest. I yeah, don't know if they're going to call the that. They right didn't, so good for him. you got to really watch that, as we said, the up and down motion. So sometimes you will see a lifter that the bar, especially on bench press, the bar will contact the chest and bounce a little bit, and you can sometimes get called for that. So I'm glad yeah. to see that it wasn't significant enough for him to get called but it is something to keep your mind on. Yeah, it was pretty minor on that one. Some judges in other federations might call that, um, but again, in this federation, they kind of err on the side of the lifter. That's right. Um, it wasn't significant enough to for it to be called like a downward motion or like a double bounce or anything like that. Yep. It was just sort of like, it just looked like it was a little bit rocky at the bottom. Right? You know, yeah, you know, I think and, that's all it was. Yeah. So, and again, that's again, that's where being a ref it can be so stressful because you have to make that call in a in a split second decision, right? Here's Robin again. 292 pounds on the bar for his second attempt bench press. That is a heavy bench press. Stuart Locke with the handoff. Beautiful. No worries there. Oh, unfortunately, that was a no lift. We got two reds on that one. I oh. think it might have been jumping the command, but I don't. No, I don't his know. His butt came off the bench. Okay, it sounds like his butt came off the bench yeah. over there. So again, again you got to keep your bum on the bench. when you see both side referees uh, give a red and something like that, um, it's going to be because the butt came off or something like that. Kind of like with squat depth, when you both, when both side judges give a red, odds are it's because they didn't hit depth. That's right. Yeah. So it looks like Jonathan Hansen's coming out here. He's got 303 pounds on the bar, 137 and a half kilograms. And he came rushing out to the platform. He's excited to be here. <laughs> He's excited to bench. This is Jonathan Hansen benching 303 pounds. And that is buttery smooth. Oh, I spoke too soon. Wow. So that one's going to be a no lift for sure. Let's see. Unfortunately for Jonathan. What do the judges say? <laughs> We're kind of waiting on the lights. Yeah, so uh, that's what we thought. Too bad. Three red lights, unfortunately. Yeah, I was wondering what they were going to give him because, like, he did get it, but it was very rocky. It wasn't it, it one was, fluid yeah. motion like it's supposed to be. 
And ultimately, there are some difficult decisions that do need to be made. You know, like we said, the referees want to err on the side of the lifter as often as possible, but they have to make sure that everything is extremely fair for everyone. So there are difficult calls that do get made where they, you know, there is a little bit of room for interpretation, and that ultimately comes down to the experience and knowledge of the referees as well. Um, you can't have good referees and bad referees. I don't think we have any bad referees here today. I think we got a, no, a whole I, team of very, very good refs. No, the officials today have been really, really good. Very good officiating. Yeah. With Steve Dardengo under the bar, we've got 319.6 pounds, and I think he's going to stick it because Steve's a great bench presser. He's very stable on the bench. You'll see a lot of stability. See, very stable. He's very smooth. Easy, easy, easy. All of his lifts are like that. His They're squats are smooth. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that comes, you know, there's, I heard it said earlier that iron sharpens iron. And, you know, that guy trains out of Vic Barbell, and he's around. He trains with a lot of really sharp powerlifters. Yeah. And so I think him spending more and more time around some of these other, like, really, really accomplished powerlifters and people like Jason Klaus and and them over at uh, Vic, uh, Vic Barbell has probably really helped with his powerlifting as well. Every time I see Steve, he's getting stronger. He's better and better every he's better time. better every time, yeah. And he's happier every time. Yeah. And, he, and he's bigger too. <laughs> yeah. He keeps he's putting on the up. size. Here's Josh here coming in. He's getting his wrist wraps on. Got some funky wrist oh. wrap. Looks like he's got some cupping done. That's what those circular marks on his forearms, which can sometimes happen, especially if you're very tightly gripping any of the bars or dumbbells or anything like that. Yeah. Your forearms can start to kind of get locked up and have issues. So it looks like he's got some cupping done on those forearms yeah. to loosen them up, especially on bench here. We have very, yeah. very tight grip on the bar. I'm excited to see Josh bench here because remember his, his first attempt moved like an empty bar. So yep. I'm excited to see how this goes. Here Josh goes. Very slow in the descent. Very controlled. 336 okay, pounds. So like there's no weight on the bar at all. Nice. I mean, that was that was, that was was 10 kilos more than his first attempt. Yeah. So, I mean, he's got it in him. That was, uh, that was easy. It's, it can sometimes, when, when, some, when people like Josh are that good at bench press, it can be a little bit discouraging if you've been working very hard at bench press and you're not at that same level. So it's very important to, to be humble and to to take criticisms from your coaches and the people that you live with so that you can become better. Yeah. And I don't think you can get to the level that Josh's bench press is at now without being at least some of those things. So all the power to him for you know becoming a, a great bench presser. And here's, yeah. speaking of great bench pressers, here we go again <laughs> with John McDonald. 336.2 pounds on the bar for John. Yeah, we've got four more second attempts coming up here some of the big boys well john is yeah like you were saying earlier john's light is one of the lighter guys of these of the uh, last couple guys here but he's up in there with uh, he's benching as much as some of the big boys so he's in under the bar now so he's going to be wedging his shoulders into this bench he wants everything to be super flat super stable there's the arch and you can see there's tension in the legs. The legs are loaded, the glutes are tight. There it comes, boom. Wow. He's got that all day long. Like nothing. That's gonna be three white lights in there, and so it is. Go awesome. get him, John. Glad to see him get that one. Yeah, that so was an awesome bench press. I think we've press. got one more, Dalton Gendron. We'll get a couple more lifters here on this flight. Dalton Gendron's coming up 347.2 pounds that he's gonna be looking for. And he's, again, guys, there's a lot of work that happens on this powerlifting platform. We all applaud the lifters for doing the jobs that they're doing, lifting the weights that they're doing. But remember, all that weight has to be loaded on there by hand, by volunteers. So, you know, we really want to thank all the people that are coming out here volunteering, whether they be, you know, platform crew, spotters, loaders, the referees, the officials, you know, their venue, everyone who comes out here and helps make this a good place to be. Yeah, it's actually a pretty remarkable thing. Like, all the people you see around this platform are all volunteers. They're all volunteers. And as we said, all the proceeds that do get generated are going to Wounded Warriors. And it, that's a great press from Dalton. Nice. Good one for Dalton. A great press for a great mustache. All right, here comes so Finley. Fin now, Finley is the junior, and he's a... Uh, he's so he's a junior weighing in the 100 kilo weight class, and um, yeah, he's benching some big weight here. 
390. Wow, 391 pounds. 391.3 pounds on the bar for Finley. So he's getting close to the 400 pound mark. I wonder if this lift goes well for Finley. I would hope that he would go for 402 next. Yes. Yeah. And based on a, based on his uh, his first attempt, I think this will go well. So Jenny McMasters is now in the head ref position, running the platform. And there it goes. Wow, what a wow. That's power. That kid's just got some raw strength. That's right power there. right there. So you see people in the warm-up area that have uh, like gel packs and stuff that they're eating. They're trying. So people have had to weight cut uh, to get into their proper categories. People do weight cuts and stuff. And it's really important to replenish all the muscles with that uh, water and you know carb carbohydrates that get used up during the cut. And then also during all this events where they're burning through all that energy, you've got to put something back in the tank. Yeah, dur during the day, I mean, like I can speak from my own personal experience. I don't like to eat a lot during the competition. You don't want to eat. You like, don't want it coming back up. No, exactly. So, you know, d I, you know, during the competition, you want to eat carbohydrates all day because um, that's what where your where your main fuel source is going to be. Quick, uh, quick um, resource, quick resources for your body to burn, which is going to be carbohydrates. Um, so, lots of lots of water, salt, electrolytes, and carbohydrates are basically what you should be consuming. Um, you know, a little bit of protein doesn't hurt, but you want to kind of stay away from fatty foods the day of competition. That's right. Um, so you're going to see a lot of guys eating candy. Rice cakes are really popular, you know. Um, so be a power lifter and eat candy. You yeah. heard it here. Yeah, yeah. You, it's not uncommon to see guys with candy and stuff like that. Because, again, it's really quick sugar and carbohydrates for them to be able to uh, use on the platform. And so, uh, so next up, we've we'll got Daniel Dan's Kerwin here, another member of Kodiak Barbell, I believe. He's got the, uh, I think I believe that's a Kodiak Barbell singlet there with the virus. Could be. I can't quite tell. And Stuart Log, head uh, strength and conditioning coach for Kodiak Barbell, is going to give him the lift off. And we saw a pretty smooth bench press on that last one, so I want to see what this second attempt looks like. You know, Dan must be feeling pretty good right now. He got that 700-pound uh, that squat. His bench press is I moving good. Wow. That's pretty Oh, cool. wow. That was... So good he lift. got it. That was good. I, th I, I was a little bit concerned when that bar racked because his hand kind of jerked there at the last, but he got the rack command and he put it away, and yeah, that's I'm, all that matters. I'm not sure what happened there. I feel like he, I feel like the ra like the bar maybe slipped out of his hand a little bit as he racked it, or he probably released his grip and then as it struck the uprights, it kind of folded his wrist a little bit, yeah. and he just let the weight go because at that point it was over the rails. I Danger don't know. Zone. So we've got Aiden coming back up here at the top of the flight, and Cole with Blacksmith is behind him as well. Going to do a couple more shout-outs again. Remember to follow a few key people that made this event possible. The Film Factory. Make sure you get on the Instagram, follow the Film Factory. Uh, President Jeff Myers is with us today with over 20 years' experience in the film industry, working on feature films and documentaries and all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, Jeff runs a great studio out of Kelowna. We'll talk about that again in a second here. Here's Aiden Skinner, 170 pounds on the bar. Very smooth. Oh, he's going to battle oh, wow. that one. I think he got it. I, I think, think he, got, he it. got it. He did nice. get it. He's happy about that. Good for nice. you, Aiden. Good work, Aiden. Yeah. That Always was good. Love to see all the smiles, all the smiles after those attempts when it's a grind like that. There's nothing that's more sad. Because I think sometimes people come here, you've been tapered. Your prep has kind of led you to this point, but you're not 100% sure that you can hit that lift. And when you do hit that lift, that's got to be. That's got to feel good. There, there's, there's no better feeling than hitting a weight in competition that you haven't hit in the gym yet. Um, I remember my first 500-pound deadlift I did in competition, and it was about 20 pounds more than I'd done ever. And so being able to do that in competition in front of a crowd, like it's so much fun to be able right. to do that. And again, like we're seeing lots of people out there with all their kids and the family is here. So we, you know, as sometimes these powerlifting events can seem a little bit intimidating, big, strong, scary people, but this is a family event where every, everyone's come out to support the people that they love and care about. Here's Zade back on the platform again, 231 and a half pounds. 
Blacksmith fitness athlete. Cole with Blacksmith gave him a lift up, and he's pressing, there it goes. Lots of excited people in the crowd here. We're really happy to see that happen. Three white lights, three white lights. They're happy about that one. So Zade's a pretty cool guy, actually. I caught on with him in Blacksmith Fitness, too. And um, he told me about how he, when he was going to school, um, just out of high school, actually, he joined a strength and conditioning class. And uh, when he joined that class, he said that all, he couldn't lift anywhere near as much as everybody else in that group. But it's been pretty cool, and he's, he's gotten so much progress and he really attributes a lot of that to working with the crew at Blacksmith Fitness in Port Coquitlam. Look those guys up on Instagram. Look up Joel. Uh, to just type in Joel Blacksmith Fitness into your Instagram. You'll find those guys. They're awesome. And uh, it's a, just a great community. So Griffin, we got back on the platform. 275 and a half pounds for his third attempt. We're excited to see what Griffin puts up. Looks like Shane's giving him a lift off. Shane Calhoun, nicest guy in powerlifting with the lift off. The, oh shoot, he didn't quite have that one. And it was very close for that, but sometimes you can just tell when you get to a certain point in the bench press, you're not gonna make that, and we, that's what we do call a sticking point. So again, yeah, just remember, it, it's, it's one of those things you really have to train through. Um, as you train and you get stronger, you will realize that there's, uh, like we said, uh, weak, the weakest link in the chain is going to present itself, and and the areas that you're not super strong at are going to start to present themselves, and then so your training really has to to change and adjust so that you can overcome whatever those adversities are. And in this case, it looks like he's got a bit of a sticking point, which looks to be about five or six inches off the chest, which is more of an advanced point to have a sticking point, as far as I know, on bench press. Troy Benoit. Back on the bench, 292.1 pounds. Troy trains out at Blacksmith Fitness, as if I haven't said that enough. Got the start command. Come on, Troy. Uh, a little bit of downward motion, and they're going to take the bar. Unfortunately, he didn't get that one. But that, that, was a, that was a good try. All smiles as well. Troy's all smiles back there, so I don't think it really hurt his feelings there too much. I think he, uh, he's pretty happy with that attempt. He's happy with his, his first two benches going well. And so far, so good on the meet for Troy. All smiles in the back. People are getting very excited. You know, it's kind of cool. You come back there, you get to share these experiences with all your friends and everybody else who's back there with you. And so Robin is getting ready. And the platform's ready for Robin. Here he goes. 297.6 pounds on the bar. And Stuart Locke is going to give him a lift off. He's gonna get the star command here in a second, and here it is. He looked a little, sh there it is. Never mind. All day long, three white lights, and he's happy about that one. Got big hugs on the platform. Really good job there, Robin. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen at the beginning of that, because it did look like he was a little bit teeter-totter there at the very beginning, but he, he recovered, brought that bar down nice and smooth, and, and certainly the upwards motion was very good. So Jonathan's getting himself ready here. Jonathan Hansen's getting ready, 303 pounds on the bar. I believe his second attempt, uh, he didn't quite make his second attempt here, so we're gonna see what happens on the third. And it looks like he's getting himself, you know, emotionally prepared for this third attempt. He knows that he has to do at least what his second attempt was. You cannot go down. You cannot lower your attempt weight. You can only stay the same or go up. So it's very critical that you don't overshoot. 303 pounds on the bar. He's getting himself into position. Stuart Locke is going to give him a lift off. And we've got uh, Jenny McMaster's head ref position. And we got his press. It's up. Let's see what the judges have to say. He got it. He's happy about that. He's very happy. Now, powerlifting, sometimes it's kind of a mixed bag because you get some people that don't like to be too show-offy about it. So you'll see people that are extremely excited and very happy to have accomplished the lift that they pulled off on the platform, but you, they're not as expressive as others. And then you see some people that it's just like, you got to tell them to turn it down a notch because they're raising the roof. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that, but it looks like Jonathan's one of these very humble lifters. He's, he's excited about it, but um, he's not freaking out on the platform. 
Steve's getting ready here. Stone Cold Steve Dardengo. He's on the platform. 336 pounds on the bar for Steve Dardengo. I believe this is Sean Hansen giving him a liftoff, who trains at a Victoria Barbell. And it looks good to me. Let's see what the refs have to say. I wow, think that's three whites. Yep, three white lights on that one. Great job for Steve. Great bench. So you can see that everyone's very intently watching the, uh, the meet. All smiles. The place is packed. Another huge shout out again, guys, to K-Fit Conditioning here downtown Victoria. I believe they're on Yates, Yates Street, downtown Victoria. Make sure you get down here. So 851 Yates Street, downtown Victoria, K-Fit Conditioning. And like I said, the owner, Kaylin, is just a beauty. Like, when all this was being set up, I can't imagine how many demands and questions and asks were made of Kaylin and the K-Fit Conditioning crew. And everyone rose to the occasion and they bent over backwards to help this event happen. So very, very big shout out to Kaylin and everyone here at K-Fit Conditioning, all the trainers, we're in here pitching in, moving stuff around, so it was a team effort from everyone here. John McDonald's back on the platform, 347 pounds on the bar, and he's already going. And he's there's no way he's not getting it. Wait for that rack command, and he's got it. Three white lights, he's gotta be pumped about that one. That's almost a 350 bench. That's probably one of those major milestones, you know, like when you first start lifting and bench press, like 135 is, is a milestone, 225 is a huge milestone when you can bench up the two plates, you know, on the bench. And that 315 three is another one because that's three plates, but 350 is a cool bench. We get uh, Josh coming up here, Josh getting ready. Here's Josh. Look and the they call the plan. He's got big old arms. Oh yeah, that didn't smell good. He's ready for this one. Ooh, let's he go. says he's ready. I can't see his attempt weight. Uh, 330, 363 pounds. Wow. On the bar. Wow. Again, we're giving. This is this is a this is a 12.5 kilo jump. That's a big jump. 12.5 kilo jump. That is so smooth. Like it really looks like he could do so much more than that. So very excited, he's, he's very happy with that. So he's pumped about that bench press. Good job, Josh. So next we're gonna have Dalton Gendry. He's coming back up. That was a great third, that, that's his third, I believe. Yeah, third attempt for, for Josh. Oh my God, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, jo Josh has been a fantastic lifter. Like all of his attempts have been perfect. Uh, he really killed it on squats. He killed it on bench press. Um, yeah, just showing just how good he is, really. It's gonna be interesting to see how much he has left in the tank for deadlifts. I feel like he'll have quite a bit, to be honest. Like, all of his bench presses looked easy. Like, he, there wasn't a lot of grinding with them or anything like that, so I feel like he'll do okay. Here's Dalton. He's oh, fighting look at that, so come on. Hard. He's fighting so, oh, it's gone. On. Yeah, so I think so, the, some, sometimes the challenge when you're fighting that hard on a bench press is to maintain the same, uh, the groove. Like you want to, you've, you've trained your body to move in a certain uh, pressing motion. And sometimes it can be a little bit challenging, especially when, it's, when you're fighting that hard to keep in that position. Finley's getting ready for his here. So it looks like they've uh, bumped Malachi up to later in the flight. All right, now we're looking at Finley. Finley's a big bencher here. I mean, 400, yeah, look at 407.8 pounds. That's a lot of red. For the junior. He 
he is wedging himself under the bar look, look. to create that tightness, and he is tight right look now. Look at that. Look at that. Great wow. press. Wow. So much power. So good. That was 407 pounds. Looked easy oh, from wow. a junior that was lifter. Awesome. All right. I'm getting a little jelly over here. I'm getting a little jelly. This is going to be a 450 right here. 452. Huge bench press. Daniel this Kerwin. Dan. And here we go. Kodiak barbell at its finest here. 205 kgs. He's in the zone. I mean, based on how his last bench looked, I feel like he's on track. But this, I mean, this is no, uh, this is no small weight right here. If you're bench pressing over 200 kilos, like that's you're you're no joke, man. I notice he is benching with a belt. A lot of a lot of bench pressers don't use belts, but uh, some of the really really high end lifters like to. Daniel seems to be one of them for this bench. Oh, look, he's got suicide grip. And his buddy Stewart is giving him a handoff. There it goes. Wow. And it's, it's there. So good. Let's go, Dan. Three white lights for Daniel. He's pumped about that. Our live wow. announcer is slightly in disbelief about how easy that lift seemed to look. That was wild. And 200, 205 kgs and to move like that. Very impressive. Yeah. Dan, uh, like, I don't know what the record is, but hopefully he can go for a fourth attempt because if, if, if the record's anywhere close to that, I would go for it. That's right. Zara Naibo here handling for Tim Doyle. Zara Naibo there in the K-Fit conditioning hoodie. Yeah, so now we're into the uh, the big boys. The 110 kilos, 140 is 125. We're into the big boy benchers. And Zara Naibo, who just saw on the uh, on the screen there, also uh, helps run an inclusive uh, group. For powerlifting that focus on focuses on inclusive uh, community members to make sure that they they feel like they belong in powerlifting. There's a lot of cool work there. He's a cool person. So there's her lifter, Tim. Tim. Tim looks calm. He looks very calm. Tim's chilling. Big thumbs up from Zara there. And he's and got to see, as you notice, the thumbs are not in the loops there. And she's wearing the K-Fit hoodie too, hey? Is she uh, part of K-Fit? So Tim's got 192.9 pounds on the bar. Yeah, I feel like this is going to move like a squat. Just super easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was an easy opener for Tim. <laughs> two white so lights, could be, there are two red lights. I believe it, he, I didn't catch, I didn't quite catch what it was. Most likely a missed command. Jump the command. M most likely, I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but that's okay, he'll get it back, that was easy. Good job, you guys. I know you're all drawing to help you right now. Everyone's drawing. We're gonna get beers and food after this. Beers and food. I was like, beers and food after this. Here's Board Mitchell coming up. Got 220 pounds on the bar. And he says he's good. He does not need a lift off. And there it is. He got that one. Three white lights on that one. So I'm going to. I'm curious to see how Antonio does with his bench. I don't know why. It's all from me, though. So Antonio is going to be coming up here pretty soon.
just roll it. Don't worry about it then. Mike McLaughlin's coming up next, 281 pounds on the bar. That's a lot of weight. Sometimes uh, it's easy to overlook a really heavy lift when you have such freakishly heavy lifts alongside you. You know, when someone's beside you benching 400 pounds, it's, a, it's sometimes easy to make light of like 300 pound or 250 pound bench and like that's a significant bench press, good for you. Like For sure. So know, sometimes you can, it's easy to feel overshadowed when you're yeah, sharing when you, the platform with, you know, with, savages. With, with like these that. savages benching 400 plus pounds. So yeah. here's Mike McLaughlin, 281 pounds. He's a master lifter. So he's in the 50 to 54 years young age category. And he is collecting himself. He does not need a lift off. Very slow descent and quick up. Wow, that, that was, was a great bench. Yeah, there he goes. That was awesome. Three white lights on that one. Easy. That was easy work for Mike. Uh, now we got Kyle McKee up. Now I, I'm excited to see Kyle's uh, Kyle's bench here. Again, he's got the mustache power. Fantastic mustache. Yeah. It definitely adds 20 kgs to a to a total. Let's get a, can we get a close up of that mustache? Look, let's have a look at that mustache. That's a fantastic mustache. I mean, there's no better. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, no, Kyle, I think has come from, uh, from the United States to come compete here. I think several, there's several lifters here from the United States. Yeah. And it's very exciting to see international lifters coming to this event. We've seen the world record already. Wow. What a easy lift that was just, for Kyle McGee. He's so technical. 292 pounds. Yeah. Made it look like it wasn't even loaded. Yeah, he's just, he's so technical with his bench press. I've been, bench I've been following him on Instagram for, for quite some time, and his bench press has gotten so good lately. What is his Instagram for those who would like to get, follow his for more mustache if you if you want to see more mustache photos make sure to follow Kyle McKee on Instagram and DM him tell him he has a fantastic mustache it's just underscore Kyle McKee yes yeah, so underscore K Y L E M C K E E Kyle McKee yeah he's a powerlifting coach and for Kodiak yeah, yes, he Barbell is a, he's a coach himself Troy Coleman 308 on the bar Another blacksmith lifter. Very composed, Troy is. Very composed today. Easy bench for Troy. That was uh, 308 flew for him. That was easy work. That was pretty cool. Jeff's Next. coming up. Yeah, Jeff's coming up next here with 142.5 kilos, 314 pounds. He's got three wheels on the bar. Three hundred and fourteen pounds on the bar for Jeff Harwell. He's got the start command, pause, got the press, followed all the commands, look very good technical lift. Three white lights. Jeff. Luka Durkovic all right. is next. Luka. Remember those dungeon strong boys, Celine Dion, on the earbuds there. Taking a whiff of the Ward smelling salts. 
Best looking man in Victoria here. Love that haircut. Does, Lu does Luca not look like Danny McBride? Absolutely. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad he can't hear what we're saying. Hey, Danny McBride's awesome. That was not an insult. Yeah. We love Luca, by the way. He's a fun yeah. lifter to watch. He's such a good lifter. He's so intense and just like Very intense. so focused, so professional. But he's not over the top. You no. know, he's not showboaty, but no. he will celebrate, and it's always for a good cause when he does. Yeah. Luke is one of those guys who's like, he comes in, does the job, does it well, and then leaves everyone looking. <laughs> that weak. was a wonderful bench press. <laughs> that was so that easy. Was easy. That was what a first attempt should look you know, like. It's funny, actually. Uh, I have a funny story to tell, but actually, on the way down here, you know, it's always interesting. Speaking of Instagram shout outs, on the way down here to Victoria, it was really funny because I, uh, I actually had Joe Exotic from the Tiger King ended up liking one of my videos on Instagram. I didn't think it was a real thing. I had to check it out, but it turned out that Joe Exotic is in jail and he's checking out my Instagram, so you should too. So make sure you follow us on Instagram, Evan Porter Media. Follow the Film Factory, K-Fit Conditioning, WRPF, British Columbia. I've also got a YouTube channel if you uh, if you want to check this out on YouTube. That was a that was a good lift. That was a good lift for, for Kyle. And there's Joel, Joel McCain from Blacksmith Fitness, and he is not messing around. That's a huge bench, 397 pounds for Joel McCain. So they're about to call him out to the platform. This is nothing new for him. He's used to the pressure. He's He's been to these meets, countless meets. I believe he coaches a few dozen powerlifters successfully. It's his full-time gig. That's what he does, and it's what he does well. I see Andrew Chichka behind him, another blacksmith fitness goer. And here comes Joel. Got the start command. Joel's gonna press that sucker up. Lightweight, Joel. That's awesome. He made 397 pounds look like 20. Yeah. Good job to Joel. Yeah, that was awesome. And we just want to make another shout out to all these spotters and loaders that are helping load the bar, keep everything going. There's a lot of work going on here. A lot of volunteer work, and people are working very hard. Yeah, you can see Andrew Morgan sure there happens. in the uh, in the flip flops. He's, we, uh, got, we got the peanut gallery in the back there too, Zade <laughs> leading the way with a belly shirt coming from A7. That Andrew Chichka, the crowd favorite. Wow. 407 pounds awesome. on the bar. We're hearing some words of encouragement come out of the, the crowd here. And here's the lift off. And that's no problem for Andrew. And that lift was good for Andrew Chichka. All right. Here's Robin Graham. Robin Graham is being supported by his lifting homies. And the platform's ready for him. And here he comes. On the left-hand side of the platform, one of our spotters here, we got Dave. Dave is one of our photographers for the day as well. Dave from Kodiak Barbell. 
death vibes for Tom. Wow, was so quick. That was so easy. That was wow. so easy for Robin Graham. Wow. Man, these got these big these big boys moving this way. So impressive. It's very impressive. It's very humbling. <laughs> it, it can occasionally be discouraging, to be honest with you. Oh man, no, but it's it's so it should inspire us. It's so cool to see these guys moving, like moving 400 pounds, like like nothing. It's it's one thing to see a video of it on Instagram or something. It's another to see it That's in right. person, right? And here's Joe Fabia coming out. He's got a pretty slick misfit. Misfit Apparel t-shirt on. Joe Fabia, 446 and a half pounds. This is a huge bench press. Joe Fabia is in the 35 to 39 age category. And he has a very slick bench. There's a little bit of incidental contact with yeah, the uprights which is usually okay, but he got red lighted. I believe he jumped the start command, or it could be that the, because the two side judges caught that, maybe yeah. it was the butt off the bench, I'm not too sure. I didn't catch it. Yeah, that's too bad. I, yeah, I thought he had that. So Brian Gifford's coming up next. Brian Gifford is chalking up in preparation for bench press. Oh, I'm excited to see him bench. He is a great lifter. I'm wow. really enjoying watching him lift today. And opening at 452 pounds. So here he is, Brian Gifford. And there is the, the handoff start. Wow. I can't believe my eyes. I cannot believe what we're seeing right like now. Nothing. 451 pound bench press. All right, like nothing. Next bench presser, our biggest bench presser of the weekend, I think, is uh, David Osborne coming up next year. 230 kilos, 507 pounds. It's, I believe this is our first 500 plus bench press today. It, it is. As you saw it here on Evan Porter Media, the Evan Porter Live broadcast brought to you by the Film Factory. Powered by the Film Factory. Wow. 507 pounds, that is... The bench press? Wow. A lot of people cannot deadlift this amount of weight, including kind of myself. <laughs> and this guy is benching it. His belt says Dr. Dave, I was just and he's going to work too. on this bar today. Yeah. He's going to get surgical with his bench press. This really is going to be a big lift. 507 on the bar. And here he is. He's, look, he's looking like he's ready. Very smooth. Very smooth. And there it is. And it's good. If he, did he get the rack? Three white lights. He got it. Wow, that's, a wild that's bench awesome. Press. Wild bench press. You just got to move the mic closer, I think, sometimes. Do I need to move the mic closer? Uh, our, uh, our director, Jeff, is keeping us on track today from the film factory. So if you see me check my ear occasionally, it's because Jeff is whispering my little ear here. Uh, but he's keeping us, uh, he's keeping this event rolling. Uh, Jeff is, you can't really see him, guys, because he's kind of the man behind the scenes, but Jeff switches the, from shot to shot to shot to shot, and uh, Jeff is coordinating with our mobile camera operators. So uh, we're going to get a shot of Jeff so you can see the work that he's doing behind the scenes. There's Jeff right there. Big, big smile and <laughs> wave from Jeff. Jeff. Jeff Myers, president of the film factory, based out of Kelowna. And Jeff and I work together regularly in the studio. So Tim Doyle's up next with his handler, Zara Naibo. Zara's little brother, Thor, has started powerlifting. I believe he started a year or two ago and seems to be doing very well. Thor Naibo. So 
So 192 pounds for Tim Doyle coming up next. And Tim's got to be happy with his performance so far because we've, I believe, so far Tim is lined up for, oh, sorry, I am mistaken. Because he uh, didn't get that first bench press, he will not go for nine for nine, but hopefully we go eight for nine here. So when, when I say nine for nine, I mean nine good attempts at nine lifts. And he did, and I mean, he did complete uh, his last bench press. He just got called, I think. Uh, he got red-lighted for skipping a command or something That's like right. that. Otherwise, oh, no, I think he might have done it again. Oh, no, he's good. He got two whites on two, that two one. Two whites, okay. He got that one. I thought he skipped the rack command it's, again. It, it, he may have, but it, it is a judgment call. So Bort Mitchell's coming up next. He says he wants a handoff. So the platform's ready for Bort, and here he comes. So you can see that on either end of the barbell, there's there are uh, big, strong, angry-looking men ready to catch that thing if something bad happens. Those are your spotters, keeping you safe. Beautiful press, and he definitely didn't need them today. That's awesome. He did not need those today. Well, I wanted to ask you something, uh, Norris, if you could shed some light on the, because uh, some of the equipment that we use in powerlifting is kind of unique to powerlifting, and if you look at those plates, they say rogue on the side of them, those rogue plates. Yep. They're special plates, are they not? They're a little bit different than the plates you'd normally use in the gym. Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, they're all in kilos. So most gyms will have, in Canada, the weight will be in pounds. So that's the first thing is that they're all in kilos. But that's because in powerlifting, that is how you, that's how you calculate weight, is kilos. Uh, second of all, they're, they're, cal they're what's called calibrated plates, which means they have to be within, I believe it's 0.25 of a gram of the weight it says on the plate. So, if it, right. so if it says 45, uh, so if it says 25 kilos on it, but it actually weighs 24.5, it's no, you can't use it. it um, and the thing with plates that you get in the gym and stuff like that, you might have a 45 pound plate, but it only weighs 44 pounds. Um, where these are weighed, calibrated to a specific weight, uh, and if they're chipped, if they're damaged, um, they might not be used in a competition because they're not the weight exactly that it says on there. That's right. And that's so important because when it comes to breaking records and stuff like that, you can break records by half a kilo, one kilo, and so that's, those little weights make a big difference. So. Um, it's a high standard. It's a very high very standard. Very high standards for and the equipment here. Exactly, and so Rogue, has calibrated plates, um, and Rogue is probably one of the best companies to get powerlifting equipment, gym apparel. It's so heavy duty. These Rogue plates will last forever. Like mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. And I They're have seen them many times in yeah. many competitions. Well, and a, a huge shout out actually on that note because I believe that most of these plates have come and been donated for use by uh, by Laura, who runs Van Isle Strength up in Duncan, just a little bit further north than us up the island. Yeah, I believe this Rogue's uh, combo rack that they're using right now uh, is also donated by Laura for the for the competition. That's right, it is. So it's a it's a community of people that have come together, that have donated their time, their uh, equipment, a lot of a lot of a fi uh, financial assistance as well to make these events possible. So Mike did not get that lift there. He skipped the rack command, uh, and so did not get the lift, unfortunately. And just to make a couple of points here quickly, um, this uh, these events are not uh, made, they're not possible without sponsorship. But uh, just to, in relation to our own stream here at the moment, at this broadcast, uh, it's not possible for us to continue giving you broadcasts of this quality and, and like this without more support from sponsorship. So we've actually built a bunch of different kind of uh, sponsorship packages where we can play your ads on the screen, product placement like the Rain Energy drinks we're drinking today, and lots of other options here that if you want to sponsor this broadcast and get your brand out there and seen by everybody that's in this sport, make sure that you reach out to us. You can do that through Instagram on Evan Porter Media, or you can send me an email at evan at evanportermedia.com. Here's Kyle McKee crushing this 319 pound bench nice. press. That was a great bench. 320 pound bench press, that was awesome. 
was a great bench press. But yeah, like we were saying, if you're interested in sponsoring this broadcast, make sure you reach out because we're looking for more people to help us deliver this to more people and more places and, and make this sport grow. It's not going to happen without productions like this. Uh, we won't see the growth that, that we all want to see. And that's kind of the cool thing too is like as these events go on, you meet more and more people that have different businesses within this industry and everyone kind of works together to make it possible. So Troy Coleman's back on the platform here, 325 pounds on the bar. He's getting a quick lift off here. I think maybe from Cam. Yeah, that's right, Cam, Blacksmith Fitness. A solid press. Awesome. That was easy. Yeah, very good bench press. Three white lights on that guy. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy to see the Blacksmith crew is doing really well. I don't think we've seen any... Did we ever hear of what happened with uh, Malachi? Malachi uh, maybe I'm assuming he's not. I'm assuming he's not coming back. I don't, he never came back for his third, mm -hmm. um, so I think he might have uh, pulled out of the competition. He, he may have become injured through his squats. Unfortunately, yeah. it does happen. His it, last squat was, was a, a grinder. Was a pretty grindy squat. I don't think he got. Did, I don't think he got his last squat either. No, I, I don't think so. I don't think he got it. I think he had to be saved by the spotters. So, so it's too bad because we want to see more of him. And we want to see more. He's a really good lifter. Um, uh, we watched him compete in, in Victoria, I believe, a year or two ago. Uh, his dad, Jason, was also competing. and um, So it's too bad that he... And his sister. And his sister, yeah. Very strong family. Jeff Harwell is stepping up here. 336 pounds. getting himself ready here. Now normally what they, yeah, so they've just asked him to step off the platform. You are not allowed to step onto the platform and then adjust your equipment. You have to be ready to go. Your wrist wraps, your belt, all that stuff has to be in place before you step onto the platform. So we did see the side uh, referee ask him to just step off for a moment. So he was doing what he needed to do. So here is the, the unrack for Jeff. Beautiful. And that's beautiful. 336 pound bench press, successful. Three white lights for Jeff. Yeah, that was a beautiful bench press. Like he's, a, yeah, he, Jeff is such a good bench presser. And here comes Luca. Luca's a great bench presser. Luca is just an overall savage lifter. And there's that Ward smelling salts again. Gonna hit him like a horse. He's holding it. He's holding it perfectly there to get goes. that product placement. Get in a there. good whiff of that, Luca. Yeah. And he loves that. I lo he loves that. He says that. he loves yeah. it. He wants some more. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's awesome. The Celine Dion comes out. The wrist wrap goes on, and we're ready to rock and roll. We got a clip that send it to Patrick. Yeah. He's got a back slap. Just a little. That's a friendly form of encouragement. That is not. That's not abuse. So Luca's getting his hand position here. He's then gonna slide down the bench and he's gonna dig his shoulders into that bench and get rock solid. See the arch? You can see right through his back there. You can see the other side of the bench, but his butt stays on that bench. Very, very important this butt stays on the bench. Then there's that wow. bar. It looks good to me. Three white lights, 358 awesome. pounds. This is a three white light bench press for Luca. Dungeon strong right there. Best looking, best looking guy in the powerlifting meet there with that haircut. I love it. Kyle Gordon's coming up next with 374 pounds. 374.8, almost 375. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And here he is. The crowd goes wild. I'm not sure if it's for Kyle or because someone turned the AC on in here. Kyle Gordon, 375 pounds on the bar. Butter. Awesome. Like butter. I mean, that was just a clinic on bench press right there. This very casual looking bench. He just got in there, did what he had to do, and left. And Joel is coming up from Blacksmith Fitness. Joel McCain is back. 
the whole Joe McCain posse oh. is there. The whole 190 crew. kgs, 419 pounds. I was talking to Joel the other week, and I asked him what his goals were, and he said the only goal I have is 2,000. He said everything else is just part of the part of the journey. Don't care about anything else. 2,000 total. That's what he wants. That's awesome. And that's what he's working towards. And like we were talking about, like some people go in wanting to hit specific numbers on on lifts. Some people are more focused on the total, and you know, they don't care what they squat, bench, or deadlift, so long as it adds up to the total that they want. So, people come in with different goals, different strategies, and um, I mean, a two, and a, honestly, a 2,000 pound total at uh, at 110 kgs is is significant. That's that's really good. That would be awesome. That's like world class. I think Joel is. Gonna, he's going to get there, and I think he already is world-class. There he is. There it is, three white lights. So that's successful. Very methodical in all of his lifts. Like, all of his bench pressing, everything's very technically sound. I mean, not everyone's perfect all the time. No one can be perfect all the time with everything. Something, sometimes things go wrong. But he, he trains so, so, so diligently, so... It's no wonder he's so successful at what he does. Andrew Chichka getting ready to come out there. Andrew Chichka is a great bench presser, too. What does he have on the bar? 435 pounds. The platform is now ready. They're calling him out. Was, it, uh, was Andrew the one that uh, hurt his leg in Victoria or hurt his hip in Victoria and still bench press but with a block under his leg? Was it Cam? I can't I, One of them, yeah. One of the other, Norris has just brought up a point that last time we saw An Andrew lift, he was injured and kept lifting through the injury. 435 pounds on the bar. And there is the press wow. command. I love to see it. He's and so casual about a 430. Yeah, I believe that was a successful lift for him. Yeah, he is so casual about a 435 so pound bench press. He wants a 500 pound bench, but it'll come. Yeah, I don't think a 500-pound bench is going to happen today, but... Not today. Maybe. We'll see what he puts in there for a, for a third attempt. It doesn't look like it. He went 205. 205. Two, so that's about a... I think that's about a 450 bench press. So Andrew Chichka, the next time you see him, will be attempting a 450-pound, roughly, pound bench press. I don't have the chart in front of me. It's 200 and... 205 kgs is what Andrew Chichka wants next time he's out here. And we're back over here. Another couple of cool shout outs too, just to remind you guys. True North Sportswear, Cerberus is in here. I believe we have a couple of more clothing brands here. Don't, don't forget Death Vibes. We've got Kodiak Barbell. It's got tons of cool clothes and stuff back there, too, on their shelving. And so you got, if you're in the meet or if you're around the city, check these guys out. They have very cool apparel, really cool designs. A lot of this stuff they design themselves as well. And it's, it's great to see more sponsors getting involved with powerlifting, too. Um, there, there's so many sponsors for this, uh, for this they're competition. They're coming out all over the place. Which is awesome because... Not only can you put on a bigger, better event, but more prize money for the athletes and stuff like that. And, you know, prize money is what brings in some of those big lifters. Those That's big, right. like the ones setting world records and stuff like that. If they know there's a thousand, two thousand bucks in prize money on the table, you know. They're coming. They're coming. So Robin Grahams, he's on the bench right now. He's, he's getting solid here. He looks like he, see that wiggle back and forth as he's getting the shoulder blades set where he wants it before he takes that bar off the rack and, that, and that's why wow and that's why 462 pounds successful successful bench press there that was Dude. an awesome bench so that's pretty wild we're seeing some big lifts here looks like we got ryan ryan gifford is ready Brian Gifford is going to get called out here in a second. And there he comes. All right. 250 kilos, 474 pounds. So 
we're going to see some big numbers. Man, just everything Brian does is big, man. His squat is big. His bench is big. I'm excited to see him deadlift after this. Great bench by Brian wow. Gifford. And he is an open, tested athlete. Yeah, that's awesome. So David Osborne's coming out here next. David Osborne is asking for 529 pounds on this bench press. Like I said, a lot of people can't deadlift this, and he's going to step up to the plate and bench press this sucker. Look, look at the face of look at the face of David there. He is he's he, ready. He wants this. He's ready to go. He says, "Let's go. Let me at it. Let's go." He says. He look, he looks like a real life Viking. Yeah, because, you don't want to mess around with this no. guy. I would not stand between him and anything. And you know what's really cool actually about David is David's been cheering on all the other athletes behind the stage here. He's been getting the crowd to cheer louder for people and like he's just such a supporter of other athletes. You know, people he's competing against, he wants them to do well. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about powerlifting. Great sportsmanship. Yeah. Okay, so he's getting some good hype up here from the platform crew here is hyping him up. Head referee says start. Oh my goodness, look at that. Wow. He got three awesome bench. He's pumped about that. He is lit up about that one. Wow. Love that. That was a huge bench press. Wow, for him. he was excited for yeah. that. What is that, 530 or something? Yeah, that's crazy. Well, that was uh, 240. Yeah, 530 pound bench press. Tim. That was a very refreshing drink of this rain energy I just had. I don't rain energy. White gummy bear is the flavor. What do you think about yours, Norris? Well, mine is empty. I'm, I could have I could have bought more. There you go. Oh, nice. We got another one for you. Guys, we're having a great time covering this event, and I want everyone out there who's watching, if you want us to come to your event, make sure you reach out and let your meet directors know that you want the Evan Porter Live broadcast with the Film Factory to come and capture your event, because we will. We can, we're going anywhere in Canada. We're doing provincials. We're doing nationals. I got to tell you, we want higher than that. So let's see what happens here going forward. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Evan Porter Media, the Film Factory. And he's chalked up. Tim's chalked up. He's coming out. All right, we're, we're going into a third attempts here on bench press. This is the last the last round of bench here. And then uh, after this flight, we'll be going into uh, deadlifts. Our head ref, Jenny, Jenny McMaster, is giving the commands here. He followed all the commands. We got Board Mitchell coming up here next. He's ready. He's that. He, now that's a mean mug if I ever saw one into that camera. Have a look oh at that. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's ready for this. This is his third attempt on bench. This is where you leave it all on, on the line here. He's finding his hand position. And you can see the chalk kind of coming off that bar now. It's been handled by a lot of people. He's very tight. That's sunk in a ways. I don't know if they're going to call him on heaving for this or not. No, that was a good. Oh, it does no. look like he may have gotten it. I'm not sure if that was heaving or not, but also you need to keep in mind when bench pressing, when you bring that bar down to your chest, it can touch the chest, but you can't let that sink in. So it may or may not be what happened here. I didn't hear what the referees called him on, but you can't let the bar heave into your body and then push it up. It was a, It might have been borderline, but where yeah. it was, both the side refs 
I'm Maybe not, it was his feet or his butt coming off the bench. I'm not sure if that's a rule in uh, WRPF or not. I haven't spent enough time around WRPF. I know in some federations you can sink it into your chest. Mm -hmm. The rule with, with other federations that, that I've worked with, uh, the bar just has to come to a complete stop, but it can sink into mm -hmm. your chest. Um, so I wonder, yeah, I wonder what the call was on that. I wonder, I wonder if he skipped the press command or didn't... Uh, it must have been, well, something wasn't right. They didn't like it. Here's Antonio, 281 pounds on the bar. And th this is a long event. You have to realize that uh, these referees are staring, and they're looking for very specific things all day long. It takes a lot of concentration and effort to maintain that, that level of attentiveness that's required for good uh, yeah. officiating. I can speak to that. It, it takes so much focus all day uh, because you're constantly looking for like small things and it's really easy to kind of doze off mentally mm -hmm. um, so you really have to stay focused all day and uh, most federations do a really good job of kind of rotating uh, referees around um, kind of like what they do with lifeguards it's the same thing they rotate lifeguards so that lifeguards are getting a break every you know 15 20 minutes um, and you know some federations kind of try to do the same thing so you do a flight which is might be half an hour to an hour and then you rotate off and you do a job that's a little bit less uh, so you have to be so focused so um, I have been to some other events with uh, with other other federations that uh, at the national level they have another separate group of referees at a, a specific table called the jury table so uh, you'll have your main referees that are running the event on the platform but if there's um, the jury table can overturn any decision that happens on the platform. So here we go, Mike McLaughlin, 297 pounds, and he takes care of business. No worries there for Mike. Fantastic, he's happy with that. The crowd liked it. You know, you gotta be happy when you hit the platform and hit a good lift like that and everyone in the crowd cheers you on. I mean, that's gotta be fun. Now I know uh, even Norris, you could probably give us a little bit of uh, information on the tra the differences in training between like strongman and powerlifting. Oh yeah, well I mean, strongman you have to be so not just strong, but you have to be fit. You have to be able to like you have to be able to basically like run and stuff like that. And you're it's there's a lot more cardio involved with strongman competitions because. Powerlifting, you're basically going for one rep maxes constantly, but strongman, a lot of the time you're going for max reps. Speed and agility and all exactly. that, right? Exactly, so. Kyle McKee, 341. Yeah. Kyle hit a nice uh, bench press White lights there. for the mustache musketeer. That was awesome. That was a great lift. That was a great lift. Him and uh, his coach Stu, they were pretty pleased about that. Troy Coleman up next. He's getting it ready, he's got the wrist wraps on. He's chalking up. You gotta get those hands ready. You do not want this bar to slip out of your hands. With the, the amount of pressure that sometimes this weight creates too, and a bit of a downward and outwards motion, your hands can slide up the bar if they're not, if they're not chalked and you don't have good knurling on that bar, it can slide up the bar and you don't want that because it gives you a wider grip and you can have a, you can have a negative experience. Which it doesn't look like that's gonna happen with him. There's Troy, he's looking real strong. Three white lights for Troy. Nice. Some interesting tattoo work here in the crowd. Big fan of tattoo work myself. I almost tattooed my face the other day. I, I ran into a chair. <laughs> Wait, what? I ran into a chair. It's a story for another live broadcast. Oh, you almost tattooed your, oh, I see. <laughs> Jeff Harwell getting ready to come out. And they say the platform is ready. Jenny McMaster's head rep position. She's getting ready to call that start command. She's got her hands in the air. She's, she's getting ready to say it. So Jeff's gonna get into position and then she's gonna tell him to start. Remember, he can't start until she says to. So we kind of have the top brass here on the, the judging committee right now for the WRPF Federation.
unfortunately, Jeff didn't have uh, that in him here today. It's a little bit too much. He, he hit that sticking point, and that's kind of where that died for him. But yeah, the uh, the top brass is on the referees here. We've got Kay, Kay Miller in the front head ref here. We've got Caroline on the left-hand side and doing the judge, side judging. She's one of the co-presidents. and. We got Luca, the best looking man alive. He's getting those wrist wraps going. I mean, you can, man, you can just see it in Luca's eyes. Like, he's not messing around. No. I get, I guarantee he's going to get this bench and he's going to have a good celebration. Yep. Third bench, yeah. He's getting, he's getting himself ready for this. Well, and what's his bench press here? 363 pounds. That's a heavy bench. Yeah. Yeah, it's no joke. Again, it, it is sometimes easy to to feel like you get overshadowed when you have people bench pressing 500 and five, you know, plus. It's pretty wild, but well, Come you on, can't, Luca. 363 pounds is a heavy wow. bench. And the three whites. Luca, Luca, he got three whites. He's happy about that. He's nodding. Oh, yeah. That was a good celebration right there. Some good nodding. Yeah. He liked that one. Man, uh, that was a... Uh, that was that was a that was a really good grind for bench. That was a good grind for bench. Yeah. yeah. There was no downward motion. You could see he's fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. No. I think sometimes it's easy to give up when it starts to feel hard. Yeah. And then so it, you really need to just stick with it. Some especially when you're in that PR territory. Yeah. And you're pushing weight that you've never pushed before, and so you just have to stay with the bar and keep pushing as hard as you can. And well, and that's not common for Luca. Like Luca's mm -hmm. a pretty butter lifter. Like he's he's pretty smooth. Yep. So having that grind on bench was a little bit like he's unlike pushing. him. I feel like, but still nailed it. Pushing got very the hard. Lift. Yeah. He's got all three white lights, so there's no question. Mm -hmm. Just another huge shout out to Laura Allen, Laura Allen of Van Isle Strength who trains uh, at a Duncan up a little bit further north on the coast, but Laura brought in her combo rack, which is being used on the platform right now for bench press. Um, and bringing all that weight, that's a lot of weight to move around the island. And oh, I've yeah. seen Laura pack those weights into a U-Haul truck and drive that all over the country. So huge shout out to Laura for helping make this event possible and for just volunteering her time so much. I know she's been working very closely with Kay uh, Kay Miller, the event, uh, our meet director today. So the two of them are making a knockout combination here. Love to see them leading the way in this sport. And here's Joel back on the platform, 424 pounds, a massive bench press for Joel. 192.5 kilograms. And Cam, Cam is giving him a lift off here. Cam also is a trainer at Blacksmith. He's got it. He's got it. Nice, Joel. There it is. That's going to be a good That's lift. That's a good <laughs> lift for him. Now, Joel's going to be happy with that. It looks like he's happy with that one. Yeah, I mean, he should be really happy with that. 192.5 kilos. That's a heavy bench. That's a heavy bench. He's doing a great job this meet. He's got athletes that are here uh, doing well. He himself is here doing well. Yeah, he should um, be pretty pleased. I know I mean, his significant other Marina is around here. She's also volunteering. And again, it's like the community, right? You've got husbands, wives, and aunts and uncles, and brothers and sisters, and dads and moms and grandparents. And everyone is here pitching and trying to make this possible. And, and here comes the Chinch. 451.9 on the bar. 452 pounds on a bench press. For Andrew Chichka, who is also adorned with fantastic tattoos. There it is, the press come in. Come on, Andrew. We've got that left side coming oh, up. First. And there it is. His butt might have come off the bench. Oh, no, he's got good. it. He's pumped about that. He's pumped about that. Oh yeah, the boys are celebrating in the back there. I don't know oh, if you can hear them, but they are excited he, he about that very, one. He was very happy yeah. about that, Ben. I love to see that, everybody celebrating. The whole Blacksmith crew down there jumping for joy, so I guess that was a great bench press for Andrew Chichka. I was worried, even from- like from Cam the, Bennett. I was worried that his butt had come off the bench there, because 
Mm -hmm. He was grinding pretty hard there, and I did see his hips shifting around a little bit. Sometimes when you see that leg drive kick in, too, it looks like the butt might come off the bench. But that's why the referees have to be that close, because so long as that their butt is just on in contact with it, they're still good. So Joe Fabia came running out to the platform. Yeah, to hit this 468-pound bench he's, press. He's ready to go. He's not screwing around. He's not messing around. He's ready. You know, that's a lot of weight. This is a 468-pound bench press. Joe Fabia threw up and 468 pounds like it was nothing. Look at that. Three, Three white lights. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's happy about that. He's celebrating a bit there. And his partner follows him back in behind the platform to celebrate that one that's great i love to see that again just to see that that relationships here that that uh, they share the experience of these powerlifting events and they they all love being here like i said i've never seen joe favia at a meet without his partner she is always at his side so it's got to feel great to have somebody like that cheering you on all the time for sure Robin Graham out here with a 474 pound bench press in the men's open, 35 to 39 age category. And I think Robin may celebrate if he hits this lift. Wow. Yeah. Oh, he's stuck. Oh, he's not gonna make it today. Not today. Uh, Unfortunately, it wasn't quite there, almost. That's too uh, bad. Maybe next time we see him out, he'll have that. That was close. Like, he almost had that. It was just like, you know, he just got to that sticking point and just couldn't push through it, unfortunately. That's right. All right, so this next bench coming up, Brian. Or, uh, yeah, Brian. 222.5 kilos. That's 490 pounds. We're 10 pounds shy of 500 pounds. Wow. Mattress. It's unbelievable to see this match weight being pressed. Everything Brian does is big. Yeah, like, that's right. Brian the big dog. He's he's so far sitting at a 920 pound total. Uh, if you include if he assuming he gets his first deadlift. Our live announcer is mind blown at the moment watching the ease of this bench. Oh. oh. It looked like he had that. It came up a few inches and stopped. That's a very close, very close bench press for, for him. Yeah. But you know what? If you're going to miss one, it, it, it better be the third. You'll want it to be the third. Yeah. And you know what? If you don't miss one every once in a while, it's like, you know, like, are you really trying? Yeah, you, you, you got to, you know. Like, there's something to be said for nine for nine, but if you don't miss one every once in a while, it's kind of like, well, I think you should be sending it a little bit harder. Exactly. So it's okay, you know. You can't win them all, all the time. All right. David coming up here with the biggest bench press of the day, 245 kgs. Four, that is 540 pounds on the bar. That is David just, Osborne, 540 pound bench that press. That is a world class bench press. Just the, And the crowd loves it. The crowd wants to see it. And the crowd is going wild. The crowd is getting 540 loud. pounds. The crowd wants to see it happen. Let's go, David Osborne. Wow. Follow us on Instagram, Evan Porter Media, and the Film Factory. David Osborne wow. is getting a lift right. off for this nice one. Nice handoff. I can see him vibrating with intensity right now. Very. There it is. He gets the press command. And oh. It's not there. It just wasn't there. Wasn't there today. And big handshake from David Osborne, quite a sportsman. I'm speaking with Laura Allen, one of the meet directors with WRPF. And as I've, I've given her a few shout outs today, she owns and runs Van Isle Strength up in Duncan, which is just a little bit further north on the island. She's donated a ton of her weights and weight trees and the equipment here and so much of her time and money to be here to help this event happen. Uh, but Laura also has a couple of cool events that are coming up. And so I want to ask Laura about what event she has coming up and when that's going to be and where it is so that you guys know about it. 
Yeah, so I've actually got two events coming up. I've got a meet in uh, Surrey, BC uh, at the uh, Cloverdale Fair, Fairgrounds. It's going to be June 17th. I'm going to be running a double platform. We're going to be putting uh, drug tested competitors on one platform. We're going to be putting untested competitors on another platform running simultaneously. I also have another meet coming up in October the 7th um, in Duncan, British Columbia. And uh, we were talking about volunteerism in general here at the event and talking about spotters and loaders and stuff. Can you give me uh, what your perception is on how important volunteers are at these events and what would you like to see more of at these events for volunteers? Yeah, I, uh, I think the volunteers are probably the most important aspect of it. Uh, a lot of people, they don't actually, um, all the work that goes into setting, uh, setting up these meets, running the meets, moving the equipment, organizing everything, um, and then loading the truck back up and unloading it. Uh, so having volunteers to help do things like loading the truck or unloading the truck, um, spotting and loading on the platform is really important. Uh, we always want to keep make sure that the lifters are safe. We actually are, uh, for liability reasons, we're not allowed to um, run a meet without five spotters and loaders. So if we don't get enough spotters and loaders, these guys can't compete at all. And so if someone's out there and they're, they're watching this live, they love what they're seeing, they want to become a part of this, where do they go so they can volunteer? Where do they go to find out more about this sport and how they can get involved? Yeah, so they can contact, um, you know, WRPF Canada. Uh, they can email uh, either one of the presidents. They can get them in the uh, right direction towards who to talk to. Uh, you can uh, get in touch with meet directors or the BC representative, which is Kayla Miller. Uh, and then, or you can do it for any province, get in touch with their representative. And they'll let you know what meets are happening, when. Uh, you can also just follow any of, any of the social media, pay attention to when the meets are happening. Um, if you know that you're not busy, you know, we always appreciate the help, uh, even if you just, you know, come and, 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 you know, help set up banners or uh, anything like that. We're always looking for any strong people and people that are just helping with organizing in general. Should people have a certain level of experience before they sign up for a powerlifting meet or like who is powerlifting for in general? Oh, well, powerlifting is definitely for everybody. Um, you know, I see... People of all ages, genders, and uh, you know, different skill levels all the time. Um, people getting into powerlifting in their 60s. Uh, people getting into powerlifting at the age of 13, 15 years old. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, requirement for anybody to compete. Uh, I think it it's more or less just you know, come out, give it a try. I do suggest you know, um, if you don't know much about uh, you know the requirements for the lifts, like. Uh, how, what, what qualifies you and disqualifies you from getting a lift, you know, get in touch with um, somebody who's a powerlifting coach or um, a referee and, and just double check and make sure that you're not going to come here um, and n get disqualified. It's the only thing that I would have to say. And uh, I've personally been to several of Laura's meets. She has multiple lifters that she coaches that come to these events. And so, uh, and they've, they've all performed very well and everyone speaks very highly of you. Would, uh, where would someone go if they want to train with you? How do they get in touch with you? Uh, they can get a hold of me on my website, uh, vanislestrength.ca. Uh, they can get a hold of me on my Instagram, uh, which is vanislestrength. Uh, or they can get a hold of me on my personal Instagram, just Laura Powerless. Laura, thank you so much for everything that you do. Thanks for the interview. I'm going to go back to you for a hot minute, Jeff, until we find our next victim for the camera. My name is Zad Amir. Uh, we're at Blacksmith Fitness, and I've probably been lifting about like through two to three years. I mean, powerlifting only like eight months, maybe six months. So it started in like, I'd say grade 10 when I was like 16-ish. We had this uh, strength and conditioning course. It was a bit athletic at the time, you know, I thought it would be strong, whatever. I can lift literally like zero weight. Like compared to everyone in the room, nothing. Like it was it was bad. Like, <laughs> like I don't want to be bad at something, you know? Like worked my butt off um, and then I came back and it was like the first day of school because like all COVID stuff. Um, everyone was like, wait, what happened? Like my strength and conditioning coaches, they were really impressed. Like, I, like a really feel good moment was when um, one of my coaches, like his deadlift gear was like four or five at the time, which is a lot. Uh, like at that time, started working hard, working hard, and then on literally the last day of school, the, like the last training session, I hit four or five in front of them, and like all the coaches, and it just felt really good. So I figured out powerlifting might be the move. Like later on, a year later, um, I started taking it a lot more serious. I joined 
Blacksmith Fitness, Cole took me under in, tweaked everything. And now I'm gonna be competing for my first meet. Kodiak Clash, it's in Victoria. I mean, I'm pretty excited, pretty pumped. Everyone here, like, I mean, everyone here is like 10 years old. I mean, they're, they're a bit older than me, okay? But <laughs> I'm 19 young, so it's like, it's hard to connect with someone that's a lot older than you, but here, powerlifting's there. So anytime, like, everyone's trying to help me out, everyone's trying to improve me. They always see I'm trying to work, so always try to give me war work, fix my technique. I get all different types of, like, uh, views, how to do things from so many different people. And it's extremely helpful here, especially Cole. Um, he's my coach and he's tweaked, like he's stayed with me. He's just so, Blackstone's done this big, big help, <laughs> like huge help here. Like Eddie Hall, the strongman, he's very inspiring to me because he, his main thing is just hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. And I feel like I can really connect him with that. I feel like hard work always pays off and hard work's what you really need. This is a bit frightening, but the way I look at it is like, this is like, this is where it starts. Like this is, this is my first one, I'm gonna get into it. And a success for me is like, I want at least like a total of 1,150 pounds, um, and so I think I can I can do that. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Evan here. I'm about to talk to the head coach of strength and conditioning at Kodiak Barbell, Stuart Locke, I believe. Yep. So thanks so much for your time. I've noticed you're all over the platform. You're helping out with. You have lifters that yep. are in this event, spotting and loading all that stuff. Tell us about your lifters that are here and how are they doing? They're doing really well. So uh, I have I have uh, six guys that I'm responsible for today. Uh, everyone is either uh, five for six or six for six. Um, you know, everyone's done really, really well. You know, uh, one of our, oh, two of our coaches that we actually employ are competing as well. So uh, Dan Kerman and uh, Kyle McKee. He's killing it too, both of them. They're both doing exceptionally well. You know, uh, 10 weeks ago, Dan was told by uh, base doctors, because he's in the Air Force, that he wasn't gonna be able to squat again because he had a back injury. And they're like, yeah, you're done squatting, dude. And he squatted 705 today, so. We saw. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're both doing exceptionally well. Everyone's having a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, really good crew here. I know that uh, in powerlifting, there's a misconception that it's very dangerous for your back. Yeah. And as long as you're training properly, you have good coaching, et cetera, and you're 100%. doing things right, you're safe. But um, do you think that his powerlifting training has helped him recover that back injury? Because I know like Westside Barbell, Louis Simmons were super hardcore about reverse hypers and yep. stuff like that. Is there anything that he incorporated into his training that helped him recover from that back injury? Um, for him, it was just us uh, being really conscious of training volume and alternating between squats and deadlifts as opposed to having both of those occur in the same training week. Um, but like I always tell people, like there's nothing more dangerous than being weak. So it's like, if you're strong and you can back up, then we can figure it out. But if you're just frail and weak, you're gonna have a really long road to recovery. What's your kind of perspective on the strength community? So I think we've been really, really lucky with the culture that we've been able to build through Kodiak and especially now through WRPF British Columbia. We've had an exceptional group of lifters come in, help us out, you know, support us. And then just, I think, you know, what it comes down to is in every sport, there's going to be bad actors. There's going to be people that you don't necessarily get along with. But, you know, if we as a community and as a company can just make powerlifting a little bit better for everyone, you know, have people who are coming in, get them excited about the sport, even if they're nervous or worried, that's the best thing that we can do. And if, and if more people took it upon themselves for that to do that, I think powerlifting in general would be a lot better. Um, but I think, you know, we are on a huge upswing in terms of positivity in powerlifting. It's not really the sport of misfits anymore. And I love to see it. Where could someone reach out to find you? If they're interested in, 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 uh, in your coaching, yep. um, what, would, uh, what would they do? Yep, so you can email me at stew uh, at kodiakbarbell.com or you can find me on Instagram at stew underscore Kodiak Barbell. Thanks so much for your time, Stu. And it. we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, man. Back to you, Jeff. I, I, I try my best, you know, <laughs> I try my best. I was like, it was so intimate in my ear. Like, it, it rattled into, like, my nervous system. At this gym, I've met tons of people over the time. I've seen people start off super shy, timid, and then they're going to meets and they're just crushing it. So those relationships I've, I've, I've grown with, I view them like family. Going to meets, uh, you meet tons of really cool, strong people that look real scary, and then, you know, just cheer them on. And, and then you see them in the next me, the next me, the next me, and then you're just you're warming up in the background. It's it's a weird kind of family dynamic I find. I mean, everybody that I've seen from my first meet to the meets now, it's like a family reunion every single time. There's there's athletes around that have that have been injured and you know you could barely walk and are hitting deadlift PRs. You you um, you see like special low occasionally, and when you see special low athletes, like they train here sometimes, and man, do they inspire you when you're having a rough day. See you know. A cool guy with Down syndrome just deadlifting, just loving the sport. You know, like, 
takes everything negative away. So, I mean, honestly, anybody who's just striving and going on and pushing themselves inspires me. It, it, Every person I see at the gym at a meet inspires me. So, like I said, it is it is a little bit scary from the outside looking in, but once you're in there, the biggest scariest looking people accept you. And and I mean, we just see all these young athletes, these junior athletes, hitting ridiculous records. Like they're just, they're coming in waves of people just, and they're taking over this sport. And I'm super excited to see what's going to happen. I'd love to hit a 500 pound bench press and you know a 650 squat, and a 660 deadlift. I'd love those sort of things. But for me, it's just it's just being better than I did at my last meet. Um, you know, I've dealt with injuries here and there, so it's, as long as I can do better than what I did in my last meet, I'm happy with that. I, so, just be better than, than I was last meet. It's like family. Like, you, I, lo I love training here, man. It, I, I can go to other gyms and it's just not the same. You, you've got a f real family dynamic here. Yeah. Watch me live on Evan Porter Media. My name is Troy Benoit. Uh, We're at Blacksmith Fitness. I've been training here for about two and a half years with a 10-year CrossFit background. Coming into the gym, I actually never wanted to compete. Um, it was just to sort of follow my wife, still getting the opportunity to train with her. She was she was really the, the driving factor or catalyst behind me switching into the powerlifting world. Uh, there's some money on the line between us for some bragging rights in the house. So I did a meet last year. The meets for me are so just turned up to 11 every single time. And I think that's the coolest thing is that we get to just have that full day of power and have that full day of raw energy. And you leave, whether you're a spectator or an athlete, absolutely wiped, but it's the coolest way to be. And I've played sports all my life. I mean, that's been the, the foundation that I've sort of built my life on is always being an athlete, always having the opportunity to train. I had a, a major knee reconstruction in 2012. And I was about 330 pounds at the time, uh, body weight, and really needed to make that shift. People that we've met within the strength community have been incredible. You know, everybody's humble, everybody is raw, and so full of emotion and so full of passion for what they do. The culture at Blacksmith is one where everybody's included. Everybody is pushed to the, the limit as far as what they are able to do. Um, but in a way that is so tailored to each individual athlete and it gives them the opportunity to show themselves that they can do way more than they ever thought possible and I think that's the coolest thing is everybody here gets the opportunity to be individualized while being a part of a bigger team. Uh, you have to follow Evan Porter Media and he's doing a phenomenal job of making sure that we're seen. Um, first deadlift of the day at 107.5 kilos, 237 pounds. And there is Adley there looking stoic ready to come out here and, <laughs> and the platform is the ready. The platform crew is being summoned to the platform. Oh, platform crew. I thought that was platform ready. I misheard that. All right, big cheers for Adley. Oh yeah, great first attempt. Now I don't know if you've looked much at the uh, the equipment that they're using there, Evan, but they're using uh, I believe that's Laura's Kabuki deadlift bar. That's I believe it is. And it is a gnarly bar. Like the knurling on it is so aggressive. Um, but it's a fantastic barbell. Like it's a fantastic deadlift bar. The kabuki bars are preferable bars, I think, for people to be lifting on, especially for the deadlift because of the flex in them. And yeah, I think kabuki, like kabuki in general, makes some of the best barbells in the world, in my opinion. Um, the the they are on the they are on the pricier side, but they're definitely some of the best bars. There's Eileen with a good first attempt there. So John McLaughlin's coming back out here. 286 pounds for his first attempt on deadlift. Sorry, Joanne McLaughlin. Joanne McLaughlin. 
Joanne's pulling 286 and a half. She's. Oh yeah, that's uh, a good, nice easy pull for Joanne. That was a great. I think. That was a good opener for Joanne. Yeah, Joanne has great. That was great deadlift form. And this is that kind of. This is these are the kind of lifts that really. Um, if you're not familiar with the sport, and you're not familiar with the, the mechanics of it. This is the one that looks like you're going to get injured doing. Uh, but to be honest with you, there is a, it's very safe to do. You have a lot more likelihood of being injured playing one of our other mainstream sports because of how dynamic the sports are. This one's very technical. People are working with coaches and trainers and learning how to lift things the right way. And the body's designed to do this. We're just teaching people how to do it right and seeing who can do it the best on the platform. Yeah, I mean, deadlifts are deadlifts are are really good for you. And I think uh, I think Stu, Stu said it really good. It's better to be injured and strong than uh, than w injured and weak. That's right. And uh, deadlifts, dead, like think about how often you deadlift throughout your day without realizing it. It's just ba it's basically just bending over, picking stuff up. Uh, so why not be really strong at it? Well, what are they? Uh, I think we may have had a misload on the platform, so they're just going to adjust that. Um, so Marissa has been asked just to come off there for a second. There seems to be some confusion on the platform here. We do have a couple of new spotters and loaders on the platform, so I think we're just going over a couple of uh, quick points with the newer spotters and loaders, and we'll get right back to lifting here. So here we go. She's back out. And she wants you to know she's going to send it here. 286 pounds for Marissa Flynn. As we move into the third and final section of this event. That looked like a pretty good lift to me and she got three white lights, so good for her. Marissa got that one. Yeah, so the deadlift is the third and final section of the powerlifting event. When the deadlifts are concluded, there will be another little break. They're gonna recalculate the scores, who got what, and then awards will be given out. So we're, we're entering the final third of this event. So we got Danielle Simo out here, Blacksmith Fitness, and we've been really enjoying watching her all day long. Okay, so she's gonna pull sumo here. There's different stances your feet can be in, and Norris is gonna explain the difference. If you look at Danielle, it's a very wide, yeah. wide stance. That's all is, white lights for Danielle there. So yeah, so she's gonna, she's pulling sumo, which actually, for somebody who's shorter like her, works really well. Just less range of motion overall, kind of like having a big uh, arch in your bench press. Same thing, it decreases the range of motion. Um, some people with, uh, depending on their biomechanics and their, again, the, with the length of their, their femurs and how their hips work and stuff like that, a lot of people find that uh, sumo just works better for them. They can pull more weight. Um, I think it's cheating. I'm just kidding, guys. That's all a you hot people take. Out, you That's people a out hot there. take. <laughs> wow. It's, it's not cheating. It's you're, not cheating. You're I gonna pull make conventional. Some, you're going to make some you know. enemies by saying that. Here's Chelsea Loire. Segue to Chelsea Loire on the platform, who pulls like a real deadlifter. So, so Chelsea is going to pull conventional here. There we go. There's the strong. pressure. Yeah. Yep. She had that. Successful deadlift there. She's happy with that one. Good. She hit the salts pretty hard on that one. You can see a tear come down. Little little tear come out of the eye there. Now, I was uh, just kidding about the sumo part. If you pull sumo, I'm not discriminating. Yeah, you better be kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really interesting seeing who pulls sumo and who pulls conventional because um, I, there's a lot of people that I think that I would think would pull sumo, but then they end up pulling conventional, and I'm like, mm -hmm. interesting. Like, it's an interesting choice, but it, it all comes down to, like, what you're stronger in. So here's Bronte Lose. She's going to pull 314 pounds, 17 years old. Yeah, this is going to fly. 14 pounds. What? I've seen her do it many times. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why she is going to McKendry on the powerlifting team at the age of 17. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's a really good. I mean, she's a really good lifter in general. But deadlift, she's actually she's kind of a bit of a grindy deadlift deadlifter from what I remember. Like all of her deadlifts look like there's some significant effort being put in. It's a lot of weight though. 
two at the same I, time. I mean, for, for a 17 sure. year old, it's all impressive. Oh, man. yeah. I know so many fully grown men that have no idea, they would never be able to deadlift 315 pounds yeah. in their life without folding in half. And Bronte is up here at 17, crushing it. Here's Chantel Bingley, sponsored by True Nova Sportswear, who's going to make her way out to the platform to smash her first deadlift. 347. 0.2 pounds on this bar. And yeah, Chantel looks in the zone right now. Very nice. That was Very an excellent nice. pull. Excellent pull for Chantel. Chantel was telling me uh, earlier that she actually uh, hurt her uh, her hip flexor and that she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to pull sumo today, but it looks like it's good enough for her to be able to pull. She got her uh, first attempt in anyway, so we'll see what happens on the second and third. Yeah, she said that she hurt her, her hip flexor in the la her last week of training was not very good, so she wasn't quite sure how today was going to fare. Right. Um, she was worried that squats were going to hinder her quite a bit, and then bench was going to pull on it, and then deadlift, she wasn't going to be able to pull sumo, but she seems to obviously be uh, feeling okay to pull sumo, which is good, because she didn't. She did not want to pull conventional. Is what she told me. Tamara Nolan's getting ready to come out here. And now I, I imagine we're gonna see some. Uh, I was gonna say I imagine we'll see some records. There's here's a national record. No sooner did that leave Norris's mouth than it was announced. This is a national record for Tamara Nolan. 380 pounds. Wow, oh, yeah. Put some weight on the bar. That has to be the easiest national record I've ever that seen. That was the easiest national record I've ever seen, too. It's really people like Tamara Nolan that inspire other people to get into this sport. When you see someone come out there and just crush it like she does, it's so inspiring to see that. And again, like I said, she cross competes in the Strongman, Strong Woman federation as well i mean that was just like an easy deadlift for her oh my god yeah that was so easy yeah she started in strong man um and then and then made the she, shift she would have done her first powerlifting competition about a year ago because she was right. uh, her first powerlifting competition was when it was my uh was my first uh time as a referee i remember photographing that yes yeah exactly Here's Kayla Nip on the platform, 391 pounds. We're almost 400 pounds here on an opener. Yeah. And there it is. Wow. There we go. She picked it up and she put it back down. There's some... Uh, some rattle in that floor you when she watch, dropped the weight. You, you'll notice too, you cannot let go of the bar. Once you pick that thing up and you go to put the bar back down, you can't drop it to the floor. You have to put the bar back down. Your hands cannot leave the bar on the way back down. Now, Susan Graham stepping up here. I think we're gonna see some big lifts because Susan's been crushing it today. Yeah. She, she had a huge bench press earlier. Yeah, she's been super impressive this entire day. And here she comes. She's having a good time, you can you can tell. She is in her element, she's having fun here. Yeah, and that's nice. a good, yep. Very comfortable. She knew she had that one. Wow. So, she, so Susan there is sitting at a uh, 477 kilo uh, total. So almost a, five, almost a 500 kilo total. Which is very impressive. Which is very impressive for, uh, for a woman in the 67.5 weight class, a very impressive total. Mm -hmm. So the spotters and loaders are working very hard to get all these plates loaded onto the bar in a fashion, in a you know, a, a quickly and fashionable time. Yeah, what's nice Tanea, about here comes out. Tanea is opening with a 485 pound deadlift wow. on an opener. Wow, very impressive opener. And it's very smooth. And there it is. Ain't nothing to Tanea.
that didn't look like a very difficult opener for her at 485. I, I expect we'll be past 500 with Tanea today. I, I imagine so, yeah. I imagine she'll be probably doing in the 520 to 530 range for her third attempt based on how that looked. I think, she, I think she's probably got another 50 pounds in her. Mm -hmm. Now, it all depends on how she's feeling, too. I mean, she's had a long day. She could be spent. Yeah, she's had a long day of setting world records. Yeah, it's been yeah, it's <laughs> tough out here setting world records all yeah. day long. You got to kind of save a little bit in the tank for this these deadlifts at the end, but I think people get intimidated by squats. Um, it's very taxing. Squats are very taxing on the body. For sure, yeah. Very taxing. Central nervous system's getting lit up. Yeah. It's hard to kind of come back from that. Adley's coming out. Adley, Pharrell. Adley, I believe, trains with uh, Laura, who we spoke to earlier. Sometimes trained with Van Isle Strength. I do think she spends a lot of time at Victoria Barbell as well. I was gonna say she was. Barbell. I was gonna say she's wearing Victoria Barbell socks there. Yeah, yeah. Vic Barbell. That's a great community again. If you didn't hear me say it the 16 times I already said, it. Vic Barbell, they're <laughs> awesome people. Um, the owners, like Jason, is just such a beauty too. And he does a lot of work with the Special Olympic committees and does a lot of work volunteering in all different kinds of uh, powerlifting federations and strongman. Yeah. So it's great to see people like that uh, leading the way and being a really positive example and positive business in the strength sports community. Joanne's getting ready for her second lift here. Deadlifts go quite a bit faster than squats or bench press. It's a little bit easier to set that weight up. Um, I was, was going to say, we're probably going to fly through this flight here. We will be pretty quick here. So yeah. Joanne's going to get ready here. 308 pounds for Joanne. I want to see it. I think she's got it. Her first attempt looked pretty solid. And she's getting wedged under there and pulling that bar wow, out. Very she's got easy. It. There she goes. Like a very she, good technical lift. That was a great technical lift. Good for Joanne. It looks like she's got a shiny new SPD belt on. Oh, it she looks may have. It looks brand new. She's probably just getting that sucker broken. Those SPD belts are great. I have one. Um, I got one of the newer generation ones. I, they break in a little bit easier than the older ones were notorious for being quite stiff. Uh, the newer SPD belts break in pretty good. And um, I know that the, the dye was a thing for a little bit, the red dye. But uh, they've got that all sorted out. They're great belts. They're phenomenal. I love it. It's Marissa Flynn here, 308 pounds. Nice. Oh, that's a good pull. She got it, though. She's happy about that. Very Three good. white lights. She's happy about that. Yeah, she should be. Our head that referee at the moment is Caroline. Caroline is one of the co-presidents of the WRPF, so it's great to see the top brass leadership out here volunteering on the platform as well. Bo both of them are. Um, mm -hmm. CJ's, CJ. all, CJ's also out here refing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's Danielle with her coach Cole. And they're getting ready to, here she comes. And there we go, you see Caroline's hand raised in the air as the head referee getting ready to give her that down command. For a deadlift, there is no start command. Athletes just start the lift and then are told to, to go down with it. Danielle oh, is grinding yes, through this and nice. then flew off the floor. Good for her. She was a little bit slow off the floor, but she kept there. at it. She got there and she got that lift, so really happy to see that. Yeah. And that's and honestly, that's pretty common with sumo, actually, being kind of slow off the floor and then speeding up near the end. That's right. That it's very common. There's Stewart floating around again. Chelsea Loire, Eileen's back there. Bronte Lose. I'm, I'm really glad we got to talk to Jarrell and Bronte in the same day so that we, got, we were able to capture uh, their relationship as a coach and an athlete. They really do have a great story. They work so well together and Bronte has such a bright future ahead of her in the sport of powerlifting. It's great to see young people getting involved. And like, you know, this sport is paying her back, you know? for her to win a scholarship and head down and get on the McKindry powerlifting team like that. That's the sport giving back to the athlete. And I love to see that. I wish we could see more of that in Canada. I, I wish that uh, universities and stuff would, would build a powerlifting team here. I want to see more of that. Here Here's Eileen. Eileen, 314 pound deadlift. And it looks very good. Ain't nothing. 
Yeah, very she got comfortable. Three white lights and her coach. That was a great slash lift. Handler Stu. Stu seems happy with that one. Yeah. And he seems pretty happy with everyone today, so that's good. I overheard uh, he sounds very happy with all of the all of his athletes today. He is. Yeah. No, it's great. It's I really enjoy that we're able to. And guys, this is one of the cool things about this broadcast is we're not streaming. Like this is a production where we're engaging with people in the audience, we're engaging with the lifters, we're engaging with the coaches, the federation officials, and trying to bring you a real show that's going to help grow this sport. So we're, we're really thankful to everyone that's tuning in right now, and we're going to post this in, this uh, this event when it's finished. Here's Chelsea Loire back on the platform, 325 pounds. Oh, and she's yeah. pulling so hard on this one. That's a lot of effort. And she had a little war cry at the top, and she got that, so she's happy. She's feeling that one. Yeah, that was a, that was a slow and steady. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea's here from Penticton. I believe her and her partner both reside in Penticton and train out of the Jim Eternal, if you're over there. Wanted to shout out one more time about Wounded Warriors. The proceeds from this event are going to the Wounded Warrior Foundation. Get on Google and look it up, or go to the Kodiak Barbell Instagram page and find the link to donate to the Wounded Warriors Federation. That, uh, that organization is giving back to the people that take care of all of us. So make sure you get on that, okay? A couple more sponsors here today. We got True Nose Sportswear. Server Strength is here, prep to go. Blackbird Industries, Heathen Strength, Victoria Barbell is over there, Save On Foods, Resolute Strengthwear, Decidedly Fit, that's Leslie Gurr. Leslie Gurr's organization is decidedly fit. And Bronte's coming up for her second attempt here. 150 kgs. Here she goes. Let's see it, Bronte. Come on, Bronte. Oh, yeah. She got it all day long. Wow. That's what I want to see. 330. 300, 330, 330 pounds. 330 pounds at 17 is... Just switching microphones here for a hot second. Yeah, there it is. Yep. I mean, that's heavy, but she nailed it. That was 167.5 kilograms. I believe in the range of 365 something. Check. Tamara Nolan on deck. Tamara Nolan looking intense. I think I need one of these batteries too. the table on the treadmill. Tamara Nolan get ready to pull here. Pulling that tension out and just went for nothing to it. 413 pounds for Tamara Nolan. Kayla Nips back on the platform, 424 pounds. And 
she smoked that one, 424. That was a great deadlift. That was a great deadlift. And, you know, these are the exciting ones to see because as we move into especially third attempt deadlifts, we're going to see people send it. There's nothing left to save the energy for. This is the end of the meet for these people. And so they're getting ready to give it everything that they got. They're going to be sending here for the rest of this event. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Now deadlifts is one of those things that does take a lot of technical proficiency to be good at it. Uh, you will see people with some really interesting techniques as far as where they're putting their feet. Some other interesting things like that. We got Susan Graham is coming back out here shortly. Now there's some people standing at the back of the room. The room is pretty full of people. It's, it's pretty busy in here. People are very intent on seeing what's gonna happen at the, the end of this event here. <laughs> it's been very exciting. It's been kind of interesting to see people walking by during the day and coming in to see what this is all about because that's what we need in the sport, more people. We're getting ready for the next lifters. Susan Graham's gonna be coming out here for her second attempt. 446 pounds for Susan Graham. Here we go, that's a good pull. Very good pull. You could tell that was heavy, but she did not have a tr any troubles with that. Susan Graham had a great pull there. I was really glad to see how well she did with that. Yeah, that was a great deadlift. I mean, like, Susan's been outperforming herself. You know what I mean? And I think that's really the goal for powerlifting, you know, it's not really so much about the other people as it is um, in being better than you were yesterday. And yeah. I think that's the message I've gotten from a, a lot of the biggest powerlifters is, you know, they, there's a couple of big goals that they have in general, but in general they just want to see that they're improving. So that's a, that's a big thing. Now, Tanea's coming back out here to the platform. Yeah. Tanea's getting ready to pull 518 pounds. Wow. Yes. And she's gonna make it. And there it is. Tanea made light work of that one. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, she, she, she's feeling good today. She's doing excellent. Yeah, she's obviously come for those three world records. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's not every day you get to go to a powerlifting meet and break three world records like that. A couple more shout outs for you guys. Remember to follow me on Instagram, Evan Porter Media. And also while you're at it, follow the Film Factory because this would not be possible without them. A couple of big thanks to major volunteers and sponsors that made this happen, K-Fit Conditioning, downtown Victoria, 851 Yates Street, downtown Victoria, great new facility, lots of new equipment, multiple racks in here. They've got it all. If you have any goals, if you're an athlete, you're trying to fix any aches and pains or anything like that, come down to K-Fit Conditioning. They've got a, a very competent team of professionals here. Yeah, this is a really cool gym downtown here. Really, like really top of the line equipment and just fantastic. Here's Adley with 264 and a half, and she got it. Very nice deadlift. That's three white lights for Adley. She's got to be happy about that. Yeah, she should be. Again, very excited to be doing this broadcast in the sport of powerlifting. A lot of people feel like this is what the sport needs to really take it to that next level, yeah. and we are all too happy to, to help us get there. Um, if you're interested in having this kind of a production come to your event, 
you need to reach out to us, okay? You can send me an email, evan at evanportermedia.com. You can reach out through Instagram if you want. But definitely reach out to your meet directors, meet, reach out to those uh, Federation officials and let them know that this is what you want to see at their next event. Platform's ready for Danielle Simo again here. She's coming back to the platform. Danielle's gonna finish strong on her third attempt deadlift here. And she pulled like no tomorrow on that second attempt and we're gonna see the third one now. Let's see who wins the Danielle versus Troy duo here. And that's okay. Oh, no. a very, very good. A valiant effort for Danielle Simo. And I'm I'm hoping that she's very pleased with herself in this event because we've seen some real effort. Yeah, she should be. I mean she's sitting at a she's sitting at a 322.5 total right now. Um, 372 points. So we'll be curious to see where Troy finishes and see uh, what the dots what yeah, comes out on the dots, yeah, exactly. right? Who comes out on dots? Yeah. Be curious to know who wins this uh, wager that they that they have. And the platform's ready for Joanne McLaughlin, and she is finding her footing. And another interesting thing, if you don't know, is deadlifters have to wear deadlift socks. The socks have to come to just below the knee. She crushed that one. Joanne McLaughlin just lifted 319 pounds in the Masters division, so that's impressive. Good for her, Joanne McLaughlin. Oh, she has to be happy with herself. That's a very technical, technically great meet for Joanne McLaughlin. Uh, absolutely. All, all of her deadlifts looked amazing. I think she's gone nine for nine today. I don't think she's missed a lift. I believe she has. All right, and Marissa cheering check, on the check. crowd. This is awesome. Here we go. With Got some really flat. big support out in the crowd. Keep going. And that looks good. The crowd is loving this one. Three white lights. People love that one. Crowd was loving that. She's doing great today, too. I mean, Marissa, yeah, that was her third, that was her third deadlift there at uh, 145 kilos. It looks like she went nine for nine today, too. I think you're right, yeah. And again, a junior lifter just performing really well. Chelsea Loire here is wound up. She's ready for this third attempt. And she is getting all the encouragement from her friends here. You can see that. She's ready for this one, 330 pounds. She, she comes up to the bar, getting ready to grab hold of that sucker. I can hear growling happening. Yeah, wow. And here we go. She is going to pull this thing up. PR or ER. Here it comes, Chelsea. Keep going. That's a grind there. Oh. Great job by Chelsea there. That's a that's a power lifter right there. Wow. That, she, I mean, she, that was like a dog with a bone. She wasn't going to let go of that one. No, she, she was leaving nothing out on no. the table there. And I think that's that's the biggest thing. If you can finish the event like this and go home and say to yourself, I did everything I could, yeah. what more could you really ask for? Yeah, I know exactly. And I mean, she, <laughs> Chelsea just went all out there. Like all she out. was not letting go of that bar. Yeah, that was great to see. Yeah, I almost, I, I honestly thought she had it for, uh, for a second there. She got it up a little yeah. ways. It just it couldn't quite make it all the way up there to where she needed to be. Eileen too yeah. is coming out here. Three, 341 pounds on the bar for Eileen. Right. That's 155 kilograms. Yeah, come on. Yup, nice. This is, this is more than double her body weight. Eileen too has a big hug with her coach, Stuart Locke, who has done a fantastic job with Eileen. Uh, and like I said, that is more than twice her body weight. It was very impressive for anyone to accomplish. So really happy to see the performance by Eileen today. Yeah, that was really cool to see. Like her, her form on that stayed together so well that she was able to grind through that uh, really, really well. And I mean, she's got Stu in her corner there. So, you know, you know she's getting all the, all the help and everything, so. Yeah, nothing to complain about there with uh, Mr. Locke behind you. 
So there's, there's the, our scoreboard. We got a couple of more lifters here in the in the third and final attempt of deadlift for this flight. And Bronte is coming back out here again. She's going to go for a 341.7 pound deadlift. Again, 17 years old, junior. And this is why she's been awarded a scholarship to McKendry down in the States. 17 years old, and this is over double her body weight. Also rocking an SBD, SBD belt there. Come on, Bronte. And she's pulling so hard, and there it is. You know what? I think there's more. I think there's more. That's three white lights. She's very happy with that. Bronte was pretty pleased very with herself happy. there. I, I think she shocked herself to some degree on that lift, but she didn't shock me because I knew she had it coming. Yeah, no, she looked pretty surprised after that. She was kind of, she, I think she looked at Shane and went, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and she, I think that's one of the beautiful things about this board is that people are continuously surprising themselves with what they're capable of doing. And here's another, Chantel Bingley is also a fantastic athlete for that too. Just so fun to watch. 380 pounds on the bar for Chantel as we come into her third and final deadlift. Here she goes, hands are chalked. She's yeah, going I, into a sumo lift position. I really want to see Chantel get this here. She's yeah, gonna pull very nice. So come on, Chantel. Come on. Oh, come on, finish come on, it. Chantel. She's not going to get it. She had some oh. downward motion, but. I think I, there was some downward motion. Yeah, and that's what happened. And I, and I think she knew that too. But I respect the fact that she finished the lift. Yeah, she even wanted. Even she knew she had it. She knew she's strong enough. It was just. It could be anything. Maybe she lost a bit of tension on the way up and kind of caught herself. I think the bar might have got caught on her legs a little bit. Could be. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, especially with these kabuki bars that are so grippy, if you don't have baby powder on your legs, sometimes it can kind of stick to your leg a little bit mm -hmm. and just throw you off that and make it make it come down a little the baby powder is pretty clutch if uh, if the camera crew has a look at the thighs of some of these deadlifters you will see chalk on some of these mm -hmm. um, sometimes they'll chalk that area up on the on the shins and thighs uh, just because they do like they do like to put baby powder on there so that the uh, the bar will slide up the leg easier you can see the baby powder on the thighs there Yeah, the baby powder helps that bar slide up the leg there, but you you don't want to uh, you don't want to miss chalk with the baby powder. Wow! You don't want that on your wow. hands. Wow! What a grind, Kayla. She's happy about that. 440. She's That's happy about that. That's a fantastic deadlift. Oh, there's a big hug there at the end, and they're very happy. That was great. <laughs> I love to see that. That was an awesome. She deadlift. jumped into the arms of her partner over there, and they That's had a great. little celebration. So that was great. Uh, he, that's awesome. he sounds very, he's very proud of her right now. I can hear that. Anyway, you can have a look at Tamara here. Her thighs are, are baby, you can see the baby powder is on the thighs of the lifter. And that is so that the bar can slide up the thighs. See that baby powder there? Yeah. But you don't want that on your hands because it'll make the bar slip out of your hands. So they have to be very careful. Yeah, you. Wow, that's a great that's, that's a great shot here. of her right there. Here she comes pulling on that bar. She's gonna pull this thing right up. 446 pounds, Tamara Nolan. Here she goes, wow. Tamara Nolan, 446, and she got that. She's gonna and get it too. And there it is. She might have been called on soft knees on the side ref, but the other two refs thought it was good, and so do I. Right on. I mean, she. That must have been another record for her. I don't. I don't think that was a record. Do you wanna, do you wanna Susan Graham's coming up here next. I'm Susan gonna, Graham's had a phenomenal day. And Susan Graham's looking strong too. It'd be interesting to ask Susan if she competes in bodybuilding because she does have very developed delts and she looks like a very strong woman. So Tamara's deadlift was a national record. She just keeps chipping away at her own national record. That's, that's, so yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Tamara's got several records again and again and again and here's susan wow yeah you're right look at those delts eh? yep 
very strong athlete. All the delts. Here we go. Wow. Come on. Oh my goodness, look at her. Wow. Play. 474 pounds. What a fantastic she deadlift. She's very happy. And there she goes to celebrate. Wow. Great lift by Susan. Really happy to see how happy she is in her own lifting. And it's kind of one of the things that makes watching the sport, it's hard to watch without getting sucked into it because you purely do pick up on other people's passion for it and you really can't help but participate. I have moments where I have to remind myself I'm not an audience member. Yes, I know. I re I've been resisting the urge to scream into the microphone, to be honest with everyone yeah. that's watching the broadcast. There's Tanea. She's getting ready. Wow. Tanea's going to pull some serious weight here. We got 534 pounds I told, on uh, the bar. I think that's her, I don't know if that's her friend or her, or her sister, but uh, I went up to her friend there and I said, nice work on squats. I mistake them. Tanea's getting a round of applause here and there's quite a commotion in the room to support Tanea as people really want to see her succeed at this lift. Yeah. And I think she, I think she's going to do it. Oh my goodness, look at that. 534 pounds. Tanea, she got it. Wow. Right she could not be happier about that. As she hugs, she's hugging it out with her friends over there. I could literally see tears in her eyes. She's yeah, very she, happy about that. Yeah, she should be happy about that. She's had such a good day. Very she's successful been day. Just absolute top notch. I think she's gone nine for nine uh, with at least two world records. I don't think her deadlift was a world record. Uh, but the squat and the bench, uh, yeah, she's had a phenomenal day. That's so impressive. I believe that's the end of flight A. Um, we should be coming into the top of flight B unless there's a fourth attempt, which I'm not aware of. It looks like they're going for a fourth attempt there here. Is it looks a like fourth Marissa attempt. is going for a fourth. Okay, so that's awesome. So as we were talking about earlier in the show, a fourth attempt on deadlift can only happen after a successful third attempt, and then they're uh, trying to break the record, I believe. You, then they will give you a fourth attempt. So here we go. We're going to see if Marissa is going to try to get a record here. Yeah, Marissa and Bronte are going to be going for fourth attempts. Oh, and I love Tamara. To see it. We're going to be blessed with some fourth attempts here, several fourth attempts. Marissa Flynn being first in the junior 20 to 23 age category. She's going to pull 325 pounds, mm, uh, 147 kg. Uh, so Ryan just made a good point that the fourth attempts do not count towards their total. It's only for, to get the record. Exactly. Right? So, right. so their their third. <laughs> we have one of the best live announcers in the world for powerlifting. In the game. In the game, Ryan LaFortune, the voice of powerlifting. The platform is ready. <laughs> and Come here on, we Bronte. go, Marissa Flynn. Marissa just hit the smell oh, Marissa of salt. first. It's a record. The crowd is getting wild here. 325. Got a lot of applause from the crowd. They will. They really want to see this happen. Come on, Marissa. Oh my yep. goodness! Look yep. at this. Oh, she wants yeah. that so bad. Come on, Marissa. And is that good? That's good. That's the record. That's three white lights. She's happy about that one. Wow. So she's getting checked out by the uh, by the referee, and she's that's that's been done now. So anytime a lifter hits a record, a successful record attempt, they have to be assessed by a referee to ensure that everything that they're wearing is up to code. Everything that a power lifter wears on the platform. Is uh, it has to meet certain requirements. There are certain items of clothing you are not allowed to wear, and certain items of clothing you have to wear. So anytime there's a successful record attempt, you get checked by a referee. They're kind of checking for what you're wearing underneath of your singlet, and to make sure that all the gear you're lifting is to code. Um, it does get inspected prior to the meet, but they they always like to check after after a record like that. Now Bronte Lose is coming back out, 352.7 pounds. It's a fourth attempt deadlift, 17 years old, lifting 350. 350 plus. Like I said, there's a, this is the reason why she's been 
sent down to be on the powerlifting team at McKendry. Oh my goodness. And she knows that she got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she celebrates that one. Bronte's Very excited. happy about that. Can we, there's a referee checking out Bronte there. Oh, she's gone. So Bronte got checked out there by the ref three too. She got that, that was a successful record attempt for her. Uh, how many records did she get today? Four? Five? Uh, well, I, did, well, I, I think, think she got four or five. I, I think she got records in all three lifts. I know. I, I, yeah. Yeah, no, Bronte is, uh, Bronte and Tamara, they're breaking uh, they're records. They're crushing T it. Bronte's breaking junior records. Tamara's breaking master records. The ladies out here are crushing it today. Absolutely. And Tamara's about to dominate this deadlift. I have seen... Like, the bar has not slowed down in its journey to the top with Tamara all day long, and it won't now. This is a big record for Tamara, 457 and a half pounds. And she's a master, master lifter, 40 to 44 years age category. She's racing, and here comes, oh, it wasn't here today. It wasn't here. And you know what? I think it would be there, but I think Tamara's gassed. I think so, too. I, like She can only break so many records before you get tired. Exactly. I think she's just tired. I think, like, she looks strong and 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 sturdy enough in, in the, the way she started pulling that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you're right. I think she's just gassed. Fatigued. Yeah. She's fatigued at this point. Probably needs a bite to eat and some and yeah, rehydrate. It's a, it's a long day. She started lifting mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. this morning, and it is now... Four o'clock, so, yep. I mean, it's been a long day. It's been seven hours of lifting for all these lifters. It's a lot of work. And uh, on that same topic, which is another big shout out to all the spotters and loaders and everyone who's helping that's volunteering on the platform. We really want to thank all these people that are moving weights around. Yeah, spotting and loading is not an easy job. It, no, people, it, they're up there. They're sweating. It, it, it's a full workout up there. You're basically yep. just loading heavy plates all, all day, day long. Yeah, so it's, it's tough work, man. So. Uh, the spotters and loaders definitely deserve a lot of credit. And there's some great officials here that are just leading the charge as far as the strength sports community go. We love to see how much some of these people are coming out. Like, another big shout out to, to Laura at Van Isle Strength for bringing all this weight down here. Like, we, you heard from her earlier, it's a lot of work to load up thousands of pounds of weight and bring it somewhere else, and someone's got to do it to make this happen. Our head referee at the moment is Eric Brust. Eric Brust is a a pretty accomplished powerlifter himself. Has competed in uh, different categories from equipped to unequipped, and he's got some massive squats. I believe he is a record holder. I I, I think Eric is a is a Canadian record holder for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the greatest things I've ever heard anyone say at a powerlifting meet came out of Eric's mouth behind the stage when he said people come to the circus to see the elephants <laughs> and i'm not gonna take that away from him we're starting at the top of flight b here with aiden skinner our favorite junior male junior today he's in the 14 to 16 year old category he's gonna deadlift 297 pounds and it came right up Awesome job for Aiden. That was, that was a very good technical lift. I'm not too sure he might be called on soft knees. I didn't see that side at that time. But uh, the referees thought it was good enough for two white lights, so it's good enough for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Aiden has just had a great day too. I don't think he's missed a lift. It's good for him. I mean, I'd be proud. I think I saw his dad up there trying to get some pictures with the phone, so it's glad, you know, everyone's proud of their, you know, proud of their, their, their sons and daughters. Pavlo's getting hyped up here for his first deadlift attempt. He's getting ready to hit the smelling salts here in his left hand. He's intense. Yeah, he's left the you smelling. You can see that intensity in his face right now. And here comes that oh, smelling yeah. salt. It's a bit overpowering sometimes when you hit the salts and you're not really ready for it. Um, a little bit too much can be way I, too much. I could smell the smelling salts through. We can hear it from, we can smell it from here. Oh uh, yeah. Here's, here's Pablo. He's lifting 396.8 pounds. Fantastic showing from Pablo today, too. Yeah, Pablo's had a great day. Nine for nine. 
Almost, uh, he's, he's on track for nine for nine. And how, what are the refs going to say? Two. Excellent job. All right. So two white lights. That's two, two whites, I believe. All right, so two white lights. That was good. Um, uh, yeah, I think the I think Eric might have called him on being a little bit soft on his lockout. I think that was a soft knee, or okay. Yeah. And the lockout, like the the joints of the the joints of the body have to be in specific positions. That's what we're talking about. So you'll notice that when a lifter comes to the top end and they have that the weight is in their arm and the, in their hands and they've stood all the way up, the knees have to be locked out. They have to be perfectly straight and the shoulders have to be locked out. Yeah. The shoulders have to be pulled back and the chest has to be nice and high yeah. so that the referees can tell that you have completely lifted that weight to where it needs to be. You cannot lift the weight all the way up and then have your knees bent. That's called soft knees. Yeah. You'll get a red light and you'll fail the lift. Here's Zaid. Zaid's coming out of Blacksmith Fitness. He's got the purple Inzer belt, the lever belt on here. 418 pounds, this is a solid lift. Also a junior, 17 to 19 year category. Oh, he wants that. There it is. He wanted that. Oh, yeah, the intensity. He was mean mugging camera one if I ever saw. I can't believe he just mean mugged Eric like that. Our cameraman is shaking in his knees right now. Man, I can't believe he just mean mugged Eric like that. Oh, yeah. Here's Griff. All right, our favorite. Uh, Griff Semple here. Our favorite ginger lifter of the day, Griffin. Our favorite ginger. <laughs> 462 pounds for our favorite ginger, Griffin Semple. That is a gr that is a really good opening deadlift. 462 pounds. I mean, like that's no joke for a junior as he's well. A, he's a junior, 17 to 19 year old age category. Very impressive. Yeah, very good. He's rocking the A7 singlet. And the bar is loaded for him. He's got the A7 deadlift socks, the A7 singlet. Looks like a nice black Inzer lever belt. Oh, he just pulls it right, right up. into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't seen nothing yet, says Griff. Stay tuned, because he's got more in the tank for us. Yeah. The show's not over. He was also pulling hook grip, too, I he noticed. He did pull hook grip, so yeah. that's another thing. The way that you hold the bar, there's strategy in the way that you hold on to the bar. It's kind of hard to hang on to something that weighs 500 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> I know with hook grip, if we could uh, keep the camera on us for a hot minute here, the hook grip, if you want to demonstrate what the hook grip is, basically wrapping the thumb around the bar and then holding on to the thumb. Yeah, so you're going to wrap your thumb underneath the bar and then wrap your other four fingers over top of your thumb, and it kind of creates a bit of a hook. Um, it is painful. It's a pa there is a painful transition period where you're learning how to do it, but... It is the best way to deadlift if you have if you have large enough hands. It doesn't work very well for people with small hands because they don't have the they don't have the wrap around with their fingers. Here's Troy. He wants a wow. deadlift. He's been hitting the salts all day long. You can see he, the he tears welling them. up in his eyes. That's great. Tears of joy. I love it though. I love it when people are they you can just like see that they just hit smelling salts. It's so yeah. much fun. I mean, there's, there's Jonathan, I believe. Jonathan Hansen's got, he's next on the platform here with us. 507. And he's getting ready to hit this lift. He's mentally preparing for this one. You can see he's very focused. Yeah, I like the, the, the metal music that just came on here too. This it's is great. Very ominous metal music just came on in the background. Yeah. Jonathan Hansen stepping up to the bar here. And here he goes. Wow, Nothing easy. And he's mean mugging that son. Wow. Oh yeah, 507 came right there, up for him. There's something about there's something about deadlifts that just bring out the aggressiveness of yes. everybody. It's very primal. It's just like must pick up and they just pick it up. There's something about just like this like sort of like sludgy metal music yes. that just that works so well with deadlifts. That all of our grandparents, they love that style of music, you know? Joshua, he's getting ready to come out here. Yeah, I've really enjoyed watching Joshua today. Me too, Joshua. Yeah. The gun show, Joshua's got those big old arms on him. Yeah. 
And you know, you really got to watch the deadlift is one of those things you can have one of those freak accidents. I have seen it twice now where I've seen biceps tear. I don't think that's going to happen because Josh has got the biggest biceps of the meet so far. 545 pounds. There he goes. Nothing to it for Joshua. Yeah, that was a great deadlift. Really lights. He doesn't even look surprised. I think he expected that one. That was a good, a good lift for Joshua. I mean, it was his opener. I think his second and third attempts will be pretty eventful. So we'll see. We got Robin is coming up here pretty soon. I'm getting a little bit jealous of all the great food that the prep to go people have been eating all day long in front of us. I know. I see. Uh, I see. I've, I see Josh over there just mowing away just, on one of those meal just preps. Eating all, eating all the good food. Yeah, Josh was out there spotting and loading earlier today, yep. so he's got to refuel. Got to fuel the machine. Yeah. And here comes Robin, 551 deadlift. All right, for his Robin. Opener. Nice. And he is pretty comfortable with that weight. Yeah. Yeah, He's Rob got that three white lights. He's happy with that. Robin's looking very comfortable with 550 pounds in his hands there. Absolutely. Which is kind of crazy to say. So a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of our powerlifters are going to be going out to get all the food and the drinks after this event is over. It's kind of a tr it's, it's kind of a tradition. For everyone to go well, out yeah, for food one of the, after a big meet. One of the one of the best parts of a powerlifting meet is after the powerlifting meet when Eating you just all the food. when you just like you're ready just to enjoy, right? Here's Big John McDonald, 551 on the platform. His opener, very methodical. He's got that tension built. Yeah. And his oh yeah, nothing to it. That was an easy opener for John. That looked like and John you can just see the whip in the bar, eh? The flex in the bar as he whipped. That came up so quick it actually bounced. You could see the weight bouncing up and down on the bar. Yeah, we're starting to get uh, high enough in weight that you're going to start seeing more and more of the bend in the bar. That's right. Finley Capstick is up next, 551 pounds. Again, we got several people hitting 551, and then we're going to see the freak show. Here comes Finley, 551, and he just pulls it right up. So, you know, <laughs> these juniors are killing it. Steve Dardengo is up next. Steve Dardengo also hitting 551, which is making the spotter and loader's job a little easier because they don't have to change the weight for this first attempt. Steve's a great deadlifter. He's got great technique. Um, I think just great technique is something he always tries to do on all of his lists, but you can see him. Awesome. He, has his, he has his own way. He always does this. He does every deadlift the same way every time. Ain't nothing for Steve. Good job. Dalton Gendron's up next. He's going to pull 562. Yeah. That was some easy work from Steve, as usual, just making all of his lifts look like butter. He makes it look easy. Now, I don't. if Dalton wins an award, I think they should give his mustache an award, too. Let's have a look at his mustache, too, because, you know, we're. it's kind of the theme. It's the Kodiak Clash, but, you know. It's not yeah. a show without the there mustaches. That is an epic mustache. It's right also there. a ginger mustache. I do it's respect that. It's a ginger that. stash, yes. I want my mustache to I look like Tom that. I think Tom Selleck called and he wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Dalton. And he, I want to see that mustache. But he's going to pull this sucker up so fast. I think he's just going to whip this bar up. There he goes. Nothing to Very it. Very nice. That's 
it's amazing. You know, it's incredible what a great lifting belt and a mustache will do for you. Yeah, I mean, three white lights, that was a great lift. And Daniel Kerwin's up next, another Kodiak athlete slash coach. Just oh. another shout out to our own Instagrams. Give us a follow on Instagram, Evan Porter Media, if you want to follow more content like this because it's all we do all day, every day. Also, I, give us a give us a follow uh, the Film Factory, so you can stay up to date on some of the crazy projects that Jeff gets up to. Uh, yeah, Jeff, Evan does this all the time, all day, every day. I do it sometimes, occasionally, when I want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's Daniel Kerwin is looking pretty savage at this end. Coach Stuart Locke wow. is beside him. Daniel's ready for this one. He, he got a good he got a good whiff of those salts. He's rocking the virus singlet. It's a pretty cool little camo singlet. I like those. SPD lifting belt. SPD is a choice uh, is a pretty good choice for powerlifters. Yeah. Being one of the one of the best brands. You can get that from Inner Strength Supply. Wow. Here comes that pull. Nice. I was, and he got three it three white lights. That was great. Very Pulled comfortable. Right up, locked it out. Yeah, he looked. That's a good opener for him, I think. Yeah, he looked very comfortable there. Stu was saying something about Dan had had an injury. Yeah, Stewart was saying that Daniel actually. So he's a. Uh, he is currently serving in the Canadian military. So a big round of applause to uh, the uh, the ladies U and gentlemen. U.S. Air Force. Oh, that's right. Yes, he is down in the USA, of course. That's right. And he serves another another gent that's come up from the States. It's great to see international athletes here yeah. in Victoria. Yeah, for sure. Coming so, to these meets. Stu was saying he hurt his back or his knee. What was it? I believe it was his back. Yeah. Uh, so a severe back injury and was told he should never squat again. Uh, but an interesting thing is that people have actually... Uh, rehab significant injuries and another one to bring up is Danielle Simo we've seen here in our flight a Danielle had a bulge disc a severely bulge disc in her back and overcame that came back and is now in PR territory so you know there is definitely something to be said for the magic of lifting you can you can reverse a lot of injuries and a lot of conditions with strength training a lot of people don't know that you can entirely reverse osteoporosis through strength training here's Aiden Skinner 319 pounds for his second attempt, and he pulled that right up. Yeah. Great lifter. Very comfortable. He's going to be great. I I don't know what his body weight is, but that must be close to three times his body weight. He's uh, 58.6 kilos. He is almost three times his body weight. Aiden Skinner, who we just saw on the screen there, almost three times his body weight. Yeah, true. And here comes Pablo. We'll see what his Pablo. third attempt is here. He should go to 155 for his last deadlift. So Palvo is going to try to pull 440.9, so 441. I'm giving these weights to you in pounds because I know it's a bit more relatable to a lot of people watching. I do apologize to the hardcore powerlifters who want everything in kilograms. It is 200 kgs. And here he comes. He's getting his footing. He's pull, pulling sumo with that wide stance. And he's got the SPD knee sleeves for a deadlift. I don't know if they're going to get that. I don't know him. if he's going to get that. I, no. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't give that to him. He was too it, soft. It was a, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't, you got to be locked out. The knees have to be totally straight. Legs got to be straight. Shoulders back. And we didn't really see that. It was, he was a little bit stuck in that forward position. Zay just hit the salts and he's crying. <laughs> Tears of joy though. He's yeah, watch, watch that move. So I don't know what Zade's listening to. Sarah McLaughlin, someone yelled out from the audience. I, I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel Elton like Elton John. I feel like Zade's more of a Metallica guy. Four forty-six for Zade, and he is mean mugging everybody, even me. 
Oh, here he comes. Let's see oh, his yeah. face. Let's see his face on this. He's fighting so hard for this. Let's see if they he give it to him. Hold on to that for know. good measure. He got and it's it. Good. Two white lights is good. Two out of three ain't bad. He's happy about that. Zade's happy about that. Yeah, you should be. That was a good lift. He he's so uh, he's so intense. His face. Intensity is huge. There's the ward smelling salts in the out there again. There's Griff, our favorite ginger athlete. So yeah, so it's really cool to see a young lifter like that with so much uh, patience yeah. and method to his lifting. Again, because I think rushing things is pretty stereotypical for for, uh, for yeah, younger they, they lifters. just get nervous or they get excited, but and they rush it. I mean, for a teenager, he's still Here fantastic. Look at his grip. Oh yeah, he's got it. Nice work. And, uh, yes, I did notice the hook grip again on him. So three white lights for him, a great lift. Yeah, that was a great lift for Griff. I so mean, you can't. You Troy can't, Benoit is next. You can't not be impressed with somebody under 19 years old outlifting the majority of people, right? Well, Including me. <laughs> Just another couple of shout outs, guys. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Evan Porter Media, The Film Factory, K Fit Conditioning. Look those guys up. Downtown Victoria, 851 8th Street. We got Blacksmith Fitness, Troy Benoit. Troy Benoit's Instagram is troy.yote, T-R-O-Y dot Y-O-T-E. Here's Troy. Let's go, Troy. Troy's whole posse is behind him. Nice. That's a grinder. Come on, Troy, he's finish it. so hard. It's not quite there. He's so close. I think he's fatigued, but his first attempt was, I believe he stuck his first. So, yes, so he's still, he's fine. He's still in it. He's got a successful first attempt. Yeah, I mean, that was a big jump, too. That was a 20 kilo jump from his first attempt. Here's Jonathan in the zone again in the virus singlet here. Now, the last time I looked like that, I was ordering sushi and waiting for it to arrive. So it's 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 pretty great to have that intensity on the platform. It's it's there's not that many sports where you can really tap in and and see how much passion somebody has for their sport, especially team sports, because you don't get the same level of coverage on the athlete in particular like that. So Jonathan's trying to can't quite see the scoreboard. Too many people in front of it. And Jeff Very nice. smoked that. Jonathan smoked that. Jonathan Hansen. That was 540 pounds for him. That was a great lift for him. And the There's young gun here. And the young gun Finley's coming up with the SBD singlet, the SBD lifting belt. I, I really I saw him coming over on the ferry, and you know he's one of those lifters that you just notice all you know you just notice him. And I've uh, been seeing him at so many events. He's doing a lot of com competitions lately, several a year anyway. And so. You can tell he's one of those lifters that's very passionate about the sport, loves doing what he does. Yeah, we're about to see some really big deadlifts coming up here. And here he comes hitting the salts. And they're calling him out to the platform and he's coming to deliver. He said, you call and he came. Here comes Finley. He's pulling wow. that slack out of the bar. Come on. Oh my goodness, that's a struggle there. Wow. Man. I, he, he built up so much tension he in had that bar. So much tension. I yeah. didn't know when he started pulling. <laughs> yeah. No, that was wow. a great shot. That's why. It was a great try. I hope that he comes back out and tries it again. Yeah, I he should come back out and try it again because I think there was like something different about the way he tried pulling it there. Um, I think sometimes 
it, you know, sometimes people get used to pulling the same way all the time, but then when you're in the position where you're pulling super heavy, you kind of almost psych yourself out a bit, and it's like you over-prepare for the lift, you know? So it's kind of yeah. like you just really need to, to I, stick with it. I think he, I think on that one, he just needs to relax a little bit and just go out and pull it. And like, here comes big Joshua. Yeah, this is a big deadlift, Joshua 584 pounds. 584 for Josh. He liked that one. He's happy with that lift. Yeah. That was a great I, lift for Josh. I want to see his third attempt. I think, like, that was 584. I, he should go over he's gonna 600. He's going to go for six. Yeah. I don't know if he's ever hit 600 before, but that would be a really cool milestone uh, if he hasn't. The crowd is pretty pretty busy yeah. right now. This, the room is full. The place is packed. There are no seats left for anyone. The standing room only. I think this has been a pretty successful event for everyone. I'm starting to see off to the side, out of the camera's view, there is awards being prepared. Here's Robin, 584. 584 for Robin. Setting up on that oh, deadlift. Nice, He's Robin. pulling so hard on that. He's got it though. He got it. He's gonna be happy with that. Nice. He's happy about that. So Stewart's happy about that too. Stewart's his coach. Awesome. So Stewart's definitely happy about that for sure. I'm really liking Robin's deadlifts, man. He's such a good lifter. He's been a great lifter to watch all meet. Yeah, he's so good. John McDonald's coming up next. Very excited oh, to see yeah. his deadlifts. Yeah, John's a, John's a good lifter to he's watch. He's a very intense lifter. His deadlift last Serious time. Serious lifter. His deadlift last time was like he, like he got so locked in and so wedged in. He basically just stood up and oh, yeah. the bar came with him. So I'll be. Uh, he's all business. He's all business. Let's take a look and see how he does here. So the Celine Dion comes off. He's rocking the Inzer lever belt here. He's bracing out against that belt. He's pushing out against that belt. He's yeah. squatting down. He's gonna grab hold of that thing. He's pulling sumo here, and he's gonna pull this thing so hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's not letting go. Excellent lift. Yeah. 589 from John McDonald, and I, yeah. I kind of expected it. I know he's a, he's just such a talented lifter. I mean, but I did expect him to make that. Yeah, I expect him to go up to uh, the low 600s this, on his third. Steve Dardengo is getting ready to come back out here. Man, he, Steve's looking butch these days, no, I gotta say. That's what I was saying earlier. Every time I see him, he looks bigger. He's intense here right now. He looks like a he looks like a look freaking, at the biceps on him. Man, he looks like a dragon. You know look what I mean? The arms on him. Yeah, Steve is a big boy, man. Sean gives him a little tap and tells him to get out there and do what he's got to do, and here he comes. Oh yeah, here he goes. Very intense. Very intense lifter. Often very, very expressive. Oh. That's okay. That's, That's right. all right. He I hit his first. I think Steve's got that. Like, He'll be back for his third attempt, and I think he'll make it. I mean, he might make it. I hope he does make it. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, he was going for 595. Oh, we're back to the mustache again. Oh, yeah. Because Dalton, Dalton's back with the stash. And nothing helps you lift like a stash like that. Dalton Gendron. 606 pounds for Dalton. <laughs> Couple of uh, uh, sponsorship shout outs. Vanilla Gorilla, Death Vibes, Van Al Strength, Vicious Barbell, Evan Porter Media, The Film Factory, Recoup, Blacksmith Fitness, Ruthless Sports, Decidedly Fit, Chomp Cookie, Prep to Go, Beautiful. There he goes. Oh man. Oh. oh no, he was close. You can you can sometimes see it. You can sometimes see it in the lifter's eyes when they really want that lift. They come close to getting that lift. They don't quite make it. They, you see that disappointment. But um, you have to kind of just accept 
take ownership for that lift and then just see what you can do to, to either come back and get on the third attempt or, tr or fix that in training and come yeah. back stronger. I mean, I think he can do it. Like, he, that was really close. I think the power's that, there. The power's there. I think it's just, like, the energy. Like, people at this point are fatigued, like we were saying. Yep. It's a long day. You've already maxed out on two lifts. Um, it can it, be tricky. It's draining. It's draining, not just physically, but, like, every time you go up to lift, you have to, like, hype yourself up. And like here's get Dan. You, Sorry. Yes. Yeah, you no, do that's have it. To hype like, look, up. like, look how, like, you have to get yourself fired up and get your nervous system firing, and then you have to calm down, and then you got to do it again. Daniel yeah. Kerwin, Dan's Kodiak big, barbell. Dan's a big boy. Yep. Let's see it. Very nice. Oh, he's wow. locked out. I think he's got this one. Yep. That was beautiful. Wow, very nice. 90 kg lift. That was good. I think Dan was pretty happy with that. I think so too. I, Stu, Stu, Stu was happy about that too. <laughs> yeah, I don't Stu know was, which one's happier. Yeah, I know. Stu is excited. Yeah. I, I don't think Dan is a big uh, showboaty uh, guy on on uh, on the platform there. He's reserved. He is. He is. He's quite reserved. Very yeah. professional, reserved. Yeah. Yeah. So we got prep to go here. Prep to go here, leading the way in the camera shot here right now. Prep to go team. We also got the True North folks out there repping. And here's Aiden. Aiden Skinner. Aiden Skinner, our favorite junior male powerlifter today. He's in the 14 to 16 age class. He's gonna pull 330. And I think he can do it. Aiden's getting ready to come out here. He's it's pretty intense. Aiden's gonna try out the ward smelling salts here. Got the iron bull belt, SPD singlet. And here he comes. He's finding his footing. He's gonna stretch, he's gonna find where he's gonna wanna put his hands. Breathe, pull that slack out of the bar and pull up. Oh, come on, Aiden. He's got it. He got it. Yeah, very nice. He got it. He's happy about that. So that was pretty much three times his body weight right there. Just about three times his own body weight. That's yeah, very, a, very impressive. Just about, yeah. It is a matter of ratios. And when you're lifting two to three times your, your body weight from a deadlift, it's a lot of weight. Yeah. and I mean, like, he's not a big dude, Aiden, there. And he's still young, but he's not a big dude. Palvo is getting ready to come out. This is going to be his third attempt, I believe. On yeah, I hope Pavlo gets this because I think he's missed. No, he, he got his first it. one. He got the first one. He missed the second. Right. He got two. He got he got one red light on his first one. He wants this third one. Yeah, I mean, 200 kgs would be awesome. 440. Let's take a look. He's really got to make sure he locks out here. That's his, that's his major problem, just with the way he deadlifts. I couldn't agree more. He, he's got to get locked out with this. Yeah, lock here out. Comes. Come on, Pablo. It looks like soft Let's knee the on, the, on one side. Oh, no, he and got it. Good. He got two. It Man. looked like a soft knee on the right side. To me, his right knee looks soft. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, ultimately, that's to the refs, and they have a better view and a better understanding of that than I do. Yeah, the Eric, the front, Eric, the the head ref there. Somebody, somebody red lighted him, so maybe that's yeah. what they saw. I'm not too sure. I mean, er Eric from the front, it looks like he was the one that red lighted, uh, so probably for a soft lockout. But the other two, the other side referees, have a better view. Yes. So you kind of have to trust that. It's that a team of three. And that this is why there's a team of three because they all are going to see slightly different things. They, you want to get the different angles and everything. So, uh, and the side referees are going to have the best point of view for anything like for locking out and things like that. So, I do really like what we did or what you guys did with the red light and blue light. I think it looks really good. Here's Zaid. Wow. Let's go, Zaid. Come on, buddy. Wow. Come on, Zaid. 
No, it's not there today. Uh, it's just not there today for him. I know he's a bit disappointed by missing that third deadlift, but he did really good on the first. Yeah, just wasn't quite there. And I, and I think it's going to be the same thing for a lot of these people. I think he's just fatigued. It's also, I believe, his first powerlifting meet. Is it? Oh, wow. He looks really good for it being his so first we, meet. We got Laura back on the screen here. Laura is one of the one of the main uh, meet directors here. Laura from Van Isle Strength. There she is, WRPF athlete. Sorry, Federation official. And you know this wouldn't be possible without people like Laura coming down here and bringing all this weight with her. The combo rack. I know that she has been working very closely with Kay Miller, the meet director, to make this possible. I know Kay's been very thankful to have her here. Here's Griff again, our favorite ginger. 501 and a half. He's just gonna, he's just, he's just here to do the work. He's not here for the fluff. He's just here to lift that sucker up. Let's go, Griff. Beautiful lift. So he's gotta be happy with that. Griffin got nine for nine today. He went nine for nine. He's definitely gotta be happy with that. Nine successful attempts. That's a beautiful deadlift at, his, at the end too. He didn't come out there to fluff it up. He just came out there, he picked the weight up and he's going home. Yeah, he came in and just put in the work. Here's like, Troy. Troy's getting psyched because he missed his last lift here. Yeah. Cole's well, giving him a bit of a pep talk on what he needs to do. Yeah. So he's gonna hit the salts. Troy's, com Troy's coming off a failed second attempt here, so. He wants redemption. Troy wants redemption. I mean, now is the time to do it. Last now is the time. Of the day. Come on, it's, Troy. It's PR or ER. It's PR or ER. 529 pounds for Troy. He wants it so bad. Wow, let's go. He's so He's close. Almost there. It's just not quite there. Wow. Oh, my goodness. No, no. He's trying to save it. You know oh. what? Sometimes that. the head ref has got to let you put the weight down because he knows you're not going to quite make it. Yeah. And sometimes the lifter is not going to let it go. It's a dog with a bone, and the ref has to let – the ref's got to tell you to put it down. Yeah. I will, they don't want to see you get hurt. And you could see Troy was kind of shifting off to the side as he was coming up, and that's a recipe for, uh, for disaster. Yeah, he locked out his legs. It was just his upper back. Yes. He just couldn't quite lock he, it he out. He couldn't lock out his shoulders by the looks of our screen here, but he did lock out his lower he body. He couldn't get his hips through and uh, – and get fully locked out, which is too bad because that was really close. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right, Eric. Even though he hadn't completed the lift, Eric told him to put it down yeah. because he knew he, he wasn't go gonna. And if he keeps going, he's just gonna pass out, yes. which is just more dangerous. So you don't want a lifter to pass out. It does happen. You don't want that to happen. I've seen it happen where they've just fallen down like a dead tree and narrowly missed the weights with their face. Yeah. Here's Jonathan, see Jonathan Hansen. here. Oh man, oh. you could just see that. You get it's it's crazy almost sometimes that the human body is trying to do stuff it knows it can't do. So you get like the will to lift that weight is stronger than the physical, yeah. and you can see those muscles just you know jumping and and you know the central nervous system literally just like taking taking a coffee break on the way up there. I had another expletive, but I left that in the tank. Here's Finley. Finley, the young gun, the young power powerhouse right here. I'm pretty sure he lives in Alberta somewhere and he's traveled to be here. I did recently see him in northern Alberta at another powerlifting meet. He did great there too. But he's been surrounding himself with some other high-level athletes that really, you know, it's like we said earlier with the iron sharpening iron, it really does help you to be around other great athletes. And I think Finley is tapping into that. He's a junior, he's in the 20 to 23 year age category. 578 pounds, man. He's coming after 600, he was just shy. Yeah, he come on, Finley. It. He wants it so, oh, it's not there. Uh, that's too it's bad. Not there. But that was a great attempt though. We did a great job there. It didn't see he said, uh, if you're not failing at least some of the time, you're not trying. Yeah, that was, definitely, that was definitely better than his, uh, his last attempt. But, um, Steve is looking intense here. Well, this Steve is wants third it. Attempt. This is this is it, man. This is his last chance. Yep. 
Sean behind him there, his buddy from, from Victoria, uh, Vic Barbell. Look at Steve, he has unblinked. Steve is not, he's not looking away. He is fixated on that barbell. Wow, look at that, look at that He stare. wants it so bad. You can, it's an emotional thing when someone's so passionate about what they're doing and they're out there, they, it's hard not to get swept up in the emotion of what they're feeling. And you can see, you can hear the slaps. You can hear those slaps. He's after it. Let's go! He wants it. He's gonna fight for this. He's gonna fight. He's, oh, he's still going. Wow! He's still wow. going. And that's why yeah. you don't give up right there. Wow. Three white lights. That's why you never, you just don't give up the lift. It wow. never stopped moving the whole time. It slowed down a lot, but it never stopped moving. Yes. And that's why you don't give up on yourself. Steve should be so happy with that deadlift because it was just off the floor. Once that bar moved past his knees, it was easy. If you watch here, it's a gr it looks yes. tough there. That's where he failed last time. Gets past his knees and he, he just, just kept, stands. He just kept moving. Yeah. That's the thing. It, some of these weights feel really heavy and it's easy to think that you're not going to do it. Yeah. You have to believe that you're going to make it and just keep pulling until you you don't make it, I guess. What was that? So, that was 270 kilos, so just under 600 pounds for Steve. So third attempt here for Josh, 600.7 pounds. For the burly arm Josh, Come on, John. Oh, yeah, he had it. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's stoked about that, and with good reason, too. That was a great lift from Josh. He's got to be happy. So his last lift was that one. That was really he's good. He's done for the day. I think he went nine for nine. Yeah, I mean, and, and Josh finished Josh with 600 went, pounds. He finished off with 600 pounds and went nine successful attempts for nine successful a, attempts. So. A big total, too. 690 yep. kilo total. That's a heavy total. So is this Robin, I think, Robin. is coming up next? Robin has just got more and more hype throughout the day. This is his, if he gets this, he's gone nine for nine. 600 pounds. He wants it bad. He's yelling at it. He wants it. Oh, he wants that Come so on, bad. Robin. Come on, Robin. He's up, he's up. I think That's gotta got to be good. That's Three good. Lights. And they are very excited. And he's shaking the uh, he's shaking the referee's hands as a as a sign of respect. He's shaking the referee's hands. You will see a lot of athletes will go do the rounds around the platform and shake all the referee's hands for as a sign of respect and thanking them for officiating this and the and their and the efforts that they're putting forward as volunteers for being here. Yeah, I mean, man, Robin, at the, if you remember Robin at the beginning at squat, or like for his squats, he was very calm, collected, very chill. And you, he obviously, deadlifts is where he wanted to let, yes. let that out, man. Yeah. Like, he's a very hype lifter, and, and I didn't expect it at all based on his other lifts. But Yeah, yeah. Robin, he wanted that. You could tell he wanted it, and his coach, Stu, he wanted it too. I'm assuming it's his coach, yeah. Stuart Locke from Kodiak Barbell. Here's John McDonald with his third attempt. Come on, John! Sometimes I gotta move the mic and yell. 606 pounds for John McDonald here. He's, he's going through the motions. He's checking his bracing. That's why he's tapping his abdomen like that. He's coming down to find his hand positioning. He's gonna pull the tension out of the bar and just pull that sucker up. And there's just nothing to it for him. 606, look the same as his other deadlifts. John's gonna be happy with that one. I gotta tell you, John's whole reason for this event was redemption. He wanted to prove to himself that he was a talented, fantastic lifter, and I think he's done that today. Yeah, I mean, he's had a really great day. Um, you know, obviously he didn't get a second and third attempt uh, squat, but bench press, he absolutely killed it. Deadlifts, he killed it. Um, so, and I and I think he just his standards for his squat are just so high that you know that's why he ended up pushing himself so hard. I think so too. Uh, Dalton's here on his third attempt, and he wants this too. He does not want to let it go. 
but we're not going to get there. You can just see, you can really see people's central nervous system just starting <laughs> to shut them down yeah. on the way up. You know, they want that so bad, and the central nervous system says, not today. Not today. You can see it in the, the, in the knee jiggle when they're trying to... Here's Daniel Kerwin getting ready again here from Kodiak Barbell. Active serviceman, Air Force, U.S. Air Force, I believe. And it's really great to see that. Another big shout out again to Wounded Warriors. Remember that the proceeds from this event are be all being donated to Wounded Warrior Foundation, which is a group that looks after, you know, our uh, our frontline emergency responders, your fire firefighters, and everybody. He, there he goes. So Stu's giving him a little sniff of the salts there. He sends him on his way. 650 pounds, 295 kgs. And I think he's just going to pick it up. Come on, Dan. Oh, there it is. He's just got to walk out. Can he? Oh, goodness. Uh, it slipped out of his hands. Ah, uh, disappointing. But So unfortunately, that's, that's a no lift. It does happen. It slips out of people's hands. It can't happen for a variety of reasons. Yeah, on it, that's that's really disappointing because you know in the gym that would that probably would have been a good he lift. He probably but had it. He just couldn't hold on to it anymore. That's too bad because he was gonna get that. Like that was gonna be a good lift. Ah, that's too bad. But he still finished with a great uh, great deadlift, 290 kilos. So still finished with a really good lift. Nothing to nothing to feel bad about. So now we are moving into the uh, last flight of the day, Flight C, getting into the big boys here. Just before we start that third flight, just so you guys, uh, just a reminder, if you want to see more broadcasts like this at your strength sports events, make sure to reach out to the event organizers and let them know who you want to see there. I'm in Porter Media, the Film Factory. I'm also joined by my fantastic co-host, Norris Was Little, who is a strong man and powerlifting competitor and referee within multiple federations of powerlifting and it's been great to have you alongside the stream here Norris thanks it, for coming it's been fun man I've uh, I've had a really good time I have to yeah like I said I have to keep reminding myself I'm not just an audience member or <laughs> there's so many times where I want to get in there and like start screaming and but no it's been fun I've really enjoyed this this is a uh, I mean this is a a crazy setup you guys got here. It's, and it's been good. a great event set up as well by Kay Miller. Man, Kay and has absolutely killed it. Yeah, this is uh, one of the best, one of the best run meets I think I, I think I've, I've ever I've been ever to. been to. Yeah. yeah, it's so smooth. You know, some minor technical difficulties, but I mean, as on, with any meet for sure. As with anything, right? But from what we've seen, it's been perfectly run. All the vendors, the audience seems happy, the the competitors seem happy. And the broadcasters are just the best, <laughs> I gotta say. And the broadcasters are just absolutely killing it. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Evan Porter Media and the Film Factory. I'm gonna keep plugging it because I'm the anchor. Also a big shout out to our live announcers too, and it does take a lot of energy to be here all day long and to feed that energy into the crowd, into the broadcaster, into everyone who's watching. Uh, Ryan LaFortune is our live announcer, basically the voice of powerlifting. He is around here somewhere. He's actually going to be our head referee here now for the next section. Can we get one of the cameras on the head referee in front of the platform? Red referee in the blue corduroys and the gray shirt. Here, Ryan LaFortune. There we go. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to give you a view of Ryan here so you know who we're talking about. So Ryan LaFortune, is a, he's a fantastic uh, official. Yeah. He is our live announcer, but Ryan LaFortune is an accomplished powerlifter as well. He volunteers at almost every meet that I've ever been to. Yeah. And just a fantastic energy to be around because he's such a positive person like that. Yeah, Ryan is the voice of powerlifting. Uh, here's Tim Doyle with his first deadlift, 4.07. And that looked like it wasn't loaded, so good for Tim. <laughs> Tim's got to be happy with that deadlift. That was a great deadlift for Tim. We're going to have a Troy coming back out here again. Troy's been doing a great meet as well. 
Um, Troy's only really missed one lift, I think. So he's gonna be aiming for 440 pounds, 441 basically. And he's getting himself ready for when they call his name. And here's Coach Cole from Blacksmith Fitness. Get him some encouragement there. Doing a great job. And the, the, the audience is loving this event. You can see they're just really involved. Everyone's having a great time. It's a very positive place to be. All walks of life here. Everyone's here. It's a very family friendly event. Here's Troy. And they just called his name, so he's going out there to pull that weight. There's Troy Coleman, 440. And here he comes. Oh man, it wasn't even hard at all. 440, 440 pounds flew off the mat for him. Didn't seem to be very challenging at all for Troy. We're gonna see what he puts in for his third attempt here. There's, actually, that was his first. So we'll see what he puts in for his second, but I guess that was a pretty good easy opener for him. Just another big thank you to all the spotters and loaders and everyone who's out here helping make this possible. Got the, the representative for True North here on the, uh, on, the, on the jack. A couple of big shout outs to some of the, the sponsors that are here today. True North Sportswear with a great table set up, some really cool clothing. We got Cerberus Strength Wear here as well. Prep to go. Victoria Barbell's here. They got some awesome swag over in the corner too, some cool t-shirts and stuff. Here's Antonio Calvert, 462.9 pounds, and he's getting yelled at to pull up his socks, which uh, I admittedly have heard from my parents many times before. But in this particular example, they, they literally mean pull up your socks. Unlike my mother says to me, so those socks have to be just below the knee. Yeah, big big Eric Bruss tells you to. And there's Antonio's lift, which is very successful lift. And and there's their Federation logo, WRPF. Such a fantastic group of people here today. And you know what? Like any company is only as good as the people that work for it. And it's the same thing with the powerlifting federation. They're only as good as the people that make up the federation. Got some great volunteers, some great meet directors, officials, volunteers here today. And that's really only possible because of some of the great people working for the WRPF. There's gonna be some awesome uh, events coming up in the future with WRPF. I can't wait to, to cover nationals, which is gonna be down in Nanton, Alberta. That's going to be an event put, being put on by Jenny McMasters. We're back with Kyle McKee. 512 and a half pounds. And Kyle McKee also has a fantastic mustache. So he must, he must be, uh, oh yeah, he's going to do really well. Good for him. A good job on Kyle McKee there. Another Kodiak barbell. And some pretty cool artwork there on the backdrop as you were seeing earlier too, is design, it's original artwork. Original artwork by Kodiak Barbell. And they really do make some really cool designs for their, their shirts, the backdrops, all the apparel. The athlete shirts are designed by Kodiak Barbell. All that's original artwork, it's pretty cool. That's a great shot. See that angry bear in the background. You might call that a Kodiak moment right there. No pun intended. Hey, Got lightning Evan. bolts coming out of his eyes. I wouldn't mess with a bear like this that. This is from Dungeon Strong. And here we go. Mike McLaughlin's on the platform. 530 pounds. He's getting ready to pull his first deadlift. Here's Mike. He's getting under this bar. He's getting the tension built, and he's going to pull this right up. Yep. No problem for Mike. Wow. That was a good, easy pull for him. That's a, what an opener kind of should look like, I guess. Yeah, he did was, a great job on that one. That was very clean. Big shout out to Kodiak Barbell. That's a team of great lifters, coaches, and meat directors that have really helped make this possible. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like Kodiak is just going to end up becoming like the, uh, I don't know the right word, but well, one of the, the premier brands in powerlifting. You know, I think it's just going to become the center. Like they've got coaches, they've got you know, co they've got amazing coaches, athletes, like you said, meet directors. Yep. They're really directly involved. Great people. I mean, you heard the interview with Stu. It was great to hear from him yeah, as yeah, a coach yeah. as well. Yeah. You saw it here, Evan Porter Live Broadcast. Remember, this whole broadcast is powered by the Film Factory. Jeff Harwell up to the platform here. He's about to pull 545 and a half pounds, 247 kgs, and there it is. <laughs> yep. The crowd's loving it. It's really great to see how many people are really invested in this meet. It's been a fantastic event. Like I said, we're on to deadlifts now. We're on to the home stretch. This is the last flight of the last event of the day. So after the deadlifts are done, that will conclude the stream. Just so you guys know, we will be uploading um, another version of this event to YouTube. You will be able to watch it again on my YouTube channel, Evan Porter Media, so make sure you follow the YouTube channel there. There's gonna be some epic highlights. And one of the interesting things that we're able to do with this particular setup is, we you've got the stream here, you, you can see what's being broadcasted, but every one of these cameras is also recording independently so we can go back in time. There's Bort, 551 successful deadlift, three white lights on that one. That's awesome. So we're definitely, we're excited because we're going to be able to generate so much content from this broadcast. We can go back in time and grab clips from us talking to the sponsors, the coaches, the athletes, officials, and we can create tons and tons and tons of content from that. So oh, yeah. stuff like social media reels, advertisements for people. And we're looking to pick up a few more sponsors for our subsequent broadcasts that are coming up in the near future. So if you want to advertise your brand on our screen, like kind of like you're seeing here with my logo up here, we got the Film Factory logo down here. We got some product placement. We can play ads, and we're going to be able to make uh, short-form content for social media about your athletes that you're sponsoring, and air that on our stream here as well. We can put anything on here. So, basically, the future is bright for strength sports, and we're going to be shining the light. Andrew Chitska up here for his first deadlift attempt, 573. That's a heavy deadlift. For a f here he goes. He's a big boy. Pulled it right up. There wow. it is. And he loves that. That was fast. Three white lights for Andrew Chichka. That was, uh, that was really fast, you know. The guy's like 12 feet tall, so he's got to, you know, it's got to go a long way. Yeah, that was, a, that was a quick deadlift, that's for sure. I'm looking forward to seeing what he puts out for his third attempt. There he is, Luka Dirkovich from Dungeon Strong. So what did he say he was listening to earlier, Barbie Girl? <laughs> I mean, we made a little bit of a joke about uh, Luca listening to Celine Dion. I think he may still be listening to Celine Dion. Yeah. It may be confirmed through his social media. If you go to the Dungeon Strong social media page on Instagram, that's Dungeon underscore Strong, you'll see a big shout out there. It could be Mariah Carey, but I believe his team has confirmed it is Celine Dion. <laughs> he was uh, during his uh, squats, I think he was listening to Barbie Girl by Aqua. It could have been Aqua. It may have been Aqua. And here's the best looking man in powerlifting about to deadlift 584 pounds with his shoes that look like toes. And that looked casual for Luca. Yeah, that was That easy. was casual. That I mean, was a casual 600 pounds. Yeah, that, that was uh, The not, crowd's loving it. The crowd's loving it. You, yeah, I was, mean, this is, what, this is what the sport's about. Yeah, I mean, so here we go, we got Kyle Gordon getting ready to come out. People come to the circus to see the elephants. Everyone loves to see the big boys deadlift. That's right. It's like Eric Bruss said, people come to the circus to see the elephants. And here comes Kyle Gordon. And Kyle's looking for nine for nine today. He's on track. We got 584 pounds for Kyle. Oh, and he yeah, picked it up very nice. and he's he almost put that down like he's in church, like <laughs> Ryan LaFortune always says. That was, uh, yeah, that was a good deadlift. That was so clean. Just Ra we're cracking him up behind me. You can hear me. I'm stealing all of his one-liners. I'm going to owe him a few bucks after this, probably a beer. 
Joe Fabia is getting ready to come out here. So, so and his now partner, as usual, right by his side. So when Joe comes up to deadlift, I want you to look at his stance. From what I remember, it's a very bizarre deadlift stance compared to what other people do. Unorthodox. It's a little bit we unorthodox. We won't call it bizarre because it's working for him. It's working for him. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. I'm not. I, there's absolutely no criticism on my end. It's just a, it's just a different stance than what you would normally see. Um, we just wanted to clarify because Joe could beat us all up. <laughs> Joe could. I don't think he would. He's me. a gentle giant. And Joe's a great guy to watch. A lot of volu- he he coaches a lot of athletes too. You can see him coaching in multiple federations as well. So here comes Big Joe with 617 pound opener for his deadlifts. Very narrow. So, so conventional stance. He just makes room for. He's just a tall, large guy. So he's got to make room. So I guess it's his like knees conventional. are like on, on the inside of his elbows like that. Yeah. So I guess it, I guess it is conventional. Pretty conventional. I, I it's remember the squat that's really unique. He has a unique squat pattern. Yeah. For some reason, I remembered it being like more different. But no, was, that was that was a pretty standard conventional deadlift. Yeah. David Osborne is getting ready to hit the weights here. We got Stuart Locke right behind him. If, if you guys are happy with this sports broadcast, go to my Instagram page, Evan Porter Media. Give me a follow. There's the Instagram handle right there, Evan Porter Media. We got my co-host Norris underscore WL Was Little, that stands for. Norris is looking up some sushi because we're getting hungry here. I'm just kidding. David Osborne, 661. Nice work, 661 for David Osborne. What a lift. Three white lights. Again, this is not your traditional live stream. It's a sports broadcast. So it's a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. We are not sitting here with webcams and a laptop. Joel McCain's coming back out, 683.4 pounds on the bar for Joel McCain. And he picks it right up. That was, that was a quick. Yeah. No, no, he's. That was a quick, he's, quick, quick he turned on the gas. He hit the gas there a little bit. Yeah. That was, uh, that was probably the. One of the fastest 680 pound deadlifts I've seen move. I think that was the fastest 680 pound deadlift I've ever seen. Yeah, that was quick. The speed, the speed at which some of these people pick this weight up is, is pretty crazy. Pretty wild. Robin Graham is on deck. He's hitting the salts. Robin Graham is gonna be moving 325 kilos. He is the second to last deadlifter in I did the flight notice, right now. I did notice as well, he's got one of those fancy mouth guards in there. I think it, they're made by a new age, new age mouth guards. Some people swear by them. He's rocking the SBD socks here, the virus singlet. If you're looking for SBD products, you can get it from Inner Strength products. Wow. Look at that. Picks it up and puts it down. Very quick. That was a very quick deadlift. I was, I was, I honestly didn't know if he jumped the down command. It was very, very quick. Yeah, that was fast. But it, he picked it up very quick. So I think, I think their head referee just told him to put it down. Yeah, that was a fast deadlift. That's she for sure. She saw what she needed to see. 
who's, up, who's coming up next here? Brian is last on the uh, flight list here. Brian's up next, Brian Gifford. Starting out with 727 pounds for Brian 727 Gifford. pounds, 330 kilos. That is a lot of weight. This is, this is Brian's opener for deadlift. 727 opener is wild. He's gonna explode out of this, I can tell. Oh and there yeah! He is. Wow. wow! Wow! That was fast. That was like nothing. That was definitely the fastest 727 pound. You can see him in shape. Deadlift that I think I've ever seen. Yeah, that was that really was, fast. Uh, yeah, that was fast. That was fast. That was he fast. flew up there. Yeah, I want to watch that back here. That was a... Uh, we're coming into a second attempt for deadlifts, guys. We have two more rounds on this flight, and we're done for the day. Wow. That was wild. There's Tim again with his handler, Zara Naibo. Tim's crushing it. He's having yeah. a great day today. He is. I mean, he's going for a big deadlift here, 435 pounds. That's uh 435 is a biggie. That's a really good deadlift for what I, what I think is his first meet. I'm not 100% sure. I think we should try to catch up with him and his handler afterwards. We'll get a couple of words in and see what he has to say. Yeah. We'll try to follow up with Tim. Tim Doyle, here he is. He's about to get his name called. Come out here and do this. Finding his foot placement. Bracing. And pulling, pull, pull, pull. There wow. it is. Nice work. That was a very good three white lights on that one. That was a great deadlift. And I bet his handler Zara is happy with that one. So Troy Coleman's coming up next. Troy is planning on pulling 474 or 215 kg. Blacksmith athlete being coached by what looks like Cam Bennett. Cam Bennett's a great athlete, a great coach as well. I believe he did a bit of bodybuilding. So he certainly looks like he did a bit of bodybuilding as well. All right, Troy coming out for 215 kilo deadlift, 474 pounds. Rocking the gold chain, SBD socks, SBD belt. Love it. Yeah, very Great pull. There was no hesitation there. That bar did not hesitate at all. Came yeah. right up. No, that was a very comfortable deadlift. He's got a lot more in the tank. And yeah, that it, SBD gear is so nice too. It's very nice. I mean. I love the belts. Yeah, I mean the belts are super. I mean, I'm I love the the strong belt, the strong by Mark Bell. That's very cool. I really like those belts. I've seen uh, a couple of the big boys using them too. So I don't know. Maybe there's some validity to uh, how good they are. There's lots of different equipment that a uh, that a lifter can use. You know, some people swear by the Inzer belt. Some people love the SPD belts. I guess some people love these strong belts as well. <laughs> Pioneer makes some cool belts. There are rules in certain federations that only certain uh, kinds of belts, only certain brands are approved. They have to be approved. So they have to meet very stringent requirements for certain federations. SBD is a pretty safe go-to brand for every federation under the sun. Yeah, so Antonio is about to do his uh, second deadlift here, 507 pounds. 507. Nice. Very, very smooth. Smooth, very methodical solid. pull for Antonio. That was Antonio. a very solid deadlift. Very, you know, just consistent pace the entire time. That was a really good deadlift. Mm -hmm. Antonio's improved a lot. 
Like we've seen him at a couple different competitions, and every, every time he gets better. He is the kind of athlete that just gets better constantly. But you can tell when people have that discipline and they stay disciplined in their sport. You know, things happen in your training where you'll get sick or injured or whatever. You always have to continue to work through that adversity. It's not an excuse to give up, you know. So it's, it is very important to kind of stay on top of your training. Yeah. When you do have adversities, you do have issues, you work through them. If you can't work through it yourself, you get help and carry on. So here comes Kyle McKee, four, 245 kilos, 540 pounds. Let's see it, Kyle. Very nice. I tell you, it's the mustache. 540, Kyle McKee crushed it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great deadlift. I mean, he looked very comfortable under that. And just like all of his lifts, like, he's so precise. He's so, like, there's so much precision in his movements, um, which is, I mean, I'm not surprised. I, 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 on, I see his lifts on Instagram all the time, and that's how they look. That's practice at, at play right there. You can tell when someone has a lot of experience at and discipline doing what they're doing. That's the thing, you can't come out here and rush it. That's the thing about powerlifting, it's methodical, it's planned, um, otherwise you won't be that, you won't be very successful at the sport. It, it's a great deal of patience and I think that the sport of powerlifting is a great way to teach younger people patience. Because you, uh, like I said, you can't rush this stuff. You'll get hurt or you just won't make it very far. 100%. Mike McLaughlin's on the platform, 573.2 pounds in his hands right now, and he's gonna pull it up. His second attempt, yeah, wow. a little bit of struggle. You can see a little bit of that. The muscles are starting to jump there for Mike, but he's still got it. That was awesome. There's big Shane Calhoun in the crowd. That was awesome. I mean, 500 and, uh, 573 pounds, I think that was, at you know over 50 years old. In the Masters, yeah. Yeah, very impressive. Great lifter. I've also seen, I've seen Mike at many meets before. Jeff Harwell up next. Jeff Harwell, he's asking for 578 pounds on the bar and he's gonna get it. And Jeff's got some intensity on him as well. Like he's got his positioning, he's gonna reach down there. This is a big lift for him. He wants to make sure that he is all set for this one. And he's got it. Yeah, he very got under there, he got the leverage he needed and he just pulled, you know, he pushed the floor away from himself and that was that. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very smooth, that deadlift. That's an impressive deadlift. Yeah, he's definitely got a little bit more in the tank for his third. I think but he's saving a bit for third. I think so too, yeah. He hit that first one, it looked really good. It looked too easy. Yeah. That second one looked really good, and I think third attempt, well, I think we're gonna see something on everyone's third attempts here. I think we're I'm, gonna see some the, big the, weights. I mean, third attempts for the, uh, I mean, this is the big boy flight here, right? Everybody in this flight is over 110 kilos. So, um, yeah, this is, this is where, this the third attempt deadlifts on the big boys is where you see the, Crazy the, things the, cra the crazy stuff, I feel like. I feel like that's always where the, the crowd gets craziest. And here's um, Bort. Bort's rocking the strong singlet. And he just uh, came out, picked wow. it up. He's putting it down. He's happy with that. Three white lights. That was he a came, uh, he saw, he conquered. That was a 595 pound deadlift beltless. He was yes, I didn't even notice he did the, He did do that beltless. Yeah. Now for people that don't really understand what these belts are for, what the belt is for is actually acting like another set of abdominal muscles. You have to create a, a tremendous amount of pressure in your abdomen so that you don't fold over when you're trying to pull this weight or squat. So the belt is actually used as a brace. The, the lifter pushes out with their abdomen against the belt to create a large amount of intra-abdominal pressure so that they don't crumple. And so there's different designs of belts. That one was a I believe it was a prong belt. Yeah, that was. That, that's a that, prong belt because a, you can see the single prong. Yeah, it's a strong belt. That's a, similar to the one I have as well. I believe that's a rogue he's wearing. Oh, you're right. That, I, you're right. I that might be a rogue. I have the same one. I have one of those as well. But that's the premise for the, those of you watching. They're pushing out against it with their bellies to create a huge amount of pressure 
so that they don't fold in half when they pull the weight or squat or whatever that is they're doing. And so that really does add a significant amount to a person's weight if you know how to use a belt correctly. So it's very impressive to see a heavy deadlift yeah. like that with no belt. Let's see Kyle pull this, 611 pounds, no problem. That is wow. very impressive. Andrew Chichka is coming up next as well. Andrew's looking for 622 pounds on his deadlift. He's one of the crowd favorites. It looks like he's got a ribbon on. Um, I haven't asked him about what that means. Um, yep, it's there for something. We're not sure. I'm I think that's his mouth guard. It is his mouth guard. It looks like a ribbon, but yeah. There are his his fellow coaches and friends from Blacksmith Fitness. There's a couple of friendly slaps on the back for him. Yeah, wow. And here he goes. 623 pounds. It's time to go to work. 622. Wow. Coming right up. There it is. Very strong. You know what? I got to say, he's a great deadlifter, but he's a really good-looking man as well. Just a handsome devil, you know? I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a handsome looking dude. Handsome dude. Crowd favorite, that guy. It's because he's such a gentle giant. Everywhere he goes, he can't help but make friends, you know? Yeah. And we're going to play a video from him after the show, but he really does have so many great things to say about the people around him. And he, I was speaking to him down in Blacksmith Fitness. He talked about the people that he finds inspiring. And, you know, he says, you know, Almost everybody out here he finds inspiring, and, and he has a lot of respect for the Special O's, the Special Olympians as well. Yeah. And here comes Luca. Luca. This is going to be a good one. Look, 623 pounds again. Dungeon same, strong. Same as Andrew. Look him up on Instagram, dungeon underscore strong. That was a very nice deadlift. There it is, three white lights for Luca. Yeah. He's got to be happy with that second attempt. Yeah, that was a good one. We're it all looks, like he's, uh, looks like Luca was starting to get near the end. He's almost at 300 kgs. Luca has just submitted his third attempt for 295 kilograms, which is a 12 and a half kg jump for him. We've got Joe Fabia coming out next. Joe Fabia is looking for 683 pounds on the bar, and his partner is, as usual, right by his side. I love to see that. She's ready to give him some of those smelling salts, but. Joe's just such a great guy. He coaches a lot of young athletes in different federations as well and takes a very uh, measured mentorship role with them. Oh, yeah, that's the homebrew there. That's not your that's not your grandpappy's kombucha right there. And here we go. Let's, let's go, Joe. And I got to tell you, those are some flashy shoes he's got as well. Joe Fabia, 683. And it just flew up. He's trying to lock it out. He's. Yeah, that's he, good. He got that. He's happy about that. Yeah, Sometimes. I think, I think for a second he wasn't quite sure if they were if yeah. he got that. I I what you know what I think he was just pulling so hard and just trying so hard to lock out. I I don't know if he knew even that he had made it. It's easy to tell why. Here we go, David Osborne. He's getting hyped up. The camera's in his face. He wants it. He wants it, guys. 688, 689, basically, 688.9 pounds. Wow. Got David Osborne here coming out for a big lift. That is a lot of weight getting loaded onto the bar. He looks excited. David looks excited. And th this is what really, it's very exciting to see. People applaud effort. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be the strongest one, but it is just freakishly cool to see it. Totally. So he is really focused right now. This is his second attempt. He knows this one is a legitimate attempt. He's, he's, he wants this. Darrell Petty's on the platform helping out there. We heard from him earlier. And here he comes, David Osborne. 
688 pounds. Three hundred and twelve point five kg. Very nice, buddy. He's happy with that. He knew he got it. Didn't even wait for the lights. He hit that. He knew he had the three whites, and he walked off the yeah. set. He, he felt good about that. Yeah. Watch when he finishes as he walks away. His back is as wide as a barn door. In the future, we have a very cool instant replay feature that's coming up. It's going to be very cool. So we'll be able to wind back about 10 seconds in slow motion and show you what's happening with these lifters as well. Yeah, look at how so wide here's he Joel. Is. And it seems like everyone's kind of stashing their mouth guards in different places. And there's Joel's significant other in the back, Marino, with the uh, Jamiroquai hat on there. Loving the Jamiroquai vibes in the back with the funky, love those balloons. Hanging out with the blacksmith crew at the back, and here he is. That's Joel. a sweet belt he's got on there, too. Wow, 722 pounds for Joel. 722 on the bar for Joel. And he's not messing around. Wow. And here wow. we go. Now that's a deadlift. That looks so Great comfortable. Deadlift. So that was two point something times his body weight. I didn't quite catch it. Yeah. That was a lot of weight. Well, how love much to see Joel doing well. Robin Graham next. Robin Graham getting ready here. He's getting the smelling salts. His buddies are getting him hyped up. I just see the back slaps. That'll wake you up, you know, if you're starting to fall asleep, not that you would at one of these events. On, uh, on Joel's deadlift, that was over three times body weight. So I, Norris just did the calculations that uh, and then, Joel McCain hit over three times his body weight on that deadlift. And now Robin here, deadlift. wow, 750. This is a big deadlift, 750 pounds. Yep. He's happy with that. See the confident nod from Ro from, yeah. from Robin after that yeah. one. Brian Gifford up next. Yeah, Robin looked really comfortable under that with that 750. Brian's one explosive lifter here too on that deadlift. You can see Brian, he's gonna come and the last is temp yeah, he's getting hyped up right now. He's gonna come running out here. He's gonna explode into the air and he's gonna grab this bar and he's gonna rip it off the floor. Yeah. They're gonna call his name and he's gonna rush out there. I can I know he's gonna He's got the he's got the smelling salts. He's hyped. Wow. Stu's giving him some words of wisdom there. He's mean mugging that bar. He wants it. Oh he wants that bad. It's coming. He's gonna fly off the floor. And there it is. I told you he would. He got that. 771. He got one red light on the right-hand side. It might be for soft knees. I, I didn't quite see. He, uh, did he get called for red? He got one red on the side. I didn't catch what it was for. Yeah, it that, was I, that's an explosive That's an explosive amount of power. Yeah, it was probably for a soft lockout on that side. So we're back to the top of the flight here again. Third attempts. Tim Doyle with 457 on the bar. That's a respectable deadline. So we're, so we're getting, in, getting into third attempts of... <laughs> The third flight, so last round of deadlifts. Unless there's any fourth attempts after, but and, and there this may is be. It. This is it. This, this is, is where you, this is where the freak show starts. This is the home stretch. There's so many familiar faces on the platform and off the platform today. Got Zara Naibo giving him some encouragement there. And here comes Tim Doyle. The crowd is loving this. Tim Doyle is about to rip this off the floor because he is crushing his meat today. And there he is. He's happy about that. See him look over at his handler. That's great. Love to see that. So that's, that's a happy lifter right there. You can tell Tim came and had a great experience. I think he missed one lift today. 
and it was kind of a technicality. It wasn't because he couldn't do it. Um, so I think he's pretty happy with his performance today, and I think his handler, Zara Naibo, is pretty happy with that too. There's Bronte again. That's Jacqueline Sabs beside her wearing the, uh, the Die Strong t-shirt. All right, here comes Troy with a 518 pound deadlift. Troy Coleman, 518 pound deadlift. He's getting ready for this. It's his third attempt. There's a lot of intensity here. He wants to finish strong. He wants this lift. And he got it. Three white lights for him. Again with the SBD belt. So we've got Antonio coming up next. 529 pound deadlift. Um, I mean, that's not a bad way to finish out his day. And I think Antonio has gone, uh, if he gets to this, he'll have gone nine for nine, I think. I don't think he's gotten any failed lifts. So yeah, I believe that'll be nine for nine for Antonio. Be good to see what happens with him. Five twenty nine. 529 pound attempt for Antonio. He's pulling, oh, it's oh, not quite there. He slipped off. It, it looked like it wasn't there today and the hands just slid off. I think, uh, yeah, he just, he looked tired, looked fatigued, just wasn't quite there. It's the end of the day and people are starting to gas out a bit. Yeah. I mean, it's not uncommon. Kyle McKee is up next. And now Kyle. Kyle McKee, 562 pounds. Yeah, I think this will be a big PR for him. Got Darrell Petty's out on the platform there too. False alarm for Kyle there. You gotta remember the, the refs have to call you out before you're allowed to come out on the platform there. On third attempts as well, they spend a little bit more time cleaning the bar. So usually on the third attempt deadlift, they will wipe that bar clean because it does fill up with chalk. So they will, they will scrape that with a brush and they'll clean that. So this bar is getting a bit of a clean here. Kyle's getting us, he's getting his buddy psyched up. There's the girls there, Bronte and Jacqueline. Jacqueline Sabs there beside Bronte Lowe's in the white t-shirt. Jacqueline is a fantastic powerlifter as well. She also trains with Darrell Petty's in Alberta. So the Alberta folks are here. So 562 pounds for Kyle. Come on, Kyle. The boys are hyping him up. Stu wants to see it. Coach Stu wants to see this. 562 pounds for Kyle McKee. Oh, there he goes. I think he's got it. It looks like one side may not Let's have been go. quite locked out up top. One shoulder didn't look like it was locked out to me. I didn't, can't, couldn't really tell. Yeah, no, he got, he got I mean, he, he got, got he, the two side referees said it was good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they have the best point of view for locking out. 100%. So, yeah. So two side refs said it was good. The center ref uh, gave it a red. Something. Not, not quite it sure didn't why. Like something. We didn't catch what it was. Yeah, but I mean, that Mike was a McLaughlin. great deadlift. I, th I thought that was a really good deadlift. Mike McLaughlin here with his third attempt. 600 pounds for Mike. Mike McLaughlin's got the A7 shirt. Looks like he's got an A7 singlet. And we got Darrell Petty's giving him a few words of wisdom here. The seasoned veteran Darrell Petty's. A veteran deadlifter Darrell Petty's. And here comes Mike. Mike is a crowd favorite here all of a sudden. They want to see him get this lift. Mike is a Masters 
in the 50 to 54 age category. He's got tension. He's building tension and pulling off that. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's too bad. You can, I think he uh, got off to the wrong, he got off on the wrong foot on that one. Yeah, that was too bad. I was really excited to see him pull 600. <laughs> I think he's just gassed. At this point, it's been a really long day. Yeah. He's lifted a lot of weight and he's done fantastically well. I mean, you know. for a guy who's over 50 years old, mm -hmm. I mean, even just for a regular person, he's doing really well. But at 50, I mean, like, that's incredible. It is incredible. It's kind of cool because you can make progress at really any age. People that think that the progress is done, you know, after you're past your biological prime, it's just not the case. And here's Jeff Harwell. 600.7 pounds for Jeff Harwell. He lost that one. It does happen sometimes the bar does slip out of your hands. And it, it can happen sometimes, you know. I'm sure his hands are getting tired at this point. He's been holding on to all these weights for so long. We're getting a lot of messages through the Instagram account. Just want to give a shout out to Thor Naibo, who's, it seems like he's, he's following along here. Thanks for the shout out there, Thor. And uh, you may see us at that event you mentioned. Luca's coming up next, Dungeon Strong. Look him up on Instagram, Dungeon underscore Strong. Here comes Luca. His third attempt, 6.33. Oh, there he goes. He's pulling so hard. Look at his face. Wow. Wow. He got it. He got it. And Luca's happy about that. He was a. Uh, he was locked out with that for a while before he got the down command on that. It looks yeah, no, that, he, was, that looked hard. He held on to it for good measure. He held it on. He, you got to hold on till that ref tells you to put it down. Yeah, and he you know, and I think sometimes, yeah. Anyway, the referee's doing a fantastic job. No slight on them. Sometimes they need to see certain things, you know. So you can be watching somebody hang on for a bit until they see that, and they'll let you hang on if they think you're going to get it. They want you to get that lift, so. Great job by Luca, great job by the Dungeon Strong crew there. Bort is up next. 650 pounds for Bort. And they're calling him out. And here he comes. Wow, 650. 650 beltless. Here he goes. Oh, he came up sideways. He came up sideways a bit there. You could see uh, the hips twist on the way up, and I think that was the beginning of the end for Bort on that yeah, last attempt. That's too bad. But uh, I do believe he did fine I mean, on very, his other very attempts. Yeah. Very, very impressive. I mean, he was doing all of his deadlifts beltless. He just happened to come up a little bit crooked on that one and didn't go through, but that's, that's too right. bad. Still crazy. But great job overall. Bort did so fantastic for this event. He did a great job. I mean, when somebody is deadlifting beltless in competition, it's a little bit unorthodox. Here's Kyle Gordon coming out with the 650 pound deadlift as well. Same weight as Bort. And I think this is going to fly. And there it goes. Yeah. He flew. And Coach Stu is happy with that performance. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah, very he, happy with that performance. He, he should be. I mean, uh, that was a great 650 deadlift. Really happy with that. Yeah, no, that was a great 650 deadlift. Very smooth. It looked like he had a little bit more in the tank. It looked like um, it looked like Stu was very anxious to see if he would hold on to it, because it looked like he Stu didn't celebrate until after he had set it down. So I wonder if grip was maybe the thing he was wondering about. Here's Big Chich. All right. Andrew Chichka. He's fired up and he wants this 650-pound deadlift. I think he's gonna get it. When you got that much psych, you're gonna make it. 
Oh, it's not there. It's okay. It's all good. Andrew Chichka had a fantastic meet. He did amazing, as always. Didn't quite get that third attempt, but he got so many other lifts, and I know that this meet for him is going to be a huge success. Yeah. No, that He's was be really uh, happy with how he did. Yeah, it's too it's too bad he missed that last deadlift, but I mean. He's had a he's had a great meet. Otherwise, I mean, a 760 pound or 760 kilo total. That's a, that's a great total to finish with. Here's David Osborne. He's asking for 705 pounds. Wow, that's a big lift. 320 kgs. David Osborne in the virus singlet there. five pounds he's got the bar in his hands he's double checking everything before he pulls this he's gonna pull the tension out got some nice SBD socks on him yeah. let's go Very let's nice. go he's got it he's got it oh he got it he's so excited about that he loved that one, so did the crowd. Yeah, Everybody no, loves to see 700 pound deadlift. The crowd loves watching, uh, loves Those watching Dave lifts. Osborne there. Yeah. And Dr. Full of hype. Dr. Dave is what it says on his belt. And we got Joe Favia coming up next. 727 pounds for big Joe Favia. Okay, we the are gentle into, giant. We are getting into the last four deadlifts of the day here. We are at the end. Joe's partner's there with the kombucha there. We're going to see a big lift from Joe here. I think he's going to pull it. We've got Stu in the back there with a few words of encouragement as well. Great. Great lifter here coming out. Let's go, Joe. Joe's got the SBD socks. He's got the Flash Gordon shoes. <laughs> loving the loving the Flash Gordon shoes, man. All right, let's see this big deadlift here. Titan strength systems. Singlet. Oh, there yeah. he goes. Wow. He's not letting go of this. Oh, no. oh he's just. I know he's disappointed oh. about that, but it was right there. That's, it was right there. That was so fast off the floor. I thought, wow. I, was, I think he knew he had to rip it off the floor, and then when he got to a certain point, it wasn't there. And yeah. Just fatigue. It's overall fatigue. Yeah. Wow. That, I can't believe how fast that was off the floor. I thought he got it. I was already celebrating. Yep. Um, Joel McCain coming up 749 and a half pounds, 750 basically on the bar for Joel McCain. This is a huge deadlift for Joel. Wow. 750 on the bar for Joel. Joel is all business, so right now in his head, he's he's literally thinking about nothing other than what he needs to do. He's thinking about where he's going to put his feet. He's thinking about all the, the foundational things that need to happen for a good deadlift. Bracing. He's thinking about how that bar needs to rise with the rest of his body. Oh, he's not. He's literally unlocking that in his brain right now. Pulling the tension, and he's going to oh. pull that sucker. Oh, it's oh, not quite no. there. It's going to take a moment. I know he's disappointed in that one, but that was a great attempt. That uh, was, yeah. We've seen some great lifts by Joel all day long. I mean, Joel's been, I mean, Joel, yeah, Joel's been absolutely killing it today. I'm, kind of, I'm disappointed he didn't get that, li that lift for him, obviously. I did notice uh, when he set up, he wasn't exactly center on the bar. I don't know if that contributed to anything about it, but he was off to one side a little bit. So I don't know if that contributed. To, uh, to him not getting the lift, but. Robin Graham, Robin Graham's getting ready to come out here for 771. 771 and a half for Robin Graham. Wow. Also rocking the SBD socks. He's got the virus singlet. Wow. 770 pounds. 
here we oh go. Oh my God. Come on, buddy. Let's go, Robin. Oh, he dropped it. That's too bad. All right, we are gearing up for the last deadlift of the day, 805 pounds. Brian Gifford's out here to steal the show. Yeah, Brian, Brian's here to, to take some W's here. So this is our last deadlift of the day, unless there are fourth attempts. This is the last lift of the day. And I know, uh, I know Ryan will definitely be getting everybody on their feet for this lift. I think everyone is eagerly anticipating this deadlift. You can see the crowd eagerly looking on, waiting for them to call his name. Here comes the headphones, there goes the smelling salts, and here he goes. Remember, you saw it here, Evan Porter live broadcast, powered by the Film Factory. Last lift of the day, y'all. Here we go. And it right up it goes. Oh boy. Oh, he's feeling a little bit faint after that last lift. Hopefully somebody opens his belt up so he can breathe. That lever belt has got a lot of tension on it. And it looks like he's okay. Uh, So ladies and gentlemen, that was the Kodiak Clash. We want to thank everybody who tuned in for this broadcast so much. It was a fantastic event. We're very glad that we're able to broadcast this to you for free here in beautiful Victoria. And there's Jeff from the Film Factory. I want to thank my co-host Norris Was Little for spending the day with us, spending the day with you all and adding a little bit of color commentary and some special, you know, insights into today's event. Yeah, I had a great time. Like, it was, it was so cool to see a set, set up like this and just uh, see a, a, a sports broadcast for powerlifting that I think is just completely missing in Canada. Um, so our hope, I know Evan's hope, is that this brought something like this will start to happen all across uh, Canada at different, uh, different powerlifting meets. and. Um, I know Evan wants to be the guy to do it, so um, I think I think this is the way powerlifting should go. Because I think it's starting to happen a little bit in the United States and at really really big levels, but not not on the local level quite yet. So we're trying to create a broadcast that's designed for everyone who's involved. There's something for everyone in this in this event. We want to broadcast what's going on as professionally as we can to the highest quality that we can. And we want to create opportunities for brands and businesses out there to sponsor athletes because you know they're going to get broadcasted. You know there's, there's going to be a large viewer audience. There's going to be opportunities to advertise for your businesses and stuff. So if you liked what you saw today, please go to Instagram. Give us a follow, Evan Porter Media, and give the Film Factory a follow as well.